UFC stream here on Twitch. You gotta shoot, brother! You gotta shoot! You gotta shoot! What are you doing? Welcome back once again to the UFC Esports League. Tonight, eight of the best in the world will enter the UFC Octagon to compete. This is going to be a very hard uphill battle for Game Room. Ooh. Oh, what a straight head kick. This is very bad for Game Room, but he lands it right. Oh. And he's coming forward. Rear up, got double up again. Right hook, lead up, up again. Now has him against the cage. Bing. No! <laughs> As always, on the way in show, I'm joined by Borisenko, the former champ over there polishing his belt. Oh, Our weird. spelling bee champion. His eyes, oh, are, his yes. eyes are starting to water. <laughs> <laughs> It is me, TJ DeSantis, along with Pearl Gonzalez. The show is Extra Rounds and is from UFC Fight Pass. Appreciate you joining us live here on the Twitch channel. Shelling up, weathering the storm, then pop, pop. One, yeah, two, three. Going there you right there, that shell. Nice. Wow. That shell is working, then he's boom, boom, boom. Was that five oh. minutes already? Fans, by following UFC on Twitch, interact with your favorite fighters yes. as they break down Second past round, fights, preview Fight. upcoming matchups, host live watch alongs during UFC pay per views, and of course, games. Fingers. Friend, you're a big Twitch guy, right? Huge on Twitch. Oh. What is it again? <laughs> Video games and much more. I know Jens Bulver is real big on there. We'd love to have you in our community of hardcore UFC fans. Follow the UFC on Twitch. I'll see you in chat. What's up, everybody? How's everybody doing? Oh! Good morning, good afternoon, good evening for some, most likely. Whoa, whoa. Okay, number one, did anybody see the all three of the jackets? Who's watching this on ABC? Look at them in the gold ABC wide world of sports jackets. <laughs> oh, that's sick. I like it. I like that. Look at those jackets. That's all right. That's pretty cool. How's everybody doing? Everybody doing all right? Good morning. Good morning. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Hey, huh? Some early morning. I know. How's everyone doing? Everyone doing all right? Do you see those jackets? Those are sick. I like it. In. Well, I wish I could get one of those coats too. You know what I'm saying? I wish I could get one of those coats too. I'm down. I'm down. How's everyone doing? Hope everybody is doing well. Um, Where are we in everything? Where are we in everything? Number one thing right off the bat, whatever platform you're seeing this on right now, if you're not over here, tweet CV slash UFC for one second, and that's to hit the follow button. We're so close to 200,000. I would like to reach 200,000 at during this stream. I don't know how many there is, but I'll just, you know what I mean? But we'll figure it out. You know what I'm saying? What's that, Mota? I've already worked today. Yeah, follow. Exclamation follow. Is that what we do? Exclamation follow for 200,000? Follow the UFC channel. Got to do it. It's, it's fun. You know what I mean? Hit that button. Get your friends to hit that button. That's what I'm saying. Everybody go out there and text five people. Get in here. You know what I'm saying? Countdown. 11 minutes, 52 seconds, and we're off and running. And then here in a little bit after I see, I'm going to get everything warmed up and then, right? Then our, our guestesses, Laura Sanko and Cub Swanson will be popping in. By the way, exclamation sweeps. UFC is giving away a one-of-a-kind, a one-of-a-kind one gaming PC featuring a Ryzen 5900X and an RTX 3080 built by Paradox Customs, plus more prizes. So enter now for a chance to win. You'll see the link. Restrictions do apply. Are you not, man, do you have any idea? I'm telling you what. These fights are sick. I'm so happy. I'm pumped for these fights. Like this. Yeah, these cars. This is nuts. Nuts. But look at you got number two versus number three with Ortega and Rodriguez. You got Max sitting right there, number one. Emmett at number three. And Calvin Cater. I like it. I like it. You know? Um, Janko. Janko JP. How you do? How you do? It good? Is that what? Who? 
Brian Ardrea, four first round finishes, three knockouts, seven submissions, seven performance awards, fifth most in UFC weight history. I like it. Yeah, she made straw weight, but we got Penne and Ducot. Ducot first. I like it. Hunter, they had 125 as well, huh? All right, I'm in. I'm in. What? Brimnor, huh? You know what I'm saying? Look at this kid. Four first round finishes, five knockouts, three submissions, eight performance awards from Mr. Yaya Rodriguez. MMA record 14 and three, one no contest. I like it. I like it. I didn't know that she is. All right. All right. So we're going to get going here in a couple minutes, but hopefully everybody's doing well. The jackets are killing me. So this whole card on ABC, um, I believe the ABC is the main card. And they do have ABC sports jackets. It's gangster. Fans are fired up. Look at him. My oh, man's flexing all over the place. AK Snoo, I thought you were supposed to be here helping me out. He's over there in that white shirt flexing. Look at him. What? Oh, he's saddle boxing and everything. AK, what? Just in case y'all, if you do see it, there's an 8K sighting. What up, Jonko? Oh, now I understand. We, we're voting who win. We got channel points, channel points, and more channel points. But I can't even, I can't even move. I got nothing. I got nothing. I can't do it. But yeah, AK Snoo is everywhere, Mod 6. Everywhere. My man was flexing like a boss right there. Right, what did you say, Mota? Folks in the crowd have beers. It's 11 a.m. But it's a, look it, it's a UFC. It's, it's time. You know what I'm saying? It's time. No one gave, look it. No one gave AK his shirt, though. He's looking up. Oh, no, I'm still there. Look at that. You can't help yourself. You know what I'm saying? You can't help yourself. Chael P. Sonnen BG. What's up? It's 5 o'clock somewhere, right? It's 5 o'clock somewhere. That's 100%. 100%. Hey, Chael. 11 a.m. is tailgating time. That is so true. So true. Look at Monster Energy, my man. Yo, Metaverse Cop, how you do? How you do? You good? Good? Michael Kessa, Din Thomas up on the desk. I don't know. So no, the main event is one thing, but this entire card is nasty. Here in Germany is always late, but I look. Oh, I got you, Jenko. It's 5 p.m. in Paris. There you go. 10 a.m. and I'm sipping Jack News. Huh? I'm at, I've been here at 9. I got up at 8.30 and was moving around. My coffee, you know. I could do it though. It'd be like mimosa, mimosa morning or something. Yeah, I could do that. You know, that's the one thing is when you look at Yaya Rodriguez, the way that he fights, is Ortega even gonna let him do it? I don't know. I'm on I'm Ortega. Smoking and got my DraftKings app ready. Oh, look at Deep Space 90. Deep Space is already in Deep Space, right? You already Deep Space in it? <laughs> huh, good morning, man. How you doing, Mutant? How's everybody doing? Man, I love this stream. There's one. That Amanda Lemos, right? Michelle Watterson, Amanda Lemos. Amanda Lemos. Uh, 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 I'm excited. But Jessica Penne and uh, Emily Ducote. Gord Gordinia. 11 and 6, 14 and 6. Oh, that's trip. One's making her debut. I like it. I like it. Time for Mimotas. I like it. I like it. Mini Mota. <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to see, but. From the Andraj fight, Lemos. Yeah, she's going to be a little pipsed. You know? So remember, though, that's the thing. Increase those channel points because on Wednesday, right? Wednesday, 6 p.m. Eastern. That's the thing is we're making that channel point Wednesday. So all the fights you choose, you pick with your channel points. So definitely got to get in there. Not to mention, like I said, if you're out there, Saturday breakdown, huh? Well, that was one thing. So, and then 
let me do this. Wow, wait, should I say that for later? I'll say it for later. But if you're out there, make sure you drop in. We're going for 200,000 exclamation follow. 200,000 followers. We're so close. So close. Yet so far away. So close. You know what I'm saying? But so make sure you come in here and hit that follow button. Follow the UFC official channel on Twitch for free fights, fight night, watch alongs, and with UFC fighters and more. UFC fighters and more. Plus, I love it. I love it. Thank you, Doug Stanhope. Plus, there's only I can only see one chat. So as much fun as it is, I hope that I entertain each and every one of you. But if I want to, you want to see me, you want me to react to the chat, you got to jump in. You got to be in the Twitch one so that I can see it. Oh, here we go. Are we getting ready? Are we getting ready? We got the Pene and, and Dakota right off the bat. Dwight Grant, Dustin Stoltzfus, Jacoby, and Jung, Algeo and Burns. That's one. Simone and Shore. That's the fight, right? Ricky Simone and, and Shore. Ooh, I can't wait. Oklahoma native. All right. I like it, it. I like it, it. Battle of Minister getting ready to walk out, getting ready. Shadow box in front of the camera. Off the bat, what, huh? Recon by fire. It is. It is kind of, it is different. But then you're going to be like, what do I do with the rest of my day? Huh? Can we work out some kind of system to sync the audio lag between different broadcasts? What? I don't know. I wish, but isn't that kind of just how it works in general? You know, that's just kind of how it works in general, isn't it? Yo, what up, Tank Nation? Tiny Tank! What's up, my bro? How you do? Yeah, I don't know. You know what I mean? Street Beach, West Coast in the house. I don't, um, I'm not sure. Just because, like, think about it like this, though. My stream is going to be faster than your stream, or your stream is going to be faster than my stream, and you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? It, it's like, that, that's almost probably an impossibility, but that's the beauty. What? Can you say the exact second you see the fight start? Yeah, we, it's called the fight clock, and we click it. Boom. You know what I'm saying? We click it. Boom. And my fight clock is exactly when the fight starts to the T. You know what I'm saying? So you know exactly where I'm at. Have you not been here before, Pet? What? The whole thing is I always miss the clock. Like, literally, all these streams will gens hit the clock. Sometimes I forget. Sometimes I forget to stop the clock if there's an injury or a kick to the, kick to the billets. You know what I'm saying? Pet Onion. Really? I do all this work. I do all this work. And some people are like, wait, you do? Yes. <laughs> huh? You can back up one stream or another to sync. Yep, that's not happening. As long as I'm ahead of everybody else and you just don't type what's happening, let's go. ABC match, huh? Matching stream will be tough to achieve. It'll never happen. I've got a one gig upload. I'll smash. I'll, 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 I'm, I'm too fast. No, I'm just kidding. The audio is on the other window. Yeah, I have no idea what you're saying. My audio is right here. Hola. Hola, Alex. How do I do? Wait. Anyway. Now all of a sudden it just went dark. See, like, I have no sound. Spooky. Janice Daniel, good morning, gents. Not sure I have ever said that. It is early. It is early. Good morning. I hope you're well. Hope you're good. Not sure what is going on, but something is going on with subscriptions. I am unable to gift a sub. Um, like I said, today is the day that I'm sitting back. I have nothing but the fights in front of me, and I'm getting ready to roll with the guest assist. There's, I can't do anything. You know what I mean? Vanquish Platinum Games. How you do? How you do? I hope you're good. I hope you're good. 
Um, how's everybody out there? Hope everybody is doing well. And if you're enjoying the content here on twitch.tv slash UFC, make sure you hit that follow button. We want 200,000. 200,000 Killer Granny 73. We had to happen to us before. Twitch issue, apparently. Yes. Twitch issues. You know what I mean? But, um, What's that? I'm excited for Laura Sanko, the undefeated GOAT. 100%. I'm excited to meet Laura and Cub. Cub Swanson. Cub Swanson. So that's, yeah, I'm pumped. You kidding me? That's savage. Yeah, I'm going to say that about a thousand times, so don't get mad. But, you yeah, know, that's awesome. Well, number one, wait, what? Was the coach a late replacement? Why is she weighing 121 pounds? Well, because the other one says she's in at 100, that she weighed 100 and what? 125. It says Jessica Pinay was 125. So don't follow that because to my point, yeah, D Cub is a, he's a savage. So yeah, we got to have, yeah, we got to be able to Cub and Laura want to actually come back. Yeah, well, yeah, of course. But um, yeah, Cub, he's awesome. Awesome. UFC site is not the most accurate. Yeah, no, they do that all the time. That's why for a minute, I, I was like, aren't, aren't they fighting at 115? You know what I mean? That's a cool, that's it. I want to see. I don't even know what the layout looks like. Y'all are, okay, you're piquing my interest. Now I got to go to, let me go to and look. Like, I can't even see. TwitchCon Amsterdam. <gasps> Oh, yeah, I know. It looks exactly the same way. Yeah, with the fight clock, the predictions. All right. Mute yourself, Jens. Mute yourself. Oh, yeah, I know. It looks exactly the same way. Yeah, with the fight clock. Okay, see, I don't want to look at myself. Stop it! All right, anyway. Yeah, yeah, right? I've got to hear myself talking and stuff. I can't do it. Here comes the walkouts. The coach walking out right now. The walk that every missed martial arts dreams. When does this start? Right now. What do you mean? Emily's walking out right now. She is literally getting. She's braided. Ready to go. Check the knuck. Check the knuckles. Check the fingers. I mean, check the fingers. But there's no live fights. Three fight win streak, UFC debut, former Invicta FC strawweight champion, seven strawweight champion to, to move from Invicta UFC to UFC, and three wins by knockout and four by submission for Emily. How can I watch it? ABC or exclamation watch in chat? Exclamation watch in chat. Thank you very much. Dee. Again, high five to all those green swords out there. Mods, much love and appreciation. Thank you so much. And that's how you watch. Experiencing the UFC wins here by decision. I like it to mention. Oh, you in Canada, but you still hit exclamation watch. It'll show you how you can do it. Will the main card be on ESPN Plus? Would it be on both? I think it'd be on both, wouldn't it? ABC and the Plus. Yo, Cortana, mama, how you do? How you do? Yes, both. Yes, both. All right, here she comes. She's making her way out right now. Jessica Penne. I'll make sure my ringer's off. Should be quiet. Rubber baby buggy bumpers. Rubby, rubber baby buggy bumpers. I'm getting my, you know what I'm saying? Yo, Mark, how you do? Mark L. Kane. What's up? By the way, Trojan, protect yourself at all times. Overkill Hill. Overkill Hill right there. GG. She's like, I'm trying to hug. And he's like, no, mouthpiece. But I'm trying to hug my corners. No, mouthpiece. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I hope she's fired up and ready to go. This is going to be a good fight, man. I'm telling you, like, for your debut especially, right? How do you react? How are you going to react when you get out there? Those first, I know it's going to get tiresome, 30 seconds, right? But for Jessica Penney, back-to-back wins. Former Invicta FC Atomweight champion. Tied fifth most performance awards in UFC strawweight history with three. So here we go. This is going to be all right. Now, under the assumption most of you are watching it, we'll just kind of have a 
Anybody know about what time is Ortega versus Jair? It's like the, the last fight? Poof. If it starts at 2 p.m. Eastern, I'm going to go with 4 p.m. Eastern. Right? Maybe. That would be, that might be able to do it. About then, I have a good feeling about this card. I mean, the fight nights have all been insane. This card, there are fights on this card I'm so excited for. It's ridiculous. I can't, I mean, I'm pumped. Pumped up. Man, I hate looking at this camera. It got me just so pasty. It is driving me nuts. Ah! Aver Media camera can, I'm going to step all over it and call it garbage. My expectation at plus 250 odds, not bad at all. Look at that, 5-2 to 5-5, five, five, 116 to 115 and a half. So, Panay weighed in at 116 and Decote weighed in at 115 and a half. But maybe that 121 and that 125 is how much they weigh now. I know, I know. You're gold, I know, I know. It's just me being paranoid. I'm over here, I can't stop looking at it. I'm like, ah! And then there's something else. I don't know if I can move this. Don't X out of that. Just leave. I'll just leave it alone. Won't touch anything. 11 wins, 6 losses. One hundred fifteen, one half pounds. See what I mean? Oklahoma City. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Wait, what did Toilet Enchanter do? Panay by decision. I like that. I like that. She's a Sucker Punch team member, so she's, she's a teammate of mine. Weighing in at 116.16. I kind of wish UFC would give us their official fight day weight as well. Isn't that, maybe that is what that is. Like now they weigh 125 and one weighs 121. You know what I'm saying? Yo, Slowy G, how you do, Slowy G? That could be it. Like how much they put on, you know? The, here's the best part, though. You couldn't get me on the scale, to be honest. Who's 39 years old? Wait, who? Wait, huh? I'm glowing. What do you mean? I didn't know that. Is really? Dang. We age like youngsters these days. We age like youngsters these days. All right. So they're literally right out in front of each other. I like the, the feeling out process, right? Throwing that jab, but just a little too far. Neither one's about to step in. Nobody wants to step in right off the bat. But just outside, we got a calf kick by Dakota and the jabs, right? The jabs. I'm telling you, these two have looked like twins the entire time. It's crazy. So again, they're literally standing on the monster energy drink symbol. Pop net, look at that, one, two, but it's like just too far out. 40 is 100% the new 30. 40 is the new 30. So I'm telling you, I feel incredible. You know what I'm saying? But now it would go. Wait, who was? Is that guy with Penae? That was a state arrest. Oh. That hook just landed by Ducato. See the one time she did get inside? Ooh. I like that, though. I like that hook. Look at them trying to figure each other out. Deep kick. But see, again, they just seem like they're just outside of range. You know what I'm saying, chat? When everything they throw is missing by just about this much. And then somebody's got to step in, right? And that first time Jessica did step in, um, Emily smacked her with the, with the lead hook. I like the lead hook. But um, what? A good mullet? No, actually just being active. Being active. A lot of lifting, a lot of jogging, sweating every day. Keeps you that, keeps that young skin. <laughs> oh, here we go. So now again. Oh, I thought she she did a level change. Nice level change Panay did right there. Dakota backed up, said no can do. Now again, right back out. They're still in that feeling out process. Couple of calf kicks by De by Emily, which I like. And then you got it make Panay kind of change up the stance a little bit, stick that jab out there. Again, making a way in. Oi, oi. So we've got, oh, good right hand. Panay goes in for the double, but then gets pulled up to the body upstairs, and Dakar does it again. Is this in Vegas? That is absolutely not where it's at. Not even close. 
We're in Strong Island. You know what I mean? We're in Strong Island. Afghan Brad Pitt. How you living? How you living? Calf kick, calf kick. Look at now Panay's gonna get try to plumb up on that head. She's gonna try to throw those. Look at that. I like look how the coach pushing on the on the hips. Keep away. Good elbow by Panay. I like it. Good elbow on the break. Nice quick elbow. That was nice because why the hands are down on the hips trying to push her away. So she found an opening. I like it. I like it. There you go. Look at that one, two. Panay's landing that, keeping that range with that lead hook and that calf kick by Emily. Good feeling out process. Second round. She seems kind of frozen. She's going to have to get comfortable. Panay's got the opportunity right now. Hopefully, right? Hopefully, she'll take advantage and get this takedown. It only lasts so long, taking so many leg kicks and not checking. But, oi, so here it goes. Now, again, these calf kicks are starting to, I don't know. We'll see. Turn that bone out so it's bone on bone. Wow. Nice little combination by both. I like the patience. Of both of them. Oy. Turning the knee, you hear him? Huh? She's on her toes, but it's like, I, now she's starting to circle a little bit, teeth kick. See, look at that, those calf kicks. To, oy. When they throw, though, I like that. Panay's got the straight shots with that calf. You see how, look, it's already starting to get pretty red. We're already seeing coloration. Oh, I don't know. We'll find. I don't. Well, that calf's going to be sussy here in two seconds. Look at that. Nice right to the belly. Old left hook by Emily. GG. But then a one, two came back. UFC on Twitch, BT Dub. Look at that. Featuring UFC athletes. We got a UFC Twitch plug right now. Oh. All right, here we go. There you go. See that left, that left to the body. We made it, UFC Mod 6. That left to the body, I like that. Right to the belly, old left hook to the liver. I'm loving it. Now, again, there you go. That She's got a good pace with the range. I think that's the big thing, right? Panay's got to figure out how to get inside and land these combinations and not get caught on the way back. But while we're playing the range, look, she's already got a mark. She's landing that left hook. Emily's landing that left hook a lot. Oy. I like it. Right hand, left hook. GG, two seconds, one second time. <laughs> you know, the thing is, Crumb Fair, she's getting, she's getting pieced up. on. She's got a good one, two, and she throws, but then it's the punches before and after. You know what I mean? I, how do I put that? She's getting picked apart. Look, they're already on that calf. So she's getting picked apart, standing outside too long. And when she does come in with that kick, and then when she comes in, that hook's waiting for her. So after she throws her one, two, then Emily's throwing that left hook, that right hand, and that's what's catching it, right? On the return. Yo, Oxy, how you do? What's up, man? How you do? Nice to see UFCs at European times. I, hey, it's good to have you on here. I'm going to tell you how not nice. It, it is nice for you, but, man, it's early from now. It, it's all right. I like it. I like it. Now, what I'm curious is where this, look, she got cut. Uh, Jessica got cut on the side of her cheek right there. Trip, man. Did you use the jab a lot in your game? I, I should have used it more, but there were times in my fights where the jab saved me. Yeah. Like I said, my fight with Bozo Pauling, it saved me. When my leg was getting destroyed, the jab saved me. When I was smart, I used the jab and got behind the jab for sure. You know what I mean? All right, here we go. Round two, round two. I'm like looking for the clock and stuff, trying to figure out where I'm going to put it. See, then that calf kick right there, even though it's subtle and it's nothing too crazy, it adds up and adds up and adds up. And again, as as Jessica's starting, she steps in to close that distance. She's got to stick that. There you go, that jab. And every time she throws that jab, it's that two. It's that two three by um by Emily. You know, and that's the one thing is. Now there's that calf kick. She's gonna have to be careful. She hasn't changed stance, but Emily's definitely firing that calf kick quite a bit. There you go. Now we go inside with the one two lead leg by uh, Penay. Yo, good morning, Johnny. How you do? There you go. See now, oh, there it is. The right hand landed the hook. See, everything that's happening right now to Jessica, she needs to stand in just a little more. Atlantis, how you do, Atlantis? She needs to step in a little bit. She's just, just outside. The, the takedown, the level change, she was too far out. Easy to step back. The punches, she's just away from, she's like this close to landing everything. You know what I mean? This is the first fight. And that's the one thing that's happening. But now when Emily gets inside, she's landing that hook. And that right hand. So that's the one thing. If Jessica could just commit a little more and step in just a little bit, that takedown will be right there in front of her. The punches will be right there in front of her, right? 
But there we go. But she's landing. Look at that's the one thing is she's not she's not wasting any energy, Emily Dakota, right? There you go. And that hook, that left hook has been the the money shot for Emily Dakota right now. I thought it'd be easy. Really? Well, I think the biggest thing is again is getting inside and look, she's trying to get inside and throw that right hand. She's now picking it up a little bit, but I think it's the that level change. That's the one thing that I think is keeping Emily from really stepping in is because Panay has tried to do that level change, right? A couple times now with that takedown. And you're just gonna do her the service of closing the distance. It's gonna make it a little easier. So by her standing back like this, and what I keep thinking, in my opinion, Jessica is just too far away from the punches, just just far enough. Boom. See, like right there. She tried to level change shot in at a mid-level double, but because it was so far out, because it was so far out, boom, she already stepped away from it, right? Huh? You can't stream it if it's on ABC? No, that's ABC's content. And um, But you know what I'm saying? That's in, well, Telegraph, because it's so far away. You know what I'm saying? She's doing a good job of punch, punch, level change to get the shot, but it's far enough away that Emily, she's also got to do a step back just a little bit, and she's already out of the danger, right? The the the, the initial push of that takedown. See what I mean? She's just too far out. Her arms are straight. You know what I mean? Her arms are too straight, and it's easy for Emily to back up, but ring generalship might help because there was another one she just did. You know what I mean? So, but that's the one thing. So now again, I think game plan wise, you're looking at Emily's got 52 significant strikes, 52 total strikes to Jessica's 36. And it literally is, she just needs to step in a little more. Huh? It seems like she's trying to use her range, but her opponent is quick enough that it doesn't seem to matter. Well, that's it. And you got to utilize that range with the hands, but use that range to get in. And when you change level to shoot that takedown, the best way I can describe it is she's already through the main portion of the, of the drive. When she meets up and then it's easier, right? When you normally want to hit drive through the opponent, but because you're far enough back, she's already driven through the opponent when she grabs a hold of them. And then she's got to make a second step, if that makes sense. Ish. But that's why you don't want to be, you want to be in the middle of that when you hit that, when you hit that tackle, right? Boom. See, when you hit that tackling dummy, and that's it. She's just already extended. She's already too extended when she starts to drop level and change. What? You should commentate fight lives in person at the events? No way. I like this is right here. This is my commentating. Not to mention, we're going to have Cub Swanson and Laura Sanko today. I get all these guestesses to come in here. Oh, yeah. No, no. I am your commentator right here. Turn them down. Turn me up then. Let's go. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Love and appreciate y'all. All right, but here we go. Besides, this way, I could, like, I couldn't talk that much. If I was one of the commentators on TV, I wouldn't be able to talk this much. Because I assume nobody can see this, and we're all watching it on the radio, so we got to be extra. Oh, nice, one, two, one. But now, see, again, Jessica tries to come back with the shot, but she's just too far away. Her range. But what I like about Emily is Emily's getting inside, landing the one, two, one shots like that. Now we've got a plum by, we got a plum by Jessica. Trying to throw a couple of knees to try to throw an elbow. But then we got the same thing with that calf kick. No, I'm not. I want to I wor work with Joe. I'd like to work with Joe. Be awesome. G, G, G. Wait, do we have blood on Emily's face? So the one thing is, I'd be worried about when it comes to with Jessica. She's got a bad. Emily should push this next round. Oh, yeah, we got a bloody node. We got a bloody nose with that plum. I don't know how to... That jab busted her nose, but she was good right to the end. But the combinations, 63, strike. you can tell Jessica picked it up as 51. 51. Get on his show. No way. I want to show about World of Warcraft. Done deal. Done deal. My nose is bleeding. She's like... Emily don't like the bloody nose. She's got to move. She better force this a little bit. Jessica Panay, I don't know, man. I don't know if she's winning this fight, but she might be. Got to come down to this third round, right? He's corny. Now, who's corny? All right, here we go. Round three. Damn, I'm looking for the clock again. 
there's always that 30-27 in the opposite direction, Judge. That's what makes me nervous. That calf kick, there it is again, that calf kick. This good job. Look, that got her to back up a little bit. Look how brood. Look at another one. Look at that. Oh, she's starting to react. I think Emily sees it. Jessica knows that calf is getting butchered up a little bit. Two kicks right off the bat, and she couldn't hide the reaction. She's the poker face is done. There she goes. See, it's such a half-hearted level change to that single when she does drop down. I'm surprised. You know what I mean? She's going to have to step in and try to do something now with that leg the way it is. Deep kick. Again, she's just too far outside. Back it up. And Emily's just going to calf kick her way to victory. Yeah, it's bad. And Emily's, look at Emily's got such a good, look at Now she's limping. She's literally on one foot limping. She's done. No hiding it. She's on one foot bouncing. Emily's going to walk in and try to kick it again. She knows she's in trouble. She's trying to hide it. She's pushed herself against the fence. She's literally on one foot, but she doesn't know how to switch her stance. Right hand landed this time because now she's got a stumbled balance. She's got, she's off balance trying to throw a punch. Emily lands a, a good right hand. It's just a matter of time. You just, she just, it's just like, She's keeping the distance. I don't know what she's waiting for. She can't drive. But there's still a lot of time left, a lot of time. And that's one thing. I don't even think she knows how to change the stance. You know what I mean? How to fight there. That's the first time she stuck her knee out and checked it. GG. Now she's checked in a little better, but she's moving out of the way. You know, she's still trying to throw punches. But the one thing with Emily, I don't know what Emily, there's a big right hand lands. By Emily, but you got to push up against the fence. The right hand to the belly hole by Emily. If you land one or two kicks, look, that's the one thing she's doing a good job. Teep kick when she steps in. Emily, punch, punch, calf kick. Punch, punch, calf kick. Look, all right there. There it is. Timed it this time. So when, when she threw that teep kick, right when she landed it, Emily was able to throw it. Because, again, she's throwing the teep kick. Just out of range. It's not pushing her back. It's not doing anything. Emily stands back, sees it. Boom. Comes back in. Lands an inside leg kick. There it is. A right hand apiece. Right hand apiece. Look at that. See, now if she times it a little better, people hate when I spam leg kicks in UFC 4. You got it. Perfect example right there. There it is. That's why they get mad. Look at Alati Sama. If, 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 they, if they get mad that you're spamming something, it's because it's working. And they would rather you stop doing it. Stop it! <laughs> Only weak people spam leg kicks. Learn to play the game. Throwing down their controller and taking off. There it is again. Nice shot, Panay. See, Emily's going to sit back. Emily's going to sit back and allow, and basically almost allow her to, you know what I mean? She's still letting her have a fight. I don't know if you want to do that. Good right hand, Jessica. She's going to figure it out. Boom. Now she's kicking the inside of the other leg. But that's it. I mean, Jessica seems, again, she's trying to flip out that jab. What? How do you generate power punch with no leg to stand on? Right there. Fake it. Just whip it out there anyways. You don't have a choice. Right? You don't have a choice. There it is. Now she's stepping that knee outside and checking. Now she's throwing a, a, a nice 2-1-2, 2-1-2. Now she's got hands. She needs to figure out Oi, good right hand. See, Emily's going to literally keep the distance and allow her to get back into this a little bit. But, see, there it is. I don't know if you'll be able to change the judge's mind. There's that lead hook right hand by Emily stepping in. She kicked it with that calf. She's very tough to make it through this. It's got to, could you imagine the panic when you took that one shin kick? You took that one kick on the calf and your leg just went numb and you started bouncing. Ain't nothing you can do, you know what I mean? Oy, there we go. Now, again, she's going to try to make her way back at it. There's a 2 1. She just can't step in because it's that right there. Now you're looking again, again, play. See, she's got blood going off the top of the nose. Emily stayed back and watched it. It's almost like she just didn't want to step in with the urgency to try to finish this fight. Maybe she's worried about that right hand or something of Jessica or the takedown still, but she definitely just let her back. Nice one, two from the distance. Neither one ever really wanted to step in and commit. That calf kick took it away, though, with 10 seconds left. She made it through it. She made it through it. Emily with the lead hook and another leg kick. Oi. I like the combo. There's one more. She landed one deep one at the end. GG.
I tell you what, Penny had that. What a poker face. What a poker face. I'm going to tell you right now, this card's going to be insane. I'm, I'm banking it. Banking on it. This card's going to be nuts. It has to be nuts, doesn't it? Doesn't it? 102 significant strikes to 72. 102 total strikes to 72. So all you out there that can watch it, if you can't watch it, did we talk enough? Did I talk enough? You know what I mean? Yo, Kubi Beats, how you do, Beats? You good? You good? We talking, talk, talk too much? Ooh, retweet, retweet. I'm retweeting at UFC, at UFC streams, at UFC streams. I like those ABC jackets, so they went old school. It's gangster. All right, Jack News, love you. All right, I've got to get, you know, I got to get my pipes warmed up. Me, 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 me. Rubber baby buggy bumpers, rubber baby buggy bumpers. <laughs> what is there a tool to delay twitch stream so i can sync gens with my ufc broadcast 29 28 29 28 and a 30 27 told you 30 27 emily 30 and a 30 27 The calf kick. All right. I get it. It works. It works. ABC, wide world of sports. So we are a Dakota. Stay calm. The nerves, the nerves, the nerves. What do you think about Charles as champ in the division you were in? I love Charles Olivieta. He deserves it, man. You want to talk about working, working, working? They're all wearing it. They all got the ABC jacket execution. It's gangster. I want one just sitting at home. You know what I'm saying? The calf kick. Look at that. The calf kicks were a lot. Look at when it made her jump. That was tough. But we have to see. We're going to have to see. Promote it. Promote it. Right? That's the biggest thing. What is the... How exciting is it to be a part of this? What is DC wearing? He's wearing that Savage ABC sports jacket. I want one. Right? I want one. I want that jacket. You know what I mean? Mandatory. Mandatory. But it's very cool. Very cool. Those calf kicks made a big difference. The right hand helped Jens. Who cares about an ABC jacket when you have Jens' chair? Very true. I got a Jens Pulver chair. Very, I like it. I like it. Deep Space 90 with the sub. Much of an appreciation. All subs go to support the American Cancer Society. If you're out there, come on over. Twitch.tv slash UFC. Hang out with us. The water is fine. The water is beautiful. Plus, I can see you on chat. So that's the best part. Because when the main card starts, we got our guest assist, Lauren Sanko and Cub Swanson. Then I won't be able to. Unless. You know I mean, unless. Hopefully not the DC jacket, as that would be a huge on me. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm getting up there. Uh, you know I mean? Uh, what? Why do I got to be peeing in water? That's messed up. <laughs> Come on over. The ool is fine. You notice how there's no pee in it? We want to keep it that way. So we call it the ool instead of the pool. Do you think there's a moral component to causing needless brain damage to people or even audience supporting it? Do you think there is a moral component to causing needless brain damage to people? But see, I never looked at it that I was going to, I'm going out there and people are trying to, I'm, I'm going to get brain damage. I looked at it that I'm in a, I'm in a sport that throws punches. Therefore, I want to be in shape. I want to have a game plan and I want to love every second of it. That's the game. Nobody makes you sign up 
to go into pugilistic sports. Nobody makes you go into combative sports. And as far as supporting it, I'm so thankful for every fan to ever walk into the game and cheer for any of us. I loved it. Loved it. You know what I mean? Deep Space 90s gifting that so much love and appreciation. T-Y. T-Y. All subs go to support the American Cancer Society. Um, But that would be, so I don't know what moral compass you're looking at, but that's the game. In fact, that's why I get in shape and train as hard as I do out of respect for my opponent, who I hope is doing the same thing. That's what I love about the game. The game throws punches and kicks. That's what's beautiful about it. Heck yeah, I want fans to be there. That's why we do it. We do it for the fans. We do it for the excitement. We do it for the rush. Love every second of it. You know what I mean? But I don't know. What? 30 pound difference with what? Let me move this up. Deep Space 90 gifting that sub. What a boss. Where am I with this thing? The white stomp fist. I like it. I wish I could see though. What? How do I feel? How am I feeling today? What do you mean? Listen to me talk. I talk like a, I talk like a boss. Ah, I love doing this. I feel phenomenal. You know what I mean? Gotta love the Twitch. Gotta love the Twitch. Gotta love the Twitch. Oh, are they? Okay. I'm afraid to click that thing. I want to I want to bring make it bigger, but should I not be a comment? Yeah, I want to be a commentary machine, don't I? Time to shine Dwight Grant. There it is. That's what I was looking for. All right. Like it. So it has to be a full page. So they're both coming off a lost six one six footer. Yeah, I'm telling you what, with Dustin Saltzfuss? Yeah. That's crazy. Fredo, Fredo Tomato. How you doing? How you doing? How's everybody doing? Everybody doing all right? Oh, I got you. Yeah, no, I'm doing good. I mean, to be honest, though, Niasin, Niasin, man, I wish I could go back. That's the weirdness of it all. I wish I could go back. I wish I could still be young. I wish I could still fight. I would still do it. I would jump back into it right now in a heartbeat. I love it. I mean, I miss it. Who I think is going to win this one? I like, I don't know, man. I like fight. So we'll have to find out. You know, it'll be fun. But I really, really, the only reason why I'm okay with it is because I really love doing this. I really like this. I love this. And then we got two guest assists coming in later on, which is even cooler. Can you still go back to fighting, gents? Look at Chuck Liddell and Tito Ortiz. Yeah, no, I wouldn't mind. I mean, I like training um, and stuff like that, but do I ever talk to old champs from back in the day? I do when I see them, but that'd be something I'd like to do on a Wednesday as well. Maybe throw down and, and go, where are they now kind of thing. I would like to do that, 100%. I'd like to rap with people. It'd be, that'd be pretty cool. Oh, I'm sorry, that's you doing it, Snoo. Okay. No, I like where that's at. Oh, like, I might move you over there and cover that. It, it, would that work instead? Yeah, as long as I don't need to see that big old chunk of me, I don't want to do. Okay, let me. All right, one sec. Drag. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I like that. Oh, I like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll keep my headset loud. There we go. All right. Sorry, chat. Moving things around here. I got all these screens. I'm like in a cockpit. Boom. You know, so it's, yeah, I love it. And then we got, we got a little more going. But um, I got sidetracked. 
Do you ever talk to old, but that would be kind of cool. So again, something else I'd like to, I would like, to, I want to start gaming a little bit on the UFC stream, but going back because we have done and went back and watched UFC one all the way up to 22 and stuff where I jumped into the UFC. I would like to do a hundred percent would like to go back in there and, and rap with some of them. You know what I mean? Be fun. Got all kinds of stuff I'd like to do on this stream. The world is our oyster. What? Jans versus Penn exhibition match? No, but Jans will be hanging. I would like to hang with Penn when he wins, you know, running for governor. That'd be gangster. You play some Halo? You know, the thing is, Gray Balls, I'm working on my Call of Duty right now. And, but I really wanted that, da man, I'm telling you, Apex. Apex. You know, so that'd be cool. But, um, yeah, no, we'll get it figured out. I'd like to, um, Yo, no, but I do want to box. And I thought about bare knuckle because I like to just move my hands and swing and stuff like that. But like I said, I don't know. After hearing that yesterday, how I'll probably still get knocked out. I'm like, ah, I don't know if I want to deal with that part. Five first round finishes, two wins by knockout, five by submission. Awarded the UFC contract for Dana White's Contender Series. Season four, week two is Dustin Stoltz Fuss. You know what I mean? So we have to see. Because the threat of being knocked out, but then he's got to, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Oh, really? Dang. So, um, really quick, all of you out there on the YouTube, what's up, YouTube? I am your host, former UFC World Lightweight World Champion, Jens Pulver, a.k.a. the godfather of the division, the man who helped create it. I do a lot of talking. I like to hang out. I'm a retired fighter that is now a commentator of YouTube. Much love and appreciation. I hope you're doing well. And yeah, I mean, that's the one thing we're over there. We're going to be having guests jump in later on. I always do this. I like to sit there and talk from fight one to fight 100. You know what I mean? But we're going to have guests when the main card starts. We're going to have Laura Sanko and Cub Swanson. Cub Swanson and Laura Sanko and me doing the breakdown of the main card here on twitch.tv slash UFC. So what's up, YouTube? I love YouTube. I love YouTubers. Dwight Grant, four first-round finishes, seven wins by knockout, awarded UFC contract on Dana White's Contender Series, season two, week two. I do have braces. What? Am I still married to Kanika? We just celebrated our 13th wedding anniversary on the 4th of July at International Fight Week. Why did I retire? Because I was going on a losing streak and I hit that. Everybody told me at 40 years old, you're supposed to retire. So I did. So I retired. I know Buakau is in bare knuckle. Don't put me against Buakau. That's crazy talk. But, but, you know what I'm saying? So um, one of the big things is make sure YouTube, all of you, as much as I love you watching it, no matter where you are, make sure you drop into twitch.tv slash UFC and hit that follow button. We are getting so close, so close to 200,000 followers. You know what I'm saying? Let's go. Did I ever fight Chuck Liddell? No, not even in sparring. He's too, I mean, heck no, that, he's a savage. I love Chuck. Love Chuck. But make sure we're getting up, we're getting there. We're getting there with that 200,000. I know. I want to fight again. I want to fight again. But that, that Jiminy came in here and broke my spirits the other day. He broke my spirits. You're just going to get knocked out. You're old. You shouldn't be doing any of this. And I'm like, I wonder how many people truly think that. But then I started laughing because it's like, man, that's, that's, that's a defeatist attitude. <laughs> that's a defeatist attitude. But make sure you follow because the other thing is we're on here. I'm on here Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern. Saturday, we do the watch along. Monday, we have guests. We break down the fights. We have we do recap with highlights and guests. And then we watch we watch fights based on, right? Based on the uh the other fights. Um what? I know. I know. But I just realized. That's what I'm saying. Tom Hardy versus D's. All right, here we go. Round one, round one. 
Already with the hands up, but we got the circling. We got the circling. Jens' one weakness is Twitch chat. I love Twitch chat. That's why I don't game. Big overhand just right that just missed by Mr. Grant. I, the way he's throwing right now, Fallout Paradise, I would say so. Grant with that deep, with that kick up to the face, with the way he's throwing that right hand. Let's go. Yo, I love it, Diamond Beautiful. Greetings to all from the Netherlands. Much love to you, Jens. Much love to you. How are you? Do we got to end predictions? We have to end the predictions? I know. I'm, I'm reading chat. <laughs> How was it fighting BJ Penn? It was all right fighting him. I was, you know, his grappling is scary, but it was crazier doing the ultimate fighter against him because he was mentally kicking my butt with, with some of the mind games because he had Joe, he had Joe Lazone on his team. So that humbled me, right? Really quick. But if he wouldn't have been there, I would have been a jackass. But we had Joe Lazone on there, which knocked me out before the show. So that really jumped when those two paired with those two together. That really messed with my up here, right? But after the round, after this fight, we'll talk about it. So anyway, Dwight Grant doing that circle. I like that. Now, the one thing with Dwight standing right there in the center, patiently just kind of taking his time, walking his way in. Boom. See, that's why you can tell the way that Dustin's trying to close this when he throws the shots. Dwight's really winging that right hand. So you got to be careful after you get in there. Who hit the hardest? Everybody that knocked me out hit harder than I did. So um, here we go. Because I actually had a few people knock me out that just horrifying me. Horrifying me. But you didn't see it because it wasn't in the UFC. But it was crazy. Now, there it is. That lead hook. See, Dwight Tide's going for a double leg. I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah, Stolfitz is going for the double leg. Dustin, I'm sorry. Dwight gets the hands on and he's going to try to peel him up and get off the takedown. Dustin's trying to control that head and keep pushed up against the fence. Well, this is going to be the way to get him the gas right here. Add in some wrestling. That's a sure-fired way. If you're already got, if you've got conditioning issues and you don't have a full gas tank, wrestling's going to jump in there really quick and drain it super fast. Super fast. You know what I mean? Now we got a break and then we go back into it. Oh, right, here we go. Now, they're back to the center, moving around. Dwight, like, that's the one thing with Dustin. I don't know why I want to keep calling him Dwight, dang it. But, oi, see, that's the one thing with Dwight. Trying to come in and get that counter hook. Got to throw that counter hook and go out to that lead hook and right hand. But, circling around, moving off to the side. I, but the one thing that's happening in Dustin's favor, it's he's slowing it down, right? making his way, just kind of sitting out there. Everybody likes to shadow box. Boom. There you go. Double jab. Big. Dustin trying to throw a big right hand right there, but Dustin throws that. That's one thing he's got to be careful. When he closes that grant, I can't even talk anymore. When Dustin tries to close the distance, there's a good calf kick by Stolfus and a, and a counter calf kick by Grant. Now I got it. Yes, Grant is playing the counter game, right? Yo, Legendary Elite, how you, how you do? With Simone and Shore, I'm excited to watch it. I can't wait to watch that fight. But that's the one thing. They're both kind of moving in slow motion in the aspect of the way they're walking in. But when they throw, it's dynamite. Calf kick again by Stoltzfus. A right hand that was over the head of uh, Grant. Yeah, right. I like that. They're countering with bazookas. Takes a long time to load, takes a minute to fire, but it's a big, it's got a big shot right when it lands. And that's it. So we got a calf kick by Stolfus. We got the counter right hand by Grant. And then they're just going to sit back, sit back. And here we go. Take the time. Oh, we we're looking to spin one off, were we? All right. Dustin's going to try to spin one off. But I like when, look at this 14 to 13 on the punches, selective punches, selective shots. I know, bazookas don't spin, so now we just added, right? We added it in. And now we're off where we go again. That deal, now you see the uh, Stolpit just kind of standing in one spot. Grant is moving around, trying to bait him in, bait him in. You know he wants to be able to land that. See that lead hook right hand by Grant. I wouldn't want to get hit by it. And that's the one thing. So stolpit has got to make sure when he gets in, he gets all the way in and make sure he gets there. See, I like that. Gets in, charging him, charging him. Don't let him get set. Boom. Boom, two big shots. That kind of urgency right there. I like that. Don't let Grant get set because when he sets, he's going to throw those big, big shots, right? Hoof. All right, here we go.
All right, how's everybody doing? Everybody doing all right? All right, where were we? Because I was telling a big old story, then I got sidetracked, jumped into another story. YouTube. YouTube. How you doing, YouTube? Twitter. The Twitterverse. You out there in the Twitterverse? I bet my last channel points on Stolfus. Don't be worried. You should, Edwin Michael. Believe. Believe in it. Right now, it's eight. Be scared when it comes to a decision. How you doing, Native Toker? You good? You good? But believe in it. Uh, I am behind you. Salute, Jens. I enjoy your positive attitude and energy level. Cheers. I appreciate you. I am behind you. That's kind of scary, but much love and appreciation. <laughs> Stay back there. Stay back there just far enough that I can't. If I feel you get too close, I'm going to freak out. All right. I keep looking for the clock. Like, dang, I got to do the clock. All right. I, love, I feel weird. All right. Round two. Here we go. Here we go. Closing the distance, execution. Closing the distance. See, I need to get a stand-up desk so I can kind of stand. Oh, there's a good counter right by Dustin right there. When Grant tried to stand with that right, good counter right. Again, these right hands of these two. Let it go. Let it go, right? I said, what again, circling around. See, now, now Dwight's throwing from a big distance. Dustin trying to do the calf kick for the horde. I No, no for the, I didn't do that. No, you, can you see that? Did he put it up again? Damn it, AK Snoo. I know he didn't. Oi! See, they're just one bomb away. Who won round one? Man, that's going to be a matter of an opinion, to be honest. I don't really know because they landed about, they landed 18 to 16, I think, significant strikes. The feeling out process, they're both throwing hammers. So, um, Jens is the lion scum. I don't, why do we got to be scum? That, that is not nice. At all. Horde, you all play in the dirt. You got sticks. With, your towers are made of sticks and, and grime and slime. And there's nothing nice about it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Horde is horrifying. We got the Grand Village of Stormwind. We've got Iron Forge. What? Come on. Come on. We're clean and pristine. On the Alliance side. We can't be scum. We can be royalty. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you got orcs and you got doo-doo. You know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, here we go. You got the undead for crying out loud. You know, but that's what they... So I like Stolfus. I think Dustin's doing a good job of just controlling the center. But he's got to be careful when Dwight stops. He fires that big right hand. So if you can get him in there, get him to fire that right hand, but then you got to have your right hand behind it, Stolfus. You got to be able to do that. But that's the one thing is he's taking his time walking him down Thunder Bluff. Yes, you're in trees. But you got, you got, yes. But I do like the tree stuff. That stuff's kind of cool. UFC, actually 99% of the fights were started by Jaina. Alliance is the bad guys. Well, yeah, but so if that like goes into... Don't get me started because then I turned that political for two seconds. But it's the same thing. Those in power. <laughs> huh? I'm not discriminating against the unliving. I'm just saying when it comes to scum, they kind of, they got the grimy, they've got the griminess, right? They've got the griminess in their villages. <laughs> Alliance sucks, AK Snoo says. All right, look. <laughs> All right, now we're going in on a double by Dustin GG. Going to try to get in on that single leg. Try to go after it, maybe try to pick that leg up. We'll see how much he can do, but uh, <laughs> it's over. AK Snoo comes driving in. Alliance sucks, and that's it. I, I've got to leave it. But I get to ride around on a ram, a gigantic ram. You know what I'm saying? Crow Cop, the dwarf hunter, rolls around on a massive ram. Done. Done. Oh, wait, now we go inside. We go. I got a spirit bear for my for my one of my pets. And I named him Rampage. 
Now, look, they still got it pushed up against the fence. There he goes. Now we've got the takedown. He's going to look to try to climb up the legs. He's got it. He's got it. He's got a far roll. He's got far wrist control. Stolfus does. The Grand Slam trying to figure out how he's going to fight this. We got free left hand. Now he's got him in there. We're going to go ahead and get that leg right. He's going to throw in the legs. Now we've got him broke down with wrist control and a free left hand, free right hand, looking for the rear naked choke. We've got a rear naked choke. We're going to see if Grant can give up his, try to uh, put his back on the canvas. Doing a good job of fighting the hands. Got the legs in. We got a short time, 30 seconds, 32 seconds, 31 seconds, 30 seconds left, but he's got his back throwing right hands. Grant's doing a good job of fighting the hands, making sure, but he's going to lose the round, I think, with all these shots. He's still trying to get that rear naked choke going in a short time. Got him bellied out. Grant's doing a good job of fighting, staying alive, surviving, but now he's postured up, throwing shots, raining down. Grant's going to have to go back and give up the mount again, give up the mount. Body lock, push him in. GG. Oi, we're going to start throwing chest shots. Chest shots. <laughs> Hector, Laura is here. My name is not Laura. My name is Chins. But they will be here. Laura Sanko, Cub Swanson will be here at 2 p.m. Eastern. But you got, I am the, because I like talking, so I'll be talking through most of the undercard as we get everybody ready. See, that's why I love AK Snoo and the mods here at UFC. Think about what we're doing. You got me right now. Then we're going to dive into and switch into, oh, not even close. I look like a dog walking backwards. I, I got like a butt face. And then my teeth now with the braces pulling everything wide. I got a rake. Oof. But, um, well, you know, he can't be too clueless on the ground saying that he got stuck, but he was able to, Gray Balls. He was able to defend and fight his way out of all that bad situation. Those are really bad situations that he's in, especially when he had that wrist control. Have, you have to give up your back. Then you have to turn back. You have to give up, turn back. Did Cub retire? That can be a question you can ask. I'm not asking such a question. But, you know what I'm saying? But he was in trouble for sure. Definitely in trouble. Round three, round three. Here we go. I do got a lion's mane. This bad boy is, it's back there. It's, yeah, it's a lot right now too. All right, here we go. Now, there, see that one, two, Dustin, you got to walk him down. Dwight is kind of, he's sitting back that distance, right? He's got to figure out, he's trying to load up that punch. He's got to set to something, feel some kind of urgency, maybe. First round was close. We don't know who got it. Second round, I would give to Dustin based on that last, that last exchange. So that was 30 seconds of having his back and throwing shots. And now we go. They're just sitting right there on the monster energy. See, I like that right here. We go where where are they at, Jens? Where are who at? Where's who at? Oh, oh, where are they at? They're gonna be here, they'll be here for the main card. You're stuck with me on the undercard, then we'll have everybody set up, and then boom, we're gonna lightning our way over, and I'm just gonna appear, poof, and I'll be right next to him. I'm not even playing. That's the majesty of AK Snoo and the, and the crew. I'm just going to show up. And then we'll all be together for the main card. But it's quarter. We're not stuck with you, Jens. We love you. Well, I love you. I love every one of you. You know that. My feet is much slower than yours, Jens. By how much? We're at 325, 324, 323 of round three. Oh, one, two landed. One, two landed. At Lugs, at Lug Bees. Welcome to the official channel. How you do? Can we get Mackenzie Dern and Jens Pulver UFC watch together? You got to haul it at the man. I don't know how they get them. I'm just, I just feel like I've, I'm always afraid people are gonna be like, I, what, Jens Pulver? No, I ain't gonna. I don't want to talk to him. So I'm happy every time somebody comes. Oh, big right hand by Dustin Stolfis. Oh, are we wobbled. We might be still being a little wobbly, but I don't think Dustin feels the urgency or sees that he's hurt. Not trying to pressure, not trying to get out to him at all, but he, he would. I mean, step in, maybe throw something, but after that, let's go. And now Grant's going to try to move up a little bit, but Dustin trying to walk his way down, goes in on a double. No, I know. That's just how I feel, Rogue. I'm, that's because I've got low self-esteem. Oh, 
Oh, that counter kick right there. Nice land by Dustin on that calf kick. I don't think Dwight, he's been tired by the wrestling. Doesn't like the calf kick. Standing out in the center, moving slow, a lot more. I'm almost lethargic, if you were talking about it. That's the way that, that uh, Grant is moving right now. Stolfitz, Dustin has been moving like this all the time. Not trying to move in. That spin was, yeah, that was a slow spin. But the idea was there. Now he's going to get in and get that over under position, push him up against the fence. But now he's going to pick him up, pick him up, take him out to the center this time so there's no fence. Slam him down, GG. Now he's going to go right into side control. Yep. If you thought if you thought Dwight Grant was tired before, he's going to be extra tired now. I told you the wrestling, the wrestling. It's that if you got a gas tank issue, wrestling is going to be your number one no no because it drains you in a way that, like I said, in the video game, when that the, the the stamina bar moves up and down, right, the white part in the bar, but when the bar itself moves down halfway, that's wrestling. That's anaerobic. I'm not going to get into the conversation because of the, the experts have ruined it. But that's that anaerobic side of life, and that's the part you're not going to get back. Now, but again, we're sitting right here. Now, but with Dustin, he's sitting and looking for – he's driving up the body. He has mount, but he jumped in and threw – he's sitting in half guard, has his leg pushed up, trying to drive into him, looking to maybe throw elbows, throw body shots. But I don't know with such short time – I mean, I – they're both very tired. Just kind of sit here and just grind it out and get the win. I don't think he's going to posture up and look for anything too devastating. But if he did, I think he could do it because Grant is done though. Grant is tired. He doesn't want nothing to do with this. The shoulders are probably burning. The legs are probably rubbery. That wrestling just destroys you. You know what I mean? So take this with the win. Go afterwards. He's got a good job the way he's got it, got it locked down. Dwight either the only way Dwight he can't turn into him because of the way he's got that leg locked across he's got to turn away and when he turns away there's that wrist control so he's got that Dagestani handcuff on the far wrist control right now now he's going to turn him around but see Dwight's like no can do I want to give up my back but he blocked that leg now he did it we got full mount by Dustin Stolfis and he's going to just go ahead and throw some salt in the injury posture up land some shots Grant's going to try to turn away and put his belly on the canvas there you go. Oh, look how tired he is. He's tired. Grant's tired. Like he's stumbling around. He look, he's so tight, tie. Look at him. Yep. He said, who in the heck allowed wrestling? At what point were we supposed to wrestle in this match? Look at him. He's like, Pfft. he looked like he just got done with the 30 minute scramble. 30 minutes scramble in the wrestling room and you just got your legs are jello and there's nothing you can do. Poof. I know. I know. But with the wrestling it makes it worse, doesn't it? Wow. You really do look like a crackhead. How does that even, I mean, th the thing is like this Don, Don Jean, that's horrifying. Like, do you stare at you, the family picture a lot? And it's like, look at my family's all crackheads. You look like one of them. I apologize. You know what I mean? Must have a family of them. Saying he came in and did it yesterday. The same thing. He had to create a new. He created a new person just to do it again. Come on. At least I got this. <laughs> I got my feel good sitting next to me. <laughs> oh, come on. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I love it. I love it. If Jen's the crackhead, then we're all looking like crackheads, right? It's early. I'm waking up. I got my coffee. It's the teeth, right? It's the teeth. At least they're all in there. I do have braces. Crack is whack. <laughs> all three judges. 29-28 for the winner. Unanimous decision. Dustin Sulfus. GG. Dustin, GG. No, it happened yesterday too. That same thing. Because it, it gets like, I have to react. He really likes me, right? It's worth creating another account to come in and tell me again I look like a crackhead. Could you imagine? I want one of those ABC jackets. I like it. I like it. See, you see that? Whoever asked about that deal about back in the day, 
how you could watch this. Look at, they're so glad to have fans here. We love to have fans here. Love it. I know, and that's the thing, granted God, 615, poor kid needs attention. And I want to give them the attention because they need it. Like that's, they need it. So it's like, you can, man, I'm, I'm big enough. You can make fun of me. It's all right. I can take it. I can take it. So you got to let them have their moment, right? Let them have their shine for a second because literally that might be the only shine they're going to get forever. I got to call Jens Pulver a crackhead. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> uh, look Jens up on Google. I'll find it. He's legit. No, don't look me up. Stop looking me up. I can't wait for Jens to stream some Apex. I want to play Apex, but I need Yanez and I need Nick Merckx to, to take me under his wing and teach me. I need all of them. I need the whole dang, I need the whole team. You know what I mean? I need the Baca, I need the Bacchus. I got to get, I need them all. I'm saying, you know what I mean? Dibble's got to get in there and help me out. But Yanez is supposed to be my partner. My son won't game with me anymore. And so I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to do, right? I got, I need partners. See, that's, no, they didn't miss weight, but they always, they add that in, right? I can't take it. You call Jen's names, you getting on my bad side. And I turn green when I get angry. <laughs> it's all right, though. Like I said, there's a reason why I'm okay with getting called names. Because I would rather it be me than anybody else. You know what I'm saying? You got to dive it, man. Take it out on me. Because I'm all right. That's why I keep this, like I said. So for me, and hopefully everybody, I have this. I keep this next to me because this is my feel good. As when people start getting mean, I just hold on to this thing for a second. I'm like, ah, oh, let's go. You know what I mean? That helps me. That helps me. All right. Dustin Jacoby, Da Un Jung. Da Un Jung coming in, both coming off wins. They don't look like they're 200 pounds. You know what I mean? They're all wearing those savage ABC jackets. Huh? You know what? Here, you can, get the, you can hold on to this one. So get yourself a desktop belt at the UFC store. And this is my second one. I keep this one too. You keep it? The desktop belt? Yeah, it's mine. Of course. Oh, the belts? Yeah, I keep the belt. Except the one that's in the Hall of Fame. If I need a third, I need a, I need a first, I need a, I need a, I need partners. Yeah. I want to start playing. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I'm down. Oh, he's 6'4". Okay, now I agree on the 200. By the picture, I'm like, it says 218 pounds, and I'm trying to see it, but I didn't realize 6'4", that would help it. 100%. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'd like to, I'll get it out. Uh, how about you doing submission underground instead of bare knuckle? Like wrestling? Like doing the grappling side of it? Maybe. But I really like boxing. I've always liked boxing. I enjoy boxing. So I like to do something just to stay active. I don't necessarily know if I need to have, I need to punch somebody again, but you know what I mean? No, it's just the way they do it, Blaster Master. I don't think anybody missed weight, to be honest. But it's just UFC, it's uh, the UFC.com, they like to throw in a little giggler and they throw in those weights. Maybe it's the next day or something-ish. You know? But I don't know, Dirty Hippo, but that might be cool. You know, that might be cool. But I, I mean, but I would like to, I don't know. I always thought about boxing, but it'd be cool to say I did it, you know, do a bare knuckle fight, like a legit one. It'd be cool to say I did it, but I don't know. Once I get back into wrestling, I only do PC. I could, I, my bucket list, operated TV, my, um, Bucket list was to be able to build my own PC. And so that's what I'm using. My own 8K Stu helped me. And I built my first PC ever. Uh, and that's what I use game with. So it's, it's time to get another one. You know what I mean? Time to get another PC. So I got to order the parts. I'm going to build another one. So we have to see. You know what I mean? Next fight. Yep. All of them. Bill Algio and Burns. 
Simone and Shore. That Ricky Simone, Simone and and I keep stopping right here. Simone is um, and Jack Shore is the one I'm looking for. Why don't I enter to win the UFC computer? I wish I could. Oh Lord. Okay, so um, why don't you enter to win the UFC computer, gents? Um, yeah, no, because that's for all of you to win. Exclamation sweeps. If you're looking, by the way, out there, YouTube, Twitter, if you're watching, drop into here, exclamation sweeps to sign up for the PC. UFC is giving away a one of a kind gaming PC featuring a Ryzen 5900X and RTX 3080 built by Paradox Customs, plus more prizes. Enter now for a chance to win. K okay, Bez, I'm doing I'm doing good, Bez. How you doing? Fourth longest active unbeaten streak in UFC light heavyweight division with five. 15 fight unbeaten streak overall. Fifth largest top position percentage among active UFC light heavyweights with 26.2%. Finished 13 of 15 wins, 11 knockouts for Daung Jung. Dang for Jung. But exclamation sweeps. The PC is sick. So I'm going to build my own. I'll build another one coming up. It's time to build another one. You know what I mean? Now is a very good time to build. All right. Uh, hey, gents, any guys from your gym that we should look out for as a prospect? Uh, I don't. Th this is my gym right here. I don't. I don't train. I don't have a gym. I won't touch MMA. Well, now I take that back. I went, my son just, the, the wrestling team, and they just um, merged with another team from Liberty, North Liberty, um, a couple, of, about an hour, I don't know, I think it's an like hour and a half away. And the wrestlers, I got to look at all the wrestlers, and I was like, and they're like, hey. So I've got, a, I've got a, a, just a stream of wrestlers that are in college and high school right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll train fighters later on. I do this right here. I love this. This is me. Dustin Jacoby, second longest active unbeaten streak in UFC light heavyweight division with six highest strike rate in UFC light heavyweight history. What? Damn, that was fast. Why'd it go so fast? Yeah, the wrestlers are insane. So my son, 13. So I, I finally, I'm, I'm coaching with him now a little bit. We waited all this time. UFC gifted that sub to UFC Mod 6. Much love and appreciate it. All subs go to support the American Cancer Society. So yeah, so I'm coaching in that aspect. But everything I do right now is this stream. I love this stream. I love building twitch.tv slash UFC. And of course, I got Twitch TV slash Jens Pulver on the off time. But I mean, I love it. I love doing this. This to me is everything. Yeah, I love this. Look at that jacket that Bruce is rolling. Let's go. YouTube, what's up? Fifteen wins, two losses. You should be allowed to stream the prelims on here. You know, when you have Fight Pass, though, one of the things on Fridays and stuff is usually there's live events going on. We always drop in, catch a few live events, and then let y'all you can jump in and do your own thing and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Yo, get chopped. How you living? You did? What's up, Jens? Been uh, Twitch conning all day, Jens Pover all night, all day. Yippee ki yay! Tree too, too much love, man. Appreciate it. No, Ricky Simone has not fought yet. We've got Algeo and Burns, and then they're up. Pass on mute plus gens. Wait, what? You're muting me? That's not nice. 
Do we give away? If we used, well, we've had 50% off. We've had 50% off for a year. We've done all kinds of stuff. So yeah, there's always giveaways going on with the fight pass. Free month, free year. Free, you know, we'll see. All right, here we go. Round one, round one. Look at the way he's, look at the way he's just standing there with Jung, just kind of standing there waiting for Jacoby to like, try to get in here and see what happens. Walk your way in and see what happens. Look at the size of Jung. But he's got his back. He's out there on that warning track, right? One set. With, there you go. The feeling out process. First 30 seconds. Oi, calf kick, calf kick, Jacoby. Patience, patience. Sorry, gents. I meant I'm watching Fight Pass on mute and listening to you. I know what you meant. So Jacoby was ranked highest number two in the kickboxing. No way, really? Well, there's a jab to the belly hole. He does look big, doesn't he? Jung looks really big. Good, nice leg kick by Jung. Master Ninja Ryukin. Hell yeah. Hi, Jens Pover, the champ. How you doing? Pop that jab, pop that jab, calf, leg kick by Jung. Look at hands open. Look at the way he's kind of swaying. Jacoby's like, how do I get in here? See, the one thing is, though, is Jung is dropping down to his size. Look at that. Oy, kick. Somebody's going to close his day. It's going to get after it. Jacoby is a former middleweight who fought Alex Vejeda. Oh, sick. UFC, how do you break down Jung? is kick to the body and throw two jabs. So kick, jab, jab. I'm watching. I'm looking at this. I'm trying to, I'm deciding. Boom, jab. What you do is you parry that jab and fire that right hand over the top of it. So get him to jab. When he jabs, parry the jab, blast your right hand, come back with the left hook. I thought the fight started at 3 p.m. Eastern. Um, that would be the, the main card. The main card, I believe, starts at 2 p.m. Eastern. But you know Jens, third person, Jens is going to do all the fights. The guest assist will be showing up shortly. Jung walking him down with that jab. And see, that's why Jacoby needs to boom. See, there's a big right hand, a long right hand. That, that'll let you know. That's scary. He's got to fire and come back over that. That patty cake. Always with the patty cake. Tickle, pickle. That's what I'm saying. Like, I call it jab hands. They always play jab hands. They just sit there and jab hands. But that's the one thing is Jacoby's got to figure out how he's going to get inside. You know what I mean? He's got to figure out how he's going to get inside here and. Look at that. Ooh, see, I don't like that big overhand that, that, that Jung just threw right there. But Jacoby, parry that. Oi! Nice right hand reaches for Jung. Get in, he hit the right hand. And he tried to do the walk-off. He walked it off. And they stopped it. You can't do that. You can't do that. You can't dictate that as a walk-off. He was fighting, got dropped. Then they, and he walked off and they stopped the fight. That's why you can't walk off. My man was... But he landed the right hand, dropped him, and just walked off. And my man is just going to stand up and the ref jumped on him and said, it's over, it's over. That's why you can't do walk-offs. You can't dictate a walk-off like that. Oh, wow. But the right hand landed. They got into a mix-up. They got into a mix-up. There was double jabs. And then, boom, the right hand landed. It dropped him down. He fell all the way back. And then he goes to sit up. My man walked away. But see, again, what did I say? Boom. It took the way he fell. Look at the way he fell. See, and he's going to sit up and he's good. He's looking at him, but he already walked off. Point is, I told you, and I was saying this yesterday. It's the way you fall. That ref already had it made up in his mind by the way he fell down. He fell all the way back. And the referee already had right? Already had it in his mind. Fight's over. I told you. And that's the one thing I said a while back. The, that man, I think it was a good stoppage in one way because the way he fell, but that's it, man. It was already made up in that ref's mind. This fight's over. I don't think it was an early stoppage, but 
That's why, okay, look, remember how, oh, this is awesome. Remember how yesterday we had the conversation? He's taking too much damage. He should have never got punched by that second and third shot. But then again, well, you want him to do that kind of walk away? So this one, we wanted him to take that second and third shot because he wasn't hurt, even though the way he fell, the way he fell, you know what I'm saying? So it's that fine line. And I think it's the way that you fall is big and it doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? That's that time where he, they opted on the side of safety rather than the side of danger, right? Let them take two more before they stop the fight. Oh, that's BS. You should have never let it happen again. This is why it's tough being a referee because one way or the other, but the way he fell, the way he fell, that that made up everything. He was already, the way that ref was running, it was already made up in his mind. So the way you fall in these fights have massive implications on how that referee is going to stop it. You know what I mean? Or when that referee is going to stop it. Because we always have that. Do we wait and see how he reacts? Let him take one or two and make sure he's hurt? Or do we see the way he falls like no can do? Live to, live to fight another day. You know what I mean? And I said that yesterday. Either way, they complain, and that's why it's just not fair to be a referee. That's just not fair to be a referee. The way he fell, good stoppage. Great stoppage. But also, Jacoby walked off. My man said, walk off the way he fell. He deemed it a walk off. So, it looks like they're not fighting it now. You know what I mean? The way, like I said, he fell all the way back where both hands went like this. Yes, he sat back up, but he fell. But just in that mixture, that right hand landed like right over the top. It's a good knockout. No protest. Besides, when we get knocked out, we always pop up and go, why'd you stop that? I'm fine. What? It's not a Hall of Fame jacket. It's the ABC Sports. You remember the old school wide world of sports, ABC Sports jackets, the gold jacket? These are the gold jackets. Now watch. Here it comes. The jab, one, boom. Now watch. He went from feet to back. And look at You see how far back the referee was? You see how, if you're watching this fight, the referee, he started on a sprint. Look, he hit. He hit the floor, went all the way back. Right? He hit. Went all the way back. His hands went all the way up. Look at that. Referee's on a dead run. And, the, and Jacoby had already walked away. Had already walked away. It was already done. Right? Yo, brusque with the sub. Much love and appreciation. All subs go to support the American Cancer Society. You know? He was fine. He was getting up. But, peanut butter bleach, the issue is this. He, well, not, okay, shouldn't he, he should have kept punching. For the most part, he should have, but he deemed it a walk-off, and it worked. But other people, like I said, you're not supposed to deem it a walk-off. You need to go in and start punching until you get blasted. What? What? Only us old guys remember those ABC jackets? I got you, Lime. I got you. All right, all right. Um, but. Point is, but you see what I'm saying? The referees are damned if you do, damned if you don't. Oh, that's messed up. He fell. You should have never let him take those other two punches. That's BS. Oh, he wasn't hurt. You should have let him take those two punches because he wasn't hurt. Doesn't matter. <laughs> you know what I mean? The way that he fell, done. It's done. Like I said, the referee, he was so far back. He went running in. It was done. Bad stoppage considering the walk-off. I don't think he should have walked off, no. Because I feel like you just deemed, you just kind of, you just kind of forced, you kind of forced it by walking off. You know what I'm saying? You forced, you forced it. So whether or not he was hurt, the way that you fell, he walked off, boom. You know what I mean? Okay, what? About time to start. Okay, okay. Yeah, well. 
That's true. I only agree with the ref 50% of the time, but they're way more knowledgeable. You know, I get, but they're in a bad situation. I always say that's just a sticky, sticky, sticky situation. And I'm glad it just happened on the other side. You know what I mean? I'm glad it just happened on the other aspect right there. Cause most of the time we're like, Oh, you should have never let him take those two punches. Should have never let him take those two punches. And now like, Oh, he wasn't hurt. He should have taken those two punches. It's a, it's a tough situation to be in. So I think error on the side of caution, the way that he fell, we're good. We're good. You know, how's everybody doing? Everybody doing all right? Ah. We've got an Algio and Burns. Algio and Burns. And we're going to have guest assist here real soon. What? Off topic, but you covering sumo later? Oh, yeah, I have to. I'm absolutely. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, no, it's it's sumo. It's 15 days. 15 days. What up, buddy Alpha? What time did the fight start? They've been we've been watching them. Bill Algio and Burns are about to go. The main card, I believe, starts 2 p.m. Eastern. 2 p.m. Eastern. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like I said, it really does come down to um, why why are they early? Where are they? They're they're in uh, Strong Island, aka Long Island, but it's on ABC, and I, I think it's ABC is the reason. Look at that crystal fire tweak repeat. You're a desperate person. You can't even look at you much get it cheat. You can't even type and you're calling me a crackhead. Look at you. Where do you buy your crack? You, you must get it cheat. You can't even spell and you're calling me a crackhead. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. You can't even spell and you're calling me the crackhead on top of the fact that you just had to make a sec, a third account and I'm the one. <laughs> Oh my lord. How does the fit? You just made my world. You literally just made my world. You just made a third account to come in here misspelling like a boss and calling people a crackhead. Yes. <laughs> oh my lord. Man, take that keyboard and smack yourself on both sides and throw it away. You are fired. You are fired, man. <laughs> You can't come in here insulting somebody and misspelling and can't even, you can't even make sentences. You can't even make sense. And the man, <laughs> oh God. hurry up and make your next account. I can't wait to see what happens in, in, in 10 minutes. You're perfect. You're perfect. I love it. I love it. <laughs> oh, oh my Lord. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Oh, my man. I hope this is making your day because you are literally making ours. You literally are. Gosh, I love you. I love you. Whoever you are, man, I love you. <laughs> no, no. He keeps making new accounts to come in and ask for crack. He's crazy. I love him. I love him. And then he can't even spell and he can't even, he can't even make, like, he can't even form sentences. It's impressive. And I'm stupid, so I know I can't. Um, what's that? Don't mess with Jet. What, Nick? No. Uh, he's still bad. He lost me 100 bucks, but he got knocked out by Joe Lazone, but I got over it, kind of. Man! <laughs> Don't mess with Jens. I mean, I'm still mad. He lost me $100, but he got knocked out by Joe Lazone, but I got over it, kind of. Well, hey, I apologize. Hey, hey if there's... It, I didn't want to get knocked out. If, if there's any consolation, I didn't, you know what I'm saying? I didn't want to get knocked out. <laughs> so, but it, it's kind of the game, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I didn't want Joe to throw that shot, and damn it, I wish I could have ducked it, you know what I'm saying? But, ah. Uh, 
Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about the hundred. I apologize. Oh, it is what it is. <laughs> My man, he started it yesterday. He's definitely desperate for it because he started yesterday with the same thing. Like, could you imagine if that's like your only line? You know what I'm saying? That's your only line. Like, you, and you now for three days, you keep coming back with this. I'm going to ask for crack. And it's like, that's bad. You got to, what? Man, I feel bad for people. Like It's like, all right, man, here, yes, yes. Is this card on Fight Pass? Exclamation watch. Shinra 699. Exclamation watch. And it'll, um, UFC Fight Night or Take Over Sardegas, live free on ABC, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 p.m. Pacific. Find out how to watch it live in your country at, in the link, Blast Master Jens. Who is your favorite trash talker in the game right now? Huh? Oh, I don't know. I mean, they all crack me up. I love it. You know what I mean? I love it. I, they, they, I love it. Um, Crom, on the flip side, you probably made a few people a lot of money if they bet on Joe that night, Jens. Oh, yeah, right? There you go. I probably made people a lot of money. So it just depends. Like It just depends what you're after and what you like as far as trash talking, I suppose, right? Let's see. I say right too much. I apologize. Jens, was the original in so many ways? Oh, yeah. Heck, yeah. Who is my favorite up-and-comer? Um, Evil 2, well... I love all of my sucker punch fighters. Sucker punch ENT. I love the I love Mo. So there's there's a lot of youngsters and up and comers and everything like that. You know what I mean? So there's just a mess up. But obviously, and hopefully he took the name, but Adrian Yanez, aka Little Evil. I gave him the name Little Evil. I don't know if he's gonna take it, but it's his. It's his fight name if he wants it. That's one of those ones. Obviously, the, the nickname is so awesome. You got to gift it. And I was able to gift it to Yanez. So hopefully he takes it. Can Dustin become a champ? Anybody can become a champ. I mean, it's just timing from being ready and just putting it together at the same time, right? What? Hey, Jens, who was the biggest person you had to fight in MMA before getting the weight classes? Um, I think it was 6162. 235 pounds. I think it was 235 or 240. Something like that. But in the street, I was, there was a lot more. So, you know what I mean? All right. Al Joe and Burns. Al Joe and Burns. What day? We are on day seven. Wait. How big was I? Five, seven, probably like as big as I am now. 185 pounds, maybe. Um, but yeah, no, I think we're on day seven is on the boss show. And Sauki, and I love him. Gamrot, crazy. You know what I mean? Well, I trained with Tim Sylvia. Yeah, you know what I mean? And Imes and stuff like that. But. Let's see. Um. Strickland tries to, yeah, I like him all, so. He's making his way out. He's making his way out. Herbert Burns making his way out. Edwin Michael Jens, I started reading your book, Little Evil, on Audible. Did you actually write it? If so, wow, I'm impressed. I co-wrote it with uh, Arish. Arish is the writer. I'm just a bumbling fool, so he had to make sense of it. You know what I mean? Did Burns miss weight? No. If you're looking at the, um, they always do this on UFC.com. I think they do it for fun. But the 158.20, I'm thinking maybe it's the next day weigh-ins or something. Um, what? Do you think any kind of performance-enhancing drugs should be allowed? No. In no way, shape, or form. You could go, go start a league, a performance-enhancing league if you wanted to. You know what I mean? Appreciate you, uh, Brypen. You are no fool. Oh, no. I, but I, but I, I, I don't 
Herbert Burns, eight first-round finishes, finished nine of 11 wins, eight submissions, awarded UFC contract, Dana White's Contender Series, season three, week seven. It's not that, but I don't... Um, I talk gibberish. Would you have coached the zone the same way as everyone else? Yeah, of course. Because I coach everybody the same way. They already had their skill sets. They already, they already know and they have their styles. My job is to make sure you're in shape physically and mentally and ready to go come fight time. You know what I mean? That's all I did with any of them was conditioning and then time them out, make sure we did this, this, and this, and make sure they did, you know what I'm saying? If you get to do stuff like that, and that's one thing. So that I just wanted people to, you know what I'm saying? I just wanted people to do that. I mean, you've got to be an absolute idiot to walk into the official UFC stream and literally tell them to come over to your, come over to your stream so you can bootleg fights. Like, you just got to just be, it's got to be something seriously wrong with you. I mean, that's just, what? How do you not drink? How do you not drink water? When? I got my water right now. You know what I mean? But when it's time to float, oh, it's easy. But I know I do mumble a lot and I say kind of crazy words. What kind of supplements did fighters take during your time? They still do. I mean, the biggest thing is creatine, protein, you know what I mean? Your BCAs, your, your things for your joints, things for your muscles. Former CFFC featherweight champion, three wins by knockout, six by submission, Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt. Eat healthy, drink water, you know what I mean? Make sure you're hydrated, make sure you sleep. You got to take care of your machine, you know what I mean? Take care of your machine. Yeah, I know. That's why I do it, though. But I'm with you. Is creatine banned? Not that I know of. I don't think it shouldn't be. You know what I mean? Eat your veggies. Eat your meals. You know what I'm saying? Train hard. Work hard. Drinking water is, is super important. Recon by fire. You... <laughs> <laughs> Algeo is six foot. Herbert Burns is five nine. <sighs> five feet nine inches tall. I don't know. One forty five and one half. Herbert Herbert. Herbert. Ah, plus with creatine, it's a natural ting found in a vegan. Fills you with water. See, got to be hydrated. Is he getting a shot at lightweight? I like that. Fallout Paradise. I don't understand how the six-footers are getting down to 135 and 145. I know, right? How do they do that? I don't know, man. Like I said, when I seen Corey Hill, may he rest in peace, come rolling in for 155 versus it's like, yeah, I'm good with this. I'm good. And I don't know how they do it. Here we go. Here we go. Right out to the center. Look at that stance of Algio. Herbert trying to walk his way in. He's trying to chart. Look at right into a double. Going to push him up against the fence. Get that underhook. Nice. We got a body lock. All right. Now we got a single leg by Algio. Catches the leg. Now we got over under position. Push up against the fence. Head position. Head position. Algio reverses. Now has Burns pushed up. All right, now he's going to try to even get that shoulder in there, keep it in there, keep the head in the pocket, try to grab a leg. We're going to knee the thighs. Now he, he went for a knee, but Algio caught the knee, put it down. Now they broke. Boy, they're not letting go. They're going to keep this. 
Oh, he tried to throw him down. Herbert tried to throw him down with the Salto. Nice job. Reversal is going to take his back. Nope, he's going to pull him back and get half half mount. Oh, nice throw into half. No, he's going to jump into full mount. Algeo's going to give up his back. Herbert's going to try to sit back. Algeo's going to try to switch and go for a triangle really quick. GG. Algeo's now going to try to figure out he's going to fight his way out of this. He's going to flip him over. He's going to get a mounted. Mounted triangle, mounted triangle on Algio. Throwing elbows to the dome. Skeet, skeet. Algio's trying to fight it. Now he's going to twist it back around and get the shoulder across. He's going to peel the shoulder across, tighten up. Now he's ripping elbows to the head of Algio. And tight with this triangle. Going to try to pull it across. Algio's looking to try to figure out what he's going to try to do to see if he can get out of this. Now he's going to pull down on the head. Oh, this is a bad day, bad day. Now Algio's still trying to move around. He's got him up in the side. Algeo's on all fours. Burns is off to the side trying to crank it down. Algeo's now throwing right hands to the face. To the face, but he's stuck in there. He's still fighting, trying to throw knees to the midsection. GG. Now he's going to try to take that arm. There we go. Now he put the arm across. Burns did. Oh, he got out of it. Algeo got out of it. Now he just went for the omoplata. Now he got an omoplata by Burns. Burns is going to be fatigued out of this. Oh, now he's going to try to fight. Then he's going to circle around behind. Look at that. He's around in front of him. Algeo's going to get side control. <laughs> oh, he now he's got half guard. Oh, that was sick. How tired is that? Now we're going to see how tired is Burns. How tired is Burns? Now we've got, we've got half mount. Now we've got half guard, a.k.a. half mount. Algeo's going across. Burns looks like he's tie tie. I think Burns going to need a little, uh, he's going to need a breather. Look at how heavy he's breathing. Heavy breathing. Oh, that was tight. That was tight. Now he's going to start ripping. Look at that. Look for now. He's going to sit into him. Here he goes. Now Burns is going to try to sit into him. Burns pulled full scarred. Now we got Algio sitting down, literally holding the throat, trying to rip some shots. GG, weave out of the way. Boy, look at Burns trying to punch up. He's playing with him, throwing some big shots. Good ground and pound. Oh, I like it. Elbows. Oh, we got elbows with the posture up. Now he just opened up his legs. He popped out. GG. Now we're going to just start throwing. Open guard. Open guard. Burn. Algeo's looking to just throw some shots. Throw some elbows. Throw the leg by. Just throw it by. Algeo's charging up. Bumping up. Oh, hey. Look at that. Ty looked at his right hand. Fired it down. Burns gave Algeo something to look for because of the triangle was tight. Oh. Look at that. Now he's going to throw him by. There you go. Algeo's going to take his back. There you go. Nope. Burns fell down. Right Went right back down. Elbows. Elbows. He's in trouble. Algeo's all over him. Looking to throw these shots. Oh, another one lands. Burns is going to try to grab the guard. Oh, short time. 57, 56, 55 seconds. Algeo, clo I mean, Burns closes the guard. Algeo postures up. Oi! Looking to throw these elbows, body, elbow, body. I think he's going to survive, maybe. All right, now we're up. Look at how tired he is. Look how bad that warm up. Get him up! Get him up! Done! Fight's over! Wave it off! What's wrong with you? All right, whatever. Wow! Man, you can't do that. Let him just sit there and take that time. Fight's over. Now he's going to try to flip around. Now he's in side control. He's done. He's spent. I can't believe he's going to get out of this round. That's crazy. Now we're going to go with the crucifix by Algio. Elbows. Elbows. I can't believe the ref let him do that. I can't believe the ref just let him sit there and buy that much time. That's horrible. No nonsense. Yeah, that was horrible. Look at him. He can't even get up and walk to the corner. It's over. The doctor's going to come in and stop this. He's in the center of the cage. What do you mean you feel tired? He's done. He is staggering. He can't even sit on the stool. He is so done. He spent everything going for that triangle choke. No nonsense with some nonsense right there. That's horrible. Horrible. That is banned. That was a ba That's bad. You can't do that. That's just, you can't do that. Let him just look at all the doctors are sitting there looking at him. Dude, you guys better stop this. He's done.
like I said, you can be in cardio shape every now and then. What? Cardio. But that's it. Because you know why? The wrestling. The wrestling. There was too much wrestling. Too much grappling. Too much squeezing. You can't come back from that. Look at this. Get up and take him down. They're trying to fire him up. Yeah. He's done. Oh, now we've got a timeout. Now you're going to bring in the doc. GG, he's done. His hands are up against the fence. He delayed a takedown. This fight was over. They're begging him to fight. You see what I'm saying? They're begging him to fight. And he, here he goes, but now he's dancing. Algeo's up, moving, sitting in that side stance. Oy. He caught the foot. Here he goes with the lock. He's got the back. There he goes. Nice takedown by Burns, but then reversed by Aljo. Now he's in the guard. Now he's going to throw his legs up and try to get a submission. Now he just passed him. There he goes. Now Algio's going to take his back. Burns going to roll with it. What's that? Now his muscles are filled with blood and lactic acid. Lactic acid. We're not allowed to talk about it in this chat, but yeah, very much so. The lactic acid, it's done. It's, not, it's done. Now he's holding on the guard, trying to keep Algio pushed down. Now, the one thing is Algio should probably try to muster up and fire up and get and and and, and look like, like he could push this, right? Push this. Now he's gonna do it, but now he jumped in the guard and let him play. Now look at Burns has got the leg. Algio's gonna spin around. Burns is gonna try to maybe try to keep a knee bar ish. Knee bar ish. Oh, Burns is tie tie. Now, Aljo standing out by the feet, going to stand up in front of him, try to pass it, look at the step on his face. That's illegal. He just stepped on his face. Look at big right hand. Now he's going to sit there and try to get half guard. Aljo is definitely starting to slow down. Look at Now he's waiting. Stand him up. One, two, three. They waved it off. Finally, he went on all fours and wouldn't even stand up. Now they waved it off. Now they waved it off. Look at that. He's laying on his back. He's so tired. So tired. It's fatigue. Fatigue makes cowards of us all. When he lost that triangle choke, that was it. You know what I mean? It's going to be his knee. The whole thing was nuts right there. What's that? He's got to be hurt. How could you get that tired? Are you serious? Wrestle for two minutes and you'll get exactly that tired. And it won't come back. You can run a sprint, you'll get tired for 30 seconds. You can wrestle for two minutes in a, in a, and burn all of your muscles and get the fire going on, the, the numbness in your hands and your forearms. That's not coming. You're not getting that back. That's done. The lactic acid, man, the wrestling side of it. But again, oh, yeah. Simone and Shore next. Lactic acid is the worst thing on the planet. That's the, the most horrifying thing you can have. I'm telling you, wrestling, conditioning, lactic acid is the most horrifying thing that can happen to you. The shoulders, like you can tell muscle heads with the lack of oxygen, they get purple, horribly purple. And it's that numbness, that burning that happens in your forearm. You can't even make a, you can't even squeeze anymore. He squeezed and did everything he could with those triangle choke, right? And he held that triangle choke as long as he could. His legs had to just be done. Oh, I know he did. UFC, I think Burns got tired going for the triangle earlier. No, he absolutely did. He burnt everything out going for that. You know what I mean? Going for that triangle choke. 
Oh, man, for a minute, that dude with the hair, I thought that was Ric Flair for one second. That was sick. How tight? How tight was the triangle? He said, I've been getting out of triangle since I was a blue belt. It was the elbows, see? Those elbows that he was throwing when he was in the triangle. That. Oof. That. You know what I mean? I know. Look at the jackets. They're sick. What can be done to keep lactic acid from building up? Is there a nutritional option or something? Or is it just unavoidable? Well, like wrestling, swimming, and things like that, you get used to dealing with it. You know what I mean? That's what wrestlers, one of the things is, wrestlers, we push it. Where if I start feeling burn in my muscles, I know you're done. And that's why we wrestle. And that's why, you know what I mean? That's why we do what we do. Because if I'm burning and I learn how to deal with it, you train your body so you learn to deal with it. And it should be, it should be a good thing. Think about it. If I push my arms, that's the Iowa rest. That's the Iowa way in wrestling. If I can push it where that burn is in there, you know what I'm saying? Then I know you're in trouble. Because how many times did you do it? How many times did you train that way? And that's when you scare people. It's horrifying. You know what I mean? But that's the training. And you watch a lot of people, they duck it. They duck it and as much as possible. Like I used to do this mad run and lift. You do, you, I had these 10 stations. You do reps of 20, lightweight 20 uh, through each one of them. Then you get on the, then you get on the treadmill and you go up 0.5 incline. I mean, up 0.2 incline and up 0.5 speed every two minutes until you're running, until you're just sprinting for 10 minutes. Then you go back through the lift and then you go back on the treadmill, back through the lift, back on the treadmill and you're done. Yeah. No, it's just when you do those training days. The run and lift, I only did that twice a week. And then we had like a medicine ball routine, but you wrestle every day. You know what I'm saying? Wrestle, get into scrambles. Jump rope. Jump rope will help you. You know what I'm saying? So swimming is incredible. Swimming will handle it all day. You know what I mean? Is that what he said? Bryphon, did he say that about Chase Hooper? <laughs> no. <laughs> what? <sighs> Pink cell phones. How you do? How you do? Hope you're well. Hope you're well. Oh, did he? Charles Livietta just tweeted that he signed the contract. Ooh. Just think. Was I ever on a jump rope team? Well, I was on the Militage fighting team and we jumped rope. Three, three, three minutes to start it off, to start off your, your training, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, get in there. Or when you're tired, do it again. How about Tat? What up? How about Tat? What up, Jens? What up? How you doing? How's everybody doing? Everybody doing all right? We're going to have guest assist here soon. That's going to be, we're going to have guest assist. I feel weird. I've been just being chat. I can't believe he cut, I can't believe he cut the mullet though. I mean, I'm over here mullet farming like a boss. My man cut it off. Why? Why? You know? Who's the guest assist? Uh, join Laura Sanko and Cub Swanson and myself, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. I'm so excited. I'm liking this fight right here. This is going to be that fight, right? This is going to be that fight. <laughs> yeah, Cub Swanson. Yeah, Cub Swanson and Laura Senko. I know. <clears throat> Great guest assist. I know. See, I should have brought more coffee or something. I'm on the struggle bus.
Yep, I know, right? That's what I love about it. Love about it. Oh, no, we got... Oh, yeah, Soriano next. I know. Come on. But I need my... I have no water. Where's my water jug? Carson! <laughs> what up, Slayer? Aunt? I saw you in Vegas, Jens. Go ahead and cut the mullet. Can Ortega get this fight done by submission? Ah, man, I think he can. I absolutely think he can. I think Ortega's dangerous, you know? Oh, we have to see what Yair does, but Ortega's, he's a threat everywhere, you know, unless he gets kicked, but I don't, I don't know. It's going to be a lot of fun, a fun fight. Carson! Oh, I wake up my wife, she's going to crush me, so I got to be quiet. Huh? Ooh, inbound future wrestling. Yeah, you know, he's up gaming somewhere. I don't even know. He's probably sleeping, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah rear. <laughs> Have you seen Ortega improve on his striking? Has he improved on his striking? I don't know, but it was never that bad. You know what I mean? It's never been that bad. Good job, DZ. Good job. Um, I was going to say, Kia the Croc, cut the mullet. You don't cut the mullet. The mullet cuts you. The mullet just decides when it's time to leave. Like, I am tired of being on the back of this kid's dome skeet skeet. I'm out of here. You know what I'm saying? Look at this thing. But it's got, there's a lot. I mean, there's a lot to it. So we got, we'll start, we're going to have to, we got to definitely, we got to get in there and start, um, you know? I don't know. Because I got to shave this down. I'm not sure how, I'm not sure how I want to let it all happen. There's a lot going on back there. And there's a lot going on. So we'll get it figured out, you know. Sixteen and oh, Jack Shore. This is big. It's gonna be a big fight. Yeah, it did. Like I said, I got like I said, I got sick last November before Thanksgiving, and I haven't cut my hair since. So I had COVID and then after my two weeks COVID, it turned into pneumonia. So then I had pneumonia and I'm like, that's it. I'm just letting it ride. I'm never, I'm just leaving it, leaving it here. Versace pro much love. I appreciate it. Looking good. Jens, you looking good. So I, you looking good. UFC should provide fight night weight. Why? Who cares? You know they're going to be big. They're big. High pace. I know Kimbo wasn't a great fighter, but he was a good dude. But he was a great fighter in a lot of ways. You know what I mean? The people loved him. He created a massive platform. That's enough. Oh, big one, too. Nice one, too. This will be a good fight, right? Sure may take his first out. See, I'm with you, Fallout Paradise. I'm with you. I'm excited to see this. What, Slayer? Jens, how do you think Frank Dukes in his prime would fare in the UFC like all the other strictly one-sided karate martial artists with the inability to handle the clinch or the takedown? But had he done like the other ones, like, like a Wonderboy Thompson and stuff and adapted, see, you got to think about it like this. Having the ability to make you as good as it did in one sport, right? To be the best in your, in your craft. Now you just add in, you're still going to have that mindset. You'll have that mindset. And now you just got to add in the rest of it and change it. But you're willing to do what it takes. A world champion mindset to grind out. You know what I mean? Be uncomfortable. Push yourself. Repetition, repetition, repetition. All of that. So I think they'd do fine if they were to adapt. You know what I mean? But if they don't adapt, you know what happens. You know what I'm saying? We watch it. That's why the UFC, that's how the UFC was created in the first place, was to answer, can this style beat this style? Can this style beat this style? But then when they just started melding together, it just became, we, we created a whole nother animal. You know? Created a whole nother animal. It's incredible. I love it. 
Jack Shore tied third longest active win streak in UFC bantamweight division with five, one of 25 undefeated fighters in UFC at 16 and 0. Second highest strike accuracy in UFC bantamweight history, 59.9%, 18 and 2 UFC takedown ratio. Ah! Raymond Daniels and MVP don't love grappling like Wonderboy do. Yeah, but so what you do is you work on keeping it on your feet. You know who just did a phenomenal job of doing that? Fazeev. Fazeev's like, yeah, no, I'm going to make sure I work on my, my sprawl and my brawl. When, when is Laura and why didn't you go Invisalign? Laura and Cub are coming up soon. And the Invisalign, they told me that, you know what? This way you can't run from it. Because people take out their Invisalign, they go to bed, they forget to put it in. And they're just like, they're not a fan of it. Because it's like, but this way I'm in and there's no getting out of it. And it's going to get done when it's supposed to. You know what I'm saying? Oladi Sama, Oladi Sama. Here he goes. Four fight win streak, second most takedowns in UFC Bantamweight history with 35, sixth smallest bottom position percentage among active UFC Bantamweights, Ricky Simone. Um, midget explosion. Can't give Jens the option to not do it. Exactly. I tried to get out of it. You know what I mean? Tie my shoes. Hey, Jens. We hyped for today or what? I'm super hyped. Super hyped for all of it. A little nervous, but very hyped. The savage one. Yo, Jens, I think my nephew used to train with you in Iowa. Eric Showtime Shelton. I know exactly who it is. Yeah, it's, it's Eric Shelton, of course. Heck yeah. That's a winner mindset. Trap yourself into perfect teeth. I didn't have it. Yeah, I had no choice. If you're going to get in, get in. Oladi Sama, I say it all, I've said it like 10 times. He wants that top 10 opposition. If he can grab this O from Jack Shore, you know what I mean? If, he, if that O decides to go, oh, I see the name. Oi! Man, I love it. I'm already seeing other, the names. I like it. My man is in early. Gosh, dang, that's going to be tight. That's what, right? That, yeah, they were just talking about that since when Ricky out grappled Marab. Then that's definitely saying something. And that's one thing with Jack. I mean, come on, let's go. 29, 5, 6, 135 and a half. Ooh, plus 130 underdog for uh, Ricky. Jack Shore is the 150 uh, favorite. Oh, man. All right. All right, 5'8", 27. Mm. What? I think Ricky takes it. I hear you. I think they'll all be in here in a minute. What's these guys' weights now? I don't know. Why are y'all worried about how much they blow up? Add, probably put 10 pounds on there. <laughs> Everybody's about 10 pounds. What's your pick for Ortega versus Rodriguez? I'm going to leave that one up to the Cub, man. I'm going to let Killer Cub come up with that. But I, I don't know, man. I just think or the way that Ortega, as fast as he can snap those snap those submissions on, it's scary, right? And he, his stand-up is I, it's probably getting better every day. And what, oh, I don't know. I, man, I want to pick. If I were to pick one, if like you said, Jens, pick one now. I would say Ortega, but I don't want to jinx anybody. And I'm staying neutral because Yair Rodriguez is a phenomenal fighter too. And I'm kind of like the, since I am the, the um, commentator, it's my job to be neutral. Unless you're one of my teammates, then it's, there's no neutrality at all. <laughs> you know what I mean? All right. All right. Here we go. Yo, they knows Jay. He Ortega is very dangerous, right? They knows Jay, and the way that, that as fast as he ends, I mean, I don't know how Volkanovski got out of that, which was mind blowing. You know what I mean? Feeling out process. All right, leg kicks, and we got a kick and a jab, kick and a jab. I like. Look at that. The calf kicks by uh, Ricky. 
And that jab, look, a big one, too, by Ricky to close the distance. There he goes. Look, he overcommitted on the shot. Ricky goes in for the takedown, takes Jack down. Jack stands right back up, puts his back against the fence. Body locked by Ricky. Got double underhooks, double underhooks, body locked. All right, now we're going to get in that battling of the head position. See, I like that. Ricky's got his head in the pocket, but then Jack pushes his way out of it, looking to try to figure out. I like this. Straight body lock. We're going to throw some shoulder strikes. Keep him right here. Now try to peel that foot off. Look, but Ricky's just holding on, right? Holding on with that body lock. Can't throw no punches. He's going to have to throw a knee against the thigh, but he's not letting go because... Jack's ready to try to explode out of there. Now he's going to work his way in, pummel in. There we go. Break back to the center. Rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat, Ricky. So here we go. Now, here we go. High kick. So Shore is kind of, again, there's that. He's got a good jab, but see, he oversteps. He just did it again. He overstepped with the jab. Ricky dropped down, grabbed the legs. Shore was able to find it off. But now, what might happen is that might keep him from really stepping in and take some steam off that jab. Nope, he's still stepping in. Here we go. I like it. I like it. And what that's what I'm saying to Savage One, right? Ortega has more heart than most UFC roster. He's quick. He's crazy submissions. And I think his stand-up's getting better, which wasn't bad to begin with. That's what I was like. Exactly. You know what I mean? Predictions are still open. Sorry, we got things going on. We're bringing in. I know there's. we got guest assists that are, remember, we got to make sure everybody's getting situated and everything like that. So I'm sure that's what's happening. So you're going to kind of bear with them. Remember, we do a lot. We do a lot to make these things happen. Oh, in goes in on a double. Simone's on a double, but he's going to have to switch it to a single. Jack's doing a good job with that overhook, trying to stand him up. Stand him up. He's got his back against the fence. All right, now we up. Now we up. Now, again, just push up against the fence. Doing a good job. Oh, there's a little shoulder bump by Ricky. He's going to drop down again for that double. Looking to try to grab the looking to try to grab around the waist. Yeah, we don't links don't show up anyways. Is guest assist how people say guests in certain parts of America? No, it's just how I do. I just throw people off. I I, I got all kinds of words. I don't know why. It's society instead of society. It's just me. It's a Jens thing. Yeah, it's a Jens thing. All right, here we go. Broke back to the center. Break back to the center. Moving around. Simone's on that outer check. Moving around. They had the yeet yeet and the skeet skeet. <laughs> you got the skeet 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 skeet. You know what I mean? <laughs> Look at this. All right, now again. So Simone's got him pushed up against the fence again. Getting this over under, keeping pushed up. Ready? Oh, we had a shot to the satchel, shot to the nugget, but we're okay. Pushing back up against the fence. GG, ref. GG. Oi! Here we go. Now they're going to pump them tight to throw that knees. All right. Ricky moves back out, move back to the center. A Jensism. Oi, combo. But Ricky was out of the way. GG. There's that jab. There's that jab. Ricky winning on control for sure, right? There, two, big one, two lead hook by, by Shore, but blocked and moved out of the way, but he's still aggressive punches, aggressive punches. Yeah, Muslima, ABC. Oh, good jab. There's that jab. Oh, now he's fighting off that takedown. Sun is, is, is waning a little bit. GG, first round. Man, Jack's got some crispy hands, crispy hands. It's nice there is so much hugging in UFC. Lots of affection shown. Yeah, over and under. It's that, day, it's that lethal affection. Lethal affection. Who's winning right now? I'm not watching. I'm stationed overseas, and UFC won't let me get fight pass. What? Exclamation watch. 
But um, I don't, you know, to be honest, I would say Ricky is because he's pushing him up against the, but he's pushing him up against the fence and he's just been kind of controlling the pace. You know what I'm saying? Nothing too damaging landing, nothing too crazy. 11 significant strikes by Shore, 14 by, by uh, Ricky. So can't get fights on AI. King of the Sheeps. He got you. Got you. Exclamation watch all day. Anything for you. Anything for this chat. You know that. Anything for the chat. Love and appreciate all of you. YouTube. How you doing? Love you. Y'all roll over here and hit that follow button. We're trying to get that 200,000. Make sure you hit the follow button. Twitch.tv slash UFC. We're going for 200,000. Not to mention we here. I'm here Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern. We're figuring out, we're working on some things for Tuesdays and Thursdays. They're showing fights. Saturdays, we have Watch Along Sunday. Uh, UFC.com. UFC.com. And I go to, and then they have the, you can do it right there. And it's live. It's the live stats. All right, for the out process right here again. I do sumo on my, though, mobile, Drew. This is the UFC stream. On my stream, with, it's, uh, it's sumo because it's 15 days to Basho. And then we watch Bear Duck. We watch everything. All things combat. Wrestling. Boxing. Look at Shorts taking his time. Popping, working on that jab. Boom, inside leg kick. There's that lead hook, that another lead hook. He now look, he got Shore going for the takedown. Oh, Simone gonna get that got double unders. GG, GG. Now he's got him pushed up again. Oh, now he's gonna try to take him down. There he goes, looking to try to get the takedown. Try to hop on the back. There you go. Ricky throws in a leg. He's gonna throw in a leg. Jack's gonna try to stand up and fight the hands. Yeah, I don't watch Steven Seagal movies. Now he's back. Jack's doing a really good job on the defense side of things. Getting back to his feet really quick. Good job of Pullman getting his back against the fence. Oh, there it is. Then he dropped levels. Fired that elbow. Dropped down. That's exactly it right there. Up, 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 up. Look at, try to take him down. Short was looking for a guillotine. Ricky carried him across the cage, dropped him down, slammed him down. A la Matt Hughes, a la Matt Hughes. I know how he brought up the, the, the brothers. Look at, took him right to the corner. Brought him right to the corner. That's awesome. That is awesome. Jens is way behind me. Isn't that what you want me to be? Just don't type the spoilers. Now, there he goes. Look at pressure, pressure, pressure. Push him up against me. He's the brand. He's the brands brothers, right? Once they got a hold of you, you can't get him off. That's that aggressive, relentless attack. They just keep wrestling. Boom, boom. In on the leg, in on the arm, in, 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 in. All the times you're like, would you please just get off me? Why is UFC on? Because it's called ABC. ABC. One, two, three. So now they're back to the center. Here we go. Boom. Calf kick. Oy. Oh, he caught him. Ricky caught him with the right hand. Jack tried to go with the one, two. Ricky caught him with the wide hand, wobbled him down. Now he jumped on his back, threw in the legs, got him finally out. Looking for the rear naked choke. Oh, now he's got the arm triangle when Jack tries to come back and give up his back. Ricky's got arm triangle squeeze. Ricky squeezing. Jack is tapping. Boom. Ripped him with the right hand. Ripped him with the right. Wore him out. Hung on him. Hung on him. Hung on him. Boom. Right hand. Hurt him bad. Put him down. Arm child. If that don't shoot him up, yo. Ten seconds behind. Jens with the spoilers. I don't know what you want me to do. Look at the right hand right over the top of the jab. 
Right over the top of the jab. He fired a ran. Right, he fired a right hand over the jab. Look. Big right. Boom. That's what you do when you're fighting another righty. Fire that fire that kitchen sink over the jab. Look at that. Stilted him. Stilted him. Boom. Mount. That was sick. Punch, punch, punch. Give up his back. He didn't want to give up his back, so he turned back in. Gave him the arm triangle. Gave him the arm triangle. Boom. Man, Simone. What a boss. What? The only reason why Simone got the finish was because Shore didn't have great defense? Yeah, okay. Or the fact that he got ripped with the right hand, got stilted, knocked down, and got knocked dizzy and was hurt. But yeah, no, it was he didn't have the defense. Um, Jens, awesome commentator, not even watching, and he got me hyped up on that. That's why I do what I do, Kool-Aid. Like people are watching it on the radio. I assume people are watching it on the radio. I try to get as active and animated as I can. You know what I'm saying? I think he had phenomenal defense. He got rickrolled. He got blasted. That right hand, man, he stilted him. Again, I, we always talk about it. When you're throwing out a pair of twos, a.k.a. your jab, boom, boom, I'm about, boom. I'm talking about that left. Boom, boom, bang. You counter back. When you're firing your kitchen sink, that's a bad trade. You know what I'm saying? You got to be careful. It's a horrible trade. Uh, wait, what? Hold on. UFC, I'm not saying on the takedown. I know you're talking about on the submissions. And what I'm saying is that he got, he got knocked down by a shot. Did you see him get stilted? He was hurting. He was he, he did he was probably trying to get his bearings and he got stuck into the mount and then he had to make a choice. I go this way and he went for the rear naked choke. Well, I better turn back and give up my back right into an arm triangle. But he was still probably concussed. He got ripped with the right hand. Wait, UFC, I'm not wait on his oh on his feet. He didn't have great defense on his feet. He got countered. He got countered with the lead hook, and he countered right over the top of it. That's what that's called is a counter. That was sick. But, yeah, no, I got you. The dude is a striking savage. The grind, the grind, the grind, right? What did happen with all of that clinching and all that grinding, it took some steam off those, it took some steam off those shoulders. You know what I'm saying? Took some steam off those shoulders. And then the way that he threw that hook, it just, it was, it was half hard. And he fired that right, right over the top of it. Bam. Can you open up the face-offs before each matchup so we can give better predictions? What? I can't, I'm sitting in my chair. I have no control over this one. I'm just sitting here. Longest active win streak. Aljamain Sterling with seven. Marab Devash really with six. TJ Dillashaw with five. Adrian Yanez, a.k.a. Little Evil with five. Ricky Simone with four. Oh, he called out O'Malley. He called out O'Malley. Uh, what? What I'm saying is that Shore could have had great striking defense. Uh, um, people like to gamble on UFC. That's why I asked. No, I get it. Well, do but no, I'm saying what I'm saying is I don't have, I don't have, I can't. I'm trying to understand. Like show, I would show something, but I don't know. We're showing the. You want to see the face-offs? I mean, you can go to UFC.com and all, look, at I see voices. I see people are showing up. We have them both in here. Oh, I can see them. What? Follow Sean at Mal find, <laughs> Follow Sean O'Malley on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Sean O'Malley UFC. What?
Hydrate, Jens. Me, hydrate? I will after the fights. Proper number 12, Irish Risky. The smoothest. Like the gold in the world, he says. All right. I hope Soriano worked on his gas tank. Ooh, let's go, Puna. See, I got to go with Puna. Sucker punch. Sucker punch, teammate. Puna! And it's quiet time. Quiet time. Like, where is Cub? I, I, look, here's the deal. I can see them. I can see that they've been brought in. You know what I mean? You got some smooth bourbon you're enjoying, Jack Noose. Much love and appreciation. Is it that Evil 100 bourbon? You know it. It's a beautiful thing. Um, yeah, no, I see them up there. I see, I see them up there. So I, I'll probably get switched over here sooner than later. But they have showed up, judging by, I can see, I see, uh, yeah. They, they are here. They are here. Who should Cejudo get? Cejudo should get, he called out everybody. Let him, Cejudo gets what Cejudo wants. Sanko and Cobb in the waiting room chat, nearly there. They're just getting set up. When is Evil 100 coming to Canada? I have no clue. That distribution thing's a tough, that's a tough one. Can you all hear that? Can you hear that? Chat? Oh, they can't? Okay. I can. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> that threw me off. I was like, huh? Hello? <laughs> oh, that was crazy. That was awesome. Notable UFC fighters, Longo, Sarah, Fight Team, Matt Sarah, Aljamain Sterling, Weidman, Devos Willey, Frivola, Gordon, I like you. No, you're golden, though. I was okay either way. I like it. I just wanted to make sure I, had, I was like, I keep thinking I have to mute my, my go XLR and stuff. That's why it's, I'm so, I don't have no powers. I've got nothing. I'm just sitting here. You know what I'm saying? A lot of familiarity on both sides. Both had, both had. You know what I'm saying? Chat. Ooh, Puna. Am I still involved with, um, I watched West Coast a little bit. I like the people from West Coast. Tiny Tank was in here a minute ago. So I still rap with West Coast and uh, the Northwest, the Scrapyard, I believe. That's about it. I mean, as far as who I talk to, uh, but I still, I'll watch them from time to time. West Coast is really cool because they usually they all come in and hang out or they're you know in Vegas. So they all hang out, which I love. They all they're all put them all I know in the wide world of sports jackets. That's what I'm saying. It's sick. That's like that's like my childhood kind of thing. I'm like, what? Charlie Z versus XQC, huh? <laughs> As long as I can, um, Lungiambula, Lungiambula is walking in, walking in. As long as I can do the, uh, I want to coach XQC. Dolce. That's Felder's, Felder's favorite name to say is Dolce Lungiambula. We are, well, we old, but that's older. So I get it. You know what I'm saying? 
Has Dana done a good job with the UFC in your opinion? I think everybody's done a phenomenal job with the UFC. Look how big it is. It's phenomenal. You know what I mean? It's incredible. No, it in no way, shape, or form does it bring... Well, I mean, huh? Yo, Pratic86, yo, Jens, how are you, my man? I'm good. How are you? How are you? But no, Dana, like, they've done phenomenal jobs. Look how big this is. It's incredible. It's incredible. You know what I mean? So I think it's been... Dalcha, former EFC heavyweight and light heavyweight champion. Five wins by knockout. Judo black belt. I mean... UFC's killing it. They've done phenomenal. They've done incredible with their brand. UFC's, I love it. Love the UFC. Could UFC ever become a, could MMA ever become an Olympic sport? Yeah. change up the rules that's that's the part of mma that still needs to get fixed mma needs a hug mma needs these rules with the amateur side of it and i've got the whole thing had fun have fun talking about it and no doubt without dana the, no without the fertitas the fertitas right the fertitas 4-0 UFC knockdown ratio, set, uh, finished 7 of 8 wins, 5 knockouts, awarded UFC contract, Dana White's Contender Series, Season 3, Week 1, Puna. The Fertitas took the risk. Station casinos and stuff like that, the Fertitas were the one. You know what I mean? You can't, none without it. And then Dana became the face and the president. But the Fertitas, you wouldn't be here without them. They want to be on the back, though, so I'm going to see, yes, Dana, Dana. I mean. Ooh, 5'11", Puna, Dolce, Dolce's 34, 34. What do you mean? Well, then, of course, with tap out was a part, but. Yair or Ortega, who you got? I think Ortega might get a sub. You know, that's it. I'm, I'm going to be neutral, but, ah, you know what I'm saying? <sighs> ah. How do you think an MMA fight would go without a cage like we see in Sambo? What do you mean? Mm -hmm. I think no cage is better live until they go through the until they go through the ropes or something, or just put them on a flat platform, and you got everybody in the back trying to stand up to see what's happening. Wrestling has out of bounds. Wrestling has out of bounds. They've got it. They've got a circle. And then when they in freestyle tournaments, we, they get cut into squares and we've got squares. Oop. We move over to ABC after this. Uh -uh. Oh, here we go, here we go. They were former teammates. What? Do you think Buffer said no to the gold jacket? <gasps> you know what? That's a good question. That is a good question. I would like to know such things. I would like to know. He's like, nah, man, I'm, I'm the buff. 
I got my own jackets. I can't be, I can't be doing this. <laughs> I hope he did. I hope he did. Oh, that'd be awesome. What's that? I feel like UFC should really make it like Coliseum, easy to see. So what happened? And, and never travel anywhere and don't go to any other, don't go to any other platforms ever. Just stay in that one Coliseum that they built. I don't necessarily know if that's what they're after when they like to travel the globe. You know what I mean? And go to different venues and stuff. So then you make every other place with the venue, you have to build a Coliseum or you don't get to have it. Yeah, that's kind of probably a fired on that one. <laughs> what, did you ever think UFC would be on ABC? Yeah, the last time we did a watch along, they were on ABC. And we had one point, they had 1.1 million. We had 1.5 million in the watch along. With being on the front page and stuff. Or we did 1.5 million. Uh! Oi, the combos. Hold on, the combos, though. I got to fight. I got to be talking about. Oh, there we go, right hand lands. Stop asking me all these cool questions. I'm going to answer them. I can't help it. I'm not looking. I'm not looking. <laughs> Oi. Down goes. Now he's out on the front headlock. Now he's out on the front headlock. Oh, look. He wants that front. Like he's going to get this on Puna. Not a literal call, Sam, but make seating look down at the ring in the arena. So you want everybody to just to change their arenas now to fit that. I mean, I'm, I'm sure that would work really well. I'm, there, I'm sure a whole bunch of arenas would be like, yeah. I mean, they could bring in that seating if they wanted to. When I was fighting, did you ever think UFC would be on ABC? I was happy to see the, man, I was happy when the UFC got into Atlantic City. It was only legal in three states when I started fighting. It was kept alive via the underground forum on the internet. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I knew it'd be the biggest. I knew it'd be the biggest sport on the planet, of course. They're both swinging. All right, here we go. All right, now the way he's walking his way down, you got righty versus lefty. See, and that's the one thing. Lugion Bula is doing it right. He gets in, he gets in, fire that straight right against the lefty, right? Straight right meets the lefty. I hate saying that. Straight left meets a righty, but, and that's the one thing is I'm looking for it. We got a calf kick, but you know how they, they, they're just easing their way in to throw this one big super shot. Now Lugion Bula changes up stance, which is cool. Oh, oh, big left by Puna. Nice knee, plumb the head. They're going to clinch. Oh, oh, here we go. Oh, big combo. These two are throwing leather. Oh, we got a double leg by, we got a double leg by Lungiambula. Gets the takedown. Puna's going to try to pop up and hit a switch. Get that switch. Ooh, hit that switch, hit that switch. They're still holding this position. Look. You got to get that switch. Look, Puna's going to try to get that switch, but that body lock. Oh, the body lock by Lungi Abula, man. He is squeezing. Oh, there you go. He had to bail off. He's going to try to climb up. He's going to get up on the fence. All right, here we go. Now, he's got to try to fight the hands. Lungi Abula's got to push up against the fence. Up, 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 throw down, nice throw down, but Lugia and Bula brings him down to the floor. Pona's going to walk up. Puna's going to try to step up. Here we go, here we go. All right, going to try to fight the hands again. Ooh, we got hand fights. We got hand fights. Peeling down on the hands, peeling down on the hands. Oh, come on now. I like it. I like it. One second time. Nice. Power. The power. When they set up the arena, it can be basketball, music, MMA. When they set up the UFC, they, they can easily change it. Having no cage actually gives them more flexibility here.
So change up the whole game. Oh. I want to see what MMA without a cage looks like live and at home. Well, now you have an idea that you can go out there and get some promoters and develop MMA without a cage and see how it goes. Some people go out there and develop MMA with a, with, with a, with a boxing ring. Some, you know what I mean? They go out there and give it a shot. If people show up, patoosh, they love it. See, why not do one with plexiglass? I'm about the plexiglass. Personally. I mean, that's what I would do. Rather than telling the UFC what they need to do, go out there and create your own. You know what I mean? That's what I've always, for all these streams, people always, UFC should do this, UFC. How about you go do it, and if it's a good idea, it'll take off. Let the UFC do what the UFC does. And then, you know what I mean? All right, here we go, here we go. Oh, big shot by Puna. Oh, big left by Runa. Flattened him out, landed three shots. One shot. One Puna shot. Bam! Oh, he's flexing everywhere. Puna's going ham. Puna's going ham. GG Puna, GG landed a mighty, mighty left hand. Mighty. He's sat there, he's going this. That's 50. That's 50. What a shot. What a shot. His left hand, man. Look at him. He's screaming everywhere. I love, I love him. Look at this. Big kick, block, look at the way he blocked it. Stepped in with that lead hook to buy some time to auto occupy, right? Lead hook to occupy, and that left hand was nice, clean, and down the pipe. Nice and clean, but look at the way he blocked that kick. Look at the lead hook to occupy the hand. Look at the lead hook occupied. Oh, uh, looking directly at him. Go ahead and take note. Please grab that picture and take note. Eyes wide open. Eyes wide open. Boom, block. Boom. As soon as he kicked him, he blocked it. Lead hook to buy time, swat the hand. Boom! Oh, you gotta love him. Dude, he's everywhere. He's everywhere. He's out, man. I love him. Nice job, Puna. Nice job, Puna. Sucker punch, teammate. So we go right into the main card. All right, so chat, five, ten minutes, we're going to make this transition. You asked for it, you're about to get it. Cub Swanson, Laura Sanko, Laura Sanko, and Cub Swanson, and myself. So I'll see you in two and two. Don't leave. Get, or leave to get something to drink. Go to the bathroom, do what you got to do. Uh, it's fight time, main card. See you in a second. And I'm just going to stand here awkwardly unless I'm gone or not gone or... The official UFC stream here on Twitch. Oh, 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 oh. Her in the head and her. You gotta shoot, brother! Right you gotta shoot! You gotta shoot! What are you doing? Welcome back once again to the UFC Esports League. Tonight, eight of the best in the world will enter the UFC Octagon to compete. This is going to be a very hard uphill battle for Game Room. Ooh. Oh, what a straight head kick. This is very bad for Game Room, but he lands it right oh. And he's coming forward. Rear uppercut, double up again. Right hook lead, uppercut again. Now has him against the cage. No! <laughs> As always, on the way in show, I'm joined by Laura Sanko, the former champ over there polishing his belt. Oh, Our spelling bee champ. His, eyes, oh, are, his yes. eyes are starting to water. What is this? Oh, my God. Look at him getting so much power in this game. Extra rounds live from the Fight Pass 
Studios. It is me, TJ DeSantis, along with Pearl Gonzalez. The show is Extra Rounds and it's from UFC Fight Pass. Appreciate you joining us live here on the Twitch channel. Shelling up, weathering the storm, then pop, pop. One, yeah, two, three. Going, yeah, you right back now. there, that shell. Nice. Wow. That shell is working, baby. Boom, boom, boom. Was that, for, was that five oh. minutes already? Fans, by following UFC on Twitch, interact with your favorite fighters yes. as they break down Second past round, boys, fights, preview Fight. upcoming matchups, host live watch alongs during UFC pay per views. And of course, gamers. Friend, you're a big Twitch guy, right? Huge on Twitch. Oh. What is it again? <laughs> Video games and much more. I know Jen's Bulver is real big on there. We'd love to have you in our community of hardcore UFC fans. Follow the UFC on Twitch. I'll see you in chat.
all fired up. We are unmuted and we are live. We are back. Okay, I told you. I told you I wasn't by myself. I, y'all thought I was BSing. I told you I wasn't by myself. I don't even know how to begin to start a scene, but I did. Um, we got to go right to bat. We go, Cub Swanson, my man. How are you doing, Cub? I'm Is doing great. I'm, Cub, congratulations. I'm excited to be here. Thank you. I appreciate uh, that. Congratulations on the Hall of Fame. Much love and appreciation on that. How's everything been going? I've just been, you know, trying to trying to get back in the gym, trying to train, uh, focusing back on me after, you know, being in Vegas and enjoying life. Uh, but yeah, it's time to get back on the grind, put the trophy away and start to focus again. You know? <laughs> well, don't put it away. Just put, put it on the mantle. You know, yeah. you put it on the mantle. And speaking of mantle, did you hear who just said that? That's it. Laura Sanko. Laura. <laughs> I never thought, man, how you doing? I'm good. I'm great. I'm excited to be here. And Jen, I don't know if you know this, but in anticipation of this, I was going back down memory lane. I'm pretty sure I fought on the undercard of one of your Titan fights here in Kansas City when you fought Brian Davidson. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That, he was my coach at the time. Are you serious? I'm, yeah. Yeah. So we've actually fought. I mean, it was a long time ago and I was just an amateur, but yeah, crazy. That's what? pretty cool. See, now yeah. I'm dizzy because I, I lost that fight. He up kicked me in the face and yeah. yeah, I don't remember much afterwards, but <laughs> Oh, cool. I hesitated I to bring. No, <laughs> I hesitated to bring it up, but you know. Yeah, no, I love no. Bring it up. It's awesome. No, I didn't know. Dang, really? I didn't know yeah. that. That is really cool. Oh, I didn't have it's a clue. Crazy. Oh, man. yeah. Me and Jens have a little fight history too. I don't know. We have more that. history. Yeah. I know. We, yeah, <laughs> it's one of those things. Like you know, it, it's I get it. But hey, at the end of the day, look at the incredible career you've had. So it doesn't. You know what I mean? I had to have. I had I had to have one. I had to have something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Come, you can't win everything, but yeah, you know? no, no. Hey, I <laughs> I always tell people, yeah, I lost my first fight, my first MMA fight, and then I won eleven in a row, and then I fought Jens. And so then I that, that's, that's, that's why I took a little break of winning. So <laughs> you deserve that break. one. <laughs> and then I decided to go on a losing streak at the end of my career. I don't know what it was. It just I'm not a hundred percent. You know what I mean? What it, it just one of those things. I just decided. I'm going to go on a losing streak. I got happy, didn't know what to do with myself. And that was the one thing that really got me was, I was like, that should have motivated me to fight more. But I was just so happy, my son and my family. And I just, the, the little evil bastard in me just died, right? And that's, so that was my original name was little evil bastard, short and a little evil, but it just kind of died in me. And I just, but then I'm trying to figure out with myself, like, what do I do? I Like, where did it go? And I spent some time, you know, trying to figure out where, where did I go? And so, you know, you got to go through the, it's kind of like if we played baseball, you can go hit list for 15 times at bat. Nobody cares. Cause there's so many, but back in the day, there was so few fights. Like, man, you go on this kind of streak. It's like three years adds up and you're losing five times, you know? Hey, but I think that that's what the sport's all about. And I think a lot of people miss that is about, this is therapy for us. You know what I'm saying? And, and you learned what you needed to learn from the sport. Right. And I think at that point, when you stop learning those lessons, oh. it's like time to mm -hmm. move on. I got a lot of fighters that they, they've they done very well in the sport. They didn't reach to UFC or anything, but they did well. They, they you know, won some titles on lower levels and then they go have a job or whatever. And then they want to come back. And I'm like, for what? Like, what, what are you trying to gain here? You're not going to make the UFC at this point. Like you've learned those lessons. You figured out what you needed to figure out. You tested yourself uh why why you still want to do it so i think a lot of fighters need to kind of look in deep and say why why am i fighting and, and it's I such a tough sport kinda... to what such a tough sport to to walk away from especially because i know even when you're taking some of those losses jen you're still super competitive right and you yes. know like i'm right there i'm not getting my ass kicked necessarily but it's just it's tough to walk away from from that therapy like you said cub yeah Wait. and I, i've always thought not not necessarily losing it's are my performances, uh, performances diminishing? That's, that's what I'm looking for. It's like a loss is a loss. You fighting a top guy, but am I not performing? Like yeah. if I just drop off, then that's a clear sign of I need to make a major change or I need to walk away. And that was the crazy thing. What you just said, I mean, it makes absolute sense. Cause that was man. You literally hit the nail dead on the head. I achieved what I needed to achieve and what I set out to do. You know what I mean? And it was, and like I said, it was I did the documentary just the way that I grew up and I, I and that's it. It was you. I used it for what it was supposed to be, which was to get to the, whatever it is I want. You know what I mean? But their practice was so cool. And like you said, I was still every day. I felt good in practice, but it was just, I would have to go out there and something was missing that there was something, you know what I mean? a hesitation or whatever it was yeah. and it, it was just 
And that's, you're trying to figure it out like anything else that, you know, he's like, why is that? Where did it go? And why is that missing? But yeah, I mean, it makes sense. It, it's just, it's tough to do. And there's a lot of fighters. And that's one thing now I'm seeing. Uh, you're starting to watch a lot of fighters that are kind of getting to that situation, right? How long is too long? Are they, you know, are they fighting too long? You know what I mean? What are they yeah. going to do afterwards? And that's, it, it, it's tough. Be, I'm, I'm on this side and finding that passion. I think that's one of the biggest things you two could tell me, but finding your passion, something, you know, that, so you can replace what the UFC or what MMA or whatever we did before did for you. And once you find that, I'm okay, like, I'm in such a good place now. I mean, yeah. I, I'm in love with this stream. I love doing this. I'm watching fights again. You know what I mean? Well, because you're still yeah. involved. And that's, you know, sometimes that's all we want. We want to be involved. Yeah. And so, yeah. you know, it doesn't mean you got to get punched in the face anymore. I, <laughs> I think get, being involved and not getting punched, that's a nice thing too. <laughs> did you have, did you have a period of time after you retired where you kind of like, you know, had, had a, had a low point, like, what am I supposed to do now? What, where, where do I put my energy and crushed. my passion? I was yeah. crushed. I was crushed. And I, and I was like, because I, and I, I gained a lot of weight. I, I walked away from the gym because, you know, people constantly trying to get you back into fights, trying to get you to fight. And you could easily talk yourself into fighting. And I walked away. And like I said, it was 8K Snoo, you know, um, the, my mod. And he said, hey, you need to start streaming. And I started streaming. And that was one way I could start interacting. Because, again, people, fans, That's people awesome. giving you their time, which is the greatest thing in the world, right? And I, I started doing this. And then one person said, hey, would you watch my fight? It's like, yeah, sure. And so I, I got their fight. I started breaking it down. And then the UFC's like, hey, we're going to start this Twitch. Do you think you could do this for a couple of hours? I'm like, what, talk? I get like, yeah, I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so thus I became the pause king and I get to talk and talk, you know, break down fights. And then this was created. And it was like, because I was always a gamer. I'm sure everybody's heard the, the stories of my gaming, you know, back in the day and, and my grind, the Grand Marshal and all that and missing Matt Hughes fighting Hoist Gracie. But this was the perfect way to kind of get everything combined and Twitch became a lifesaver to me, but it became my passion because of that. Look at where we're at now. I'm doing this watch alongs. I'm hanging out with all of you. I'm back in the sport and it's not painful, Cub. Like you said, I, I found a place where I can go back to it and I can watch it and I'm going ahead and I'm back in shape. Um, you know what nice. I mean? I know that I'm not fighting, but now I'm just being healthy for living, right? And just yeah. enjoying myself. And I found that that transition and now I'm all back into it hundred percent, but there for a little while, Laura, I wanted nothing to do with the sport. I wouldn't watch MMA. Yeah. I wouldn't do anything. I, I just got fat. I got away. I was just, I was just feeling pity. I was feeling bad for myself. Well, um, we're, it's a, it's a hard we're transition. glad you're back. Yeah. We're glad <laughs> yeah. You're back in it as a, as a fan, you know, cause that's how we started, right? We yep. all started as fans and you don't want to walk away. I've seen a lot of fighters that kind of hang on too long and they become bitter yeah, and then and then they just have this bitter taste in their mouth with the sport, and it's like, man, we love this sport, and then we let it change the way it, it made us feel, and and to get back to to just being a fan and being in love with it, I think is awesome. Yeah, it was actually uh, the other week when Cowboy retired, when he walked up to me to do our interview, I said, you know, before we were on, even on camera, I was like, man, thank you so much for like just all of the years of entertainment and you pouring yourself out there, and and he's like, he's like, you know, it should have been, it should have been a while ago, and it's such a man. It's such a tricky thing to know. And I think you only kind of know after it happens. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know. Not many people go out like Habib Habib did. Yeah. But I'm happy well, to see yeah. cowboy cowboy looks so like, I genuinely feel like he's at peace with, with moving on and he's got so many other things going on and had such an incredible career. And I think when you can, when you can look back and point to like a real legacy, like you say, cowboy, you know, exactly what, you know what that means right like what he yeah. what he brought to the table as a fighter same with thing with you jens and cub you're still doing the damn thing so i'm not even <laughs> to talk about you <laughs> yeah being done. well it was well, crazy to see him smiling after the fight that he yeah. just lost it was like i could understand because i i feel like i'm close to being there and so i kind of understand what he's feeling and i'm like man that pressure is off his shoulders like we talked yep. about uh yeah so i mean yeah I, it was cool to see him smiling and being okay with like, okay, he's ready for this. And, and you could see it by the smile on his face after a loss. Cause it's pretty hard to smile after a loss that yeah. we all know what that feels like. Um, it was definitely a relief where he was just like, yeah, you know, and that's it. Cause you have other things that you know that you're about to do. And I think that's a hard one. And you always hear that though. It's like, 
prepare, right? Prepare for the days when you're no longer fighting, but you just get caught up in the whirlwind of fighting. And I used to tell people, I'm not 40. What? You know, I'm 24 years old. And it's like, you want me to think about being 40? No, I can't do that. And it's like, prepare. It's like, I'm just trying to prepare for the next fight. I'm just trying to focus on this. But then all of a sudden you get stuck. And I think the biggest thing is find those things that you love. Again, it comes back to the passion. I know I keep saying that, but because like, I mean, I love this. I love being able to have an opinion. I love being able to break fights down and I can do it all day long and people can watch me, but I found what I, I found that passion. So it's easy to transition from fighting into whatever it is. You know what I mean? You love doing it. There's some painful moments and I always have that. We always talk about, it's like, you know, like if you could go back, would you change this fight or this fight? And I tell everybody all the time now is, you know, I'm so happy where I'm at right now. If any one thing would have changed in my life, I wouldn't be here right now, sitting here doing this watch along with you two. You know what I'm saying? This is an incredible card with all these people watching and stuff like that. If any one thing would have changed, then who knows where I would be, right? So I'm very happy with where I'm at in the moment, which means I have no regrets. I've got nothing holding me back. And I hope that for everybody that when they have to give up the sport like that or anything they do in life, as long as you can just learn to love yourself where you're at right now, then you don't really have any regrets. You've had lessons and moments and bumps and you know what I mean? That's awesome. <laughs> it's amazing. It's a good, that's an amazing place to be. I mean, I think yep. that's what, yeah. When you can find that, that peace and that satisfaction in what you've done, that's, that's winning right there. Honestly, yeah, I got to point out something on this, on the stream already though. I'm loving the ABC yellow jackets. I was just going to say, wear. Oh, I was going to ask so you, cool. Rich, like you probably could have had one. Had you been there? Like <laughs> I know. Did, did they have one waiting for you ready to go? No, I, of course not. But that's, okay. I that's wish okay. they would send me. I want one sent. I'm like, I want, well, I did they get to keep me. them? Do you think no. they get to keep them or I, they got to give them I back? Think so. No, I think they actually get to keep them. They had like them, they had them presented and I'm sure, you know, DC's jacket's not going to fit everybody. Megan's jacket's yeah. not going to get fit everybody. So yeah, exactly. yeah, I think they get to keep them. Pretty uh, cool. I love it. I love. I would <laughs> deliberately sweat in it and stank it. Like you don't want this back. You don't want this back. I promise. You don't. Know? But as we're getting ready for the fight time now, um, the one thing is. Yeah, no, I'm just watching these two work. I was looking at chat. I don't know now. I don't know if y'all can see chat or no. You're just watching the fights and hanging with me. So chat and all that. Don't worry about it. Okay. That was just my question. I'm just curious. <laughs> All right. Just, uh, <laughs> the girls fight is the first fight of the night. Yeah. Lauren Murphy and Misha Tate are coming up now. Then again, like I said, Burgos and Charles Jordan, Matt Snell, Man, that's, Sumu, that's, Darji. That's a banger. Yeah. Come on. Which fight? Like when everybody asks, I would yeah. ask you which fight you're looking forward to. And I won't be, I won't be ashamed if you say the entire card, but is there a specific fight? Laura, we'll let you go first. Is there a specific fight you're looking forward to? We well, just said it that Burgos Jordan fight is going to be an absolute banger. I mean, those two guys, incredible striking skill set for both of them. Shane Burgos is never in a boring fight. Charles Jordan has a really dynamic skill set when it comes to striking. So they've got a little bit different style on the feet, but they both absolutely bring it. I can't, I can't think of a fight where Burgos hasn't been in like at least long stanzas that are an absolute war. And I know Charles Jordan. You know, you think of those guys with kind of that pretty style as like point fighters, but he's much more than that. He's not, he's, he, he's got some dog in him. So I think this will be a good one for sure. That one will be. Cub. Yeah, I agree. That's the fight I'm looking forward to. Obviously, Charles Jordan's called me out a bunch of times. Uh, <laughs> oh, has he? I, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. And then uh, Burgos, me and him fought. I, I, I love both their styles. Uh, very, you know, very different styles, but very aggressive. And I think both of them have uh, on the higher end of strikes landed per minute. I, I they know do. Burgos is like at 45. I think he's one of the top. And I think Jordan's got to be right there too. So they're very active uh, and, and they're very confident right now because both of them have been really stepping up competition, uh, you know, been on some, some, I think Jordan's got the win streak. I, Burgos has already been fighting some tougher guys. So I think both of them think they're going to build their name off of each other so i'm excited about it i love it and that's that one after breaking down the fights because on fridays we're always watching fights of fighters fighting in saturday's fights that's my that's my but matt snell and sumu darji <laughs> sumu darji mm. can bad 
I was like, oh, so that's a fight I was excited for. Then, of course, Amanda Lemos. I mean, obviously, see, Michelle Watterson, we know what she can do, but Amanda Lemos, is, she's just, I mean, she's just, oh, she's strong. She's a power striker. So, yeah, this whole card is incredible. And right off the bat, we've got the former UFC and Strike Force Bantamweight champion, UFC flyweight debut in Misha uh-huh. Tatis. She's getting ready to walk to the cage. And then, like I said, this is going to be a fun fight. I don't know, like, I don't really have one to pick. I just think to me, when we were watching the fights to kind of break them down, they like we were talking about earlier, Lord, they, they're the same. They're the same style. And it'll be really cool to see who can kind of dictate the pace. Yeah. Misha's going to be looking for those takedowns probably a little bit more. And Lauren is much more active in terms of like clinch work. She likes to get, you know, she likes to get girls close and bang them up, dirty box them a little bit. Misha will kind of stay on the outside. She's really worked a lot on her striking um, the last couple of years now that she's moved back to the United States. And the last few fights we've seen her since her return to the UFC, definitely some major improvements in her hands. Um, but I think this is a fight in particular, the style that Lauren has coming forward that's tailor made for Misha's skill set. Um, on the flip side of that, I, you know, Lauren wants girls to come at her as well. And she's got great takedown defense. So this is going to be, it's going to be interesting to see how they how they match up. But both of these girls, they don't go away easy, man. They're, they are <laughs> as tough as a leather boot, both of them. I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, they've been in the game for a minute, both of them. So yeah. it, it's, it's good to see, you know, some veteran matchups, you know, guys that have been around, guys or girls that have been around for a long time, uh, you know, you have to fight a lot of up and comers, uh, you know, along the way. So it's nice to see them getting paired up. You know, I was wondering it, how, oh, go ahead. Oh, oh no, I was gonna say, I was wondering how Misha was going to look at flyweight. Cause she's, I mean, the first part of her career was, was featherweight, you know, outside of the UFC, she was, she was fighting 145 very comfortably. So down two weight classes from where she was there. And I thought she looked really good on the scales, to be honest with you, super lean, but made it no problem. You know, and that big thing is, I know what it say is making the 25 and then the next day when you see her, like, she doesn't look sucked up, doesn't look yeah. sunk in. You know, sometimes they don't hydrate well enough or they look, they still look, you know, the cheeks Or they still eat up like high. really crappy food <laughs> and it, it, it bloats yeah. them, you know? It bloats them. They look like, oh, I'm going to go up. eat a, I remember after <laughs> weigh-ins in WC, some of the guys were eating like, um, like a cream pasta from Olive Garden. And I'm like, oh. That- Oh yeah, that's not. <laughs> I spent I a lot of time in the restroom after oh. I did that. It was you gotta just no eat, one told, like no you... one told me not to do that. Yeah, you, well, you gotta eat all these you're things. You're stressing, right? you're stressing your body out, so you gotta treat yeah. it very. You know, it's like if if you went on like a juice cleanse for a week, you have to reintroduce things pretty, you know, easily. You can't. People are like, oh, what are you gonna eat a steak and feel better? It's like, no, that's mm. gonna mess you up. Like you gotta, <laughs> you gotta treat your body right. But Chicken the Alfredo is, is a no-no. Your eyes no. at the time when you're so hungry, you're thinking uh-huh. about I can do this, this, and this, and this. And what do you mean? Just drink. I don't want just water. No, man. I can have I get to drink whatever I want. And I can I'm gonna eat all this food. And then by the time it gets started, it's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have this orange, you know. I'm, I'm gonna eat a, an apple slice and I'm already yeah. full. <laughs> well, a lot of people they they get, you know, they make the weight and they're like, Oh, you know, thanks to me, I'm gonna go eat. You know, crappy the night. It's like, yeah, you still got to fight tomorrow. You, you did yeah. a part of the work. You know, you got the real job is tomorrow. So focus. So that's that's the hard part is that that like, oh, I, I deserve a reward for making weight. <laughs> I do like that. That is it is because I always used weigh-ins was kind of my thing, like to kill time for the for the week leading up to the fight is just kind of focus on making weight and the media and the stuff you have to do. But then once you make it, it's like all right, now it's time. Now yeah. it's time to fight. Now it's like all the fun and games are over. Yeah. I'm going to see you all later. I'm going to go up and, you know, I'm going to go just think about this fight. I'll see you all tomorrow when it's over. I mean, you I've know? forgotten. I've, I've been out to dinner with friends and family the night before, like, ah, oh, comfortable. Go, oh, man, I still got to fight tomorrow. <laughs> Damn it. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, sure. and then that it. stress <laughs> is back, you know. Yeah, the moment, yeah, it, wait, all of a sudden you wake up in the morning like, oh, wait, oh, Dang, I still have to fight. I was yeah. all happy. I made weight. I was loving life. We had a good time hanging out afterwards. And oh, yeah, dang, the scary part still has to come. But I had it so blocked off for so I, long. It was good. I try to tell people it's like just imagine <laughs> like you have like a scheduled car accident. That's that's kind of what it's like, you know, <laughs> I like, love oh, that. that's a great analogy. PM, I'm about to get that's a great, oh, yeah. I had a scheduled car accident. How would you feel? You know, I, that's a great yeah. analogy. 
Oh, I love that. All right. Well, there we go. First round. By the way, did you see the walk off earlier? If you were watching the fights at all, and I was going to talk to you about that fight, but we can talk about it later because I just seen the ref and he reminded me really kick. And it was um, Jacoby. He hit that mm. shot and kind of did a walk off and like, all right, well, fight's over. He kind of just called it himself, but I don't know. All right, well, here he's we go, a golfer, one. so he's probably thinking uh, hole in one. <laughs> I like it. I like it right out to the center, right off the bat. And it's again, I'm always talking about you two with the first 30 seconds, but you know, I like that. You see Misha kind of just moving around on the outside and Lauren's already trying to be the aggressor. Yeah. Lauren loves that clinch work. You know, and that's yeah. that one. Go ahead. Come. It really looks like a mirror match They're They're kind of mimicking each other's moves. They're Ooh. testing each other out. Misha goes in for a takedown. Doesn't quite get it. Oh, with those knees, those times right there. So I like how Lauren, really quick, Misha time the shots, gets the takedown. Lauren squares up, sprawls, and then starts throwing knees, but waited for Misha to get up and see. It's kind of exactly what I was thinking when we were watching these fights is Lauren's just right now the dominating striker and her sprawl and brawl, you know what I mean? The sprawl and brawl style seems to be the affection, be effective as opposed to Misha still trying to figure out how she's going to get in and, and really, I seems like she can't figure out her game plan. It's a big moral victory too for Lauren to make her pay for that takedown. Like as soon as she knows, as soon as Misha gets it in her head that like, oh crap, I'm going to be eating knees every time I shoot in, or if I if I miss my shot and I got to you know get back up, that you know that could enough of that is going to create at least a thought in the back of your head. Like man, this this might cost me uh, to wrestle here. I love what Lauren's doing right here. She's giving these little fake uppercuts out of range, and people may you know wonder why. And I do that a lot when people want to take you down, right? In their mind, they're circling, they're looking for the time and they're thinking, okay, I'm mm -hmm. going to shoot at some point. And you keep showing them like a little knee or an uppercut. You just remind them like, when you do shoot, this is going to yep. be right there. And it makes them second guess themselves. So that's a good mental note, you know, just for advertise for that price of admission, right? Exactly. Advertise I love the price it. of admission. No, I love it. That, and that's it. Like I always kind of just sell it. And then, so then that's the one thing, if you kind of notice now, me, she's kind of throwing that little bit of a calf kick and so, but she's not like the setups, right? She's going to have to figure out the setup. She wants to take down because as patient as Lauren is, and you can tell right cup, she's giving away that uppercut to let you know, I yeah. know what you're going to try and do. Right. Yeah. And, and saying like, if you, if you make a mistake, it's going to hurt, you know, so it's making her think twice. And I think Lauren looks a lot more comfortable already. Oh, oh here we go. As she she's gonna get the down on a shot. She's gonna try to get body the body lock. Yeah, body lock. But now the one there you go. I was gonna say Misha needs to let go of that head and give up. Now we've got the the Murphy has the back of Misha standing up, pushing up against the fence. See, against a fighter that's a little bit, you know, not mentally as tough. I think Misha's pretty dang tough. Uh Right now, a, a, a normal fighter or an, a, a fighter that's making their debut would already be breaking because. They're already losing in the striking war and they're already getting out grappled in a sense. So Misha, I know Misha's going to mentally pull through this, but a lot of fighters would break already just from going, oh man, I'm losing the striking and I'm losing the wrestling department. This is an uphill yeah, plan battle. Plan A, plan B, both are. Yeah. Yeah. Then, then you're already thinking, oh, I need to survive, not win. Wow. See, and again there, Lauren did such a good job of, of showing Misha that like, as soon as something you do doesn't work out, I'm going to make you pay for the attempt. She's so good at sneaking those knees and, uh, you know, as they, as they begin to stand up and, but Misha's got her Lauren here on the fence now, a little bit of a shoulder strike. And I like what she did because it was right as Misha was trying to throw her, Lauren was able to swim underneath and get mm -hmm. that underhook. And she used that to come out on the underhook side to kind of square up. And the other thing is, like I said, Misha's doing a great job of body locking, but she can't really throw anything else, you know? And that's, she's got to just hold on to the body because Lauren's doing all the movement. Lauren's the one trying to pummel, pummel, pummel inside, getting this body lock. She sees those be the stronger one. And that's, that's got to be kind of frustrating, right? When you get them pushed up against the fence, you can't do anything but hold on to them so you can't really let any kind of offense go yeah lauren's yeah. got double double unders here sorry Cub, go ahead no it's okay i was gonna say it's it's mentally frustrating too if you're dropping down in weight you're automatically thinking i'm gonna be stronger and if that person That's is stronger point. then then it's like it's another mental like oh man I'm supposed to be stronger. <laughs> What's going on? It's a mental frustration that you got to work through. So these are all little things that people don't think about that are going on in your head in the fight. Like, man, I'm supposed to be the stronger one. 
that is like, wow, dude, Chat, man, you just crushed it on the head because that's exactly it. Like, I was this big 45-er. Then I was this big 35-er. Now I'm, I finally take my size and I get down to 25. And wait, I'm getting out muscled again. How is this possible? And that's that lesson, right? Man, I love that. That See, look, you got me fired up, chat. I love this. And I was Because it is, though. But it's that's the biggest mental game, right? It's, I've lost all this weight. Now I'm getting out muscled. I'm getting out maneuvered. I'm getting out struck. And yep. my game plan was to be kind of the bully and get the takedown. And that's not working either. That's the first round ends. Yeah, I fought a couple guys that dropped. Uh, Ross Pearson and Charles Oliveira both dropped from 55 to 45. And they were telling me, all right, Cub, we want you to fight them because uh, people think they're going to fight for a title, basically a gatekeeper. Uh, and so I'm like, yeah, OK, no problem. And <laughs> I I knew going into the fight both of those times, I was like, I need to hit them as hard as I can right off the bat. So they understand, oh, wow, this guy hits hard. Uh, mm. He's not supposed to hit this hard, you know. And so I wanted to. And with Charles Oliveira, purposely, I hit his arm because I didn't want any chance of me missing. I just wanted to hit him. So he knew like, Oh, wow. 45 hit feel hard that too. Thud. Yeah. yeah. So that way I could get in his head from the, from the beginning. I love it. I always, it's funny because I always, when we're talking and breaking down fights, we're always talking, go out there and hit him as hard as you can and make sure that it hits him, hit him in the arm. So then yeah. the next time you kind of throw that and they flinch, you're like, okay, now I've got him. And that's how you start getting the fame game to work. Right. Yeah. You get oh. their defense to move. You, you, you throw a really big punch. They do this. Well, now the body's open. So it's yep. like, then you start playing upstairs, downstairs and pick mm -hmm. the pocket. And I like, <laughs> yeah, we, we, I feel you. <laughs> I, I'm with you, I, dude. I'm in, I'm in there right there. I like that. No disrespect to the dude, but you know what I mean. Um, now you can tell. I don't know. Maybe she listed the corner, and I don't know. Does Misha feel a little more urgency? But she's coming forward and landing that jab. Yeah, I think they told her wake up. They must have because she's she's definitely coming at it more than she was in the first. May have been nerves too. I mean, we have I'd love to see more level changes from Misha. Like when she's at distance, she, she does a good job of, you know, when she gets in, she'll find her moments, but you know, it's kind of with the way Volkanovsky is constantly level changing as he's throwing his big shots. You know, and that right hand of Murphy firing right down the pipe, Misha's starting to wear the Misha's damage. Misha's bloody. Yep. Yeah. The right hand. And that's the one thing, again, when you're hopping, the, I think so far the biggest issue with Misha is she's closing the distance, but for what reason? There's, mm -hmm. there, like you said, about feints or, or level change. There hasn't really, she hasn't really sold Lauren on anything. And Lauren, every time you're coming in, she's, she, like I said, she was selling cracking. the uppercut. Yeah, cracking with that right hand. And it's, did we get kind of stuck into the situation? Now she's just kind of following along and just stepping aside. And Lauren, once again, changes up the tempo and gets the takedown. See, and that was the problem, like you said, her her kind of coming in and out. Uh, I think the problem is sometimes in MMA, people step in to land a strike, right? And you don't know if she just dropped right under and got the takedown, uh, Lauren. Uh, and sometimes what you need to do is throw a jab on the outside to let the person know, hey, I'm coming in. And they are going to show you. They're either going to go on defense or they're going to level change. And to me, I, that's why I tell my students all the time is throw something before you want to throw something because <laughs> you're, you're basically saying, Hey, Hey, stupid. I'm, I'm, I'm coming in, you're on defense. And that way, if they go on defense, you see it coming. If they try to counter, they're going to show you. So it, it's kind of like a safer way rather than me coming in, trying to hit you, you might throw at the same time. We both get hit or I got taken down. So basically letting them know, Hey, I'm coming in right now. Love it. Sell the sell the sell. I love it. I love it. The faint game. And that's the one thing. So now Misha, as she gets back up to her feet, she seems almost frustrated, but the mm -hmm. problem is she's closing this distance, but to what Laura, I mean, what is she doing? You know what I mean? Cause she's just getting in the range she's for, eating those for jabs. Laura Murphy just to keep jabbing her. Right. Yeah. She's eating those jabs. I mean, she, she, she's got to start incorporating a little bit more of an angle change as she enters. Cause she's being very linear right now. She's got a, I don't know if she's got much of an ability to switch uh South Orthodox, but if she could get off the tracks, and even go southpaw for a second to just to create a new angle for her shot that she, she'd be money ahead to do something like that. Move her head well, a little and, bit as well. And that's kind of what we run for when we break that straight forward, straight back. And then again, she ate a big elbow as she was breaking off the clinch right there. Lauren is doing, Murphy's doing all the right things. You know what I mean? When it comes to a fight like this, she's kind of dictating with a jab. 
when Misha steps in, it's funny because I could hear DC say the same thing about Misha's got to try to figure out how to move her head off that line. Yeah. But it's that coming straight forward, and Lauren has the answers. And then I think again, being able to sprawl a couple times when when Misha was in deep. That's got to be frustrating. Now, having the, she can tell she's messing with the nose a little bit. That's got to be irritating with the blood, the taste. It's just not something you want to do. As Lauren goes in on a single leg, Misha tries to sprawl and fend it off. She's up on one leg fighting, GG. That's got to give her a little bit of confidence to try to keep that takedown because Lauren was in pretty deep on that. Lauren, uh, Lauren's a doing a slightly better job too of like really extending her jab. Like when she locks her jab out, she's at full extension. And if you watch Misha, both with her jab hand and her, and her power side, she's, she's just a, a, a touch short of like full extension. And so she's having to be in, in this range where she doesn't really want to be. And she's eating those jabs of Murphy. I'm looking at the stats right now. I wanted to be able to follow them along because that helps out, you know, but it says they're, they're right on cue for the same amount of strikes landed. I don't really see that possible. Uh, so we, went like to, this is interesting. we went to this, we went to this class, like the broadcasters for the UFC did. And, and mm -hmm. I did not know this, but the stat people judge jabs and power shots. If, if, if a shot is from the outside, it's considered significant, even if it's a jab, okay. which I never knew that before. Okay. Really? So it changes and, and the stats that you see right now are unofficial and they will yeah. change as the fight goes on. So as they yeah, should. It, yeah, as they should. <laughs> exactly. I mean, and they, they do their best to have like checks and balances in terms of what they're yeah. counting and what they're not, but it really opened my eyes to like, Oh, that's why. Cause to me, not all jabs are created equal, obviously, oh, no, no. but to yeah. them, they kind of are. <laughs> on the outside they're just hitting the button the arm move yeah. boom, like you'll see a lot of air punches and pity pad stuff and that's the total strikes it's I, like how did you get so many go ahead come i've always felt that they should go back after fights and watch them they in do. slow motion and and really make sure that they punches do. are landing okay yeah because yeah they do i get Connor frustrated with that because sometimes the stats i'm like that's not uh they, you see them yeah. score something like oh but they blocked it and the they countered and you're not seeing it because of the the camera angle yeah. I'll they also have a certain way of like counting knockdowns that I didn't really understand before. Like it has to meet certain criteria to truly be considered a knockdown. Um, there's all sorts of stuff. That I was like, Oh really? Oh, that's uh, why it's Misha's got and a and their on that left eye. Too. Oh yeah. The oh my gosh. Work and it's starting. The eye is starting to close with, she's got a cut underneath it. And then the knot on that left eye. That is, that's a friend. She's already starting to do you see the eyelash a little bit. Yeah. She's kind of flickering around like it's bothering her. Now what I'm not a, a, a doctor by any stretch of the imagination, but isn't it usually when you get that huge swelling underneath that you've got a broken orbital? You don't blow your nose. Please don't yeah. blow your nose and find out just yet. You know? Yeah, not necessarily, but uh, cause it'll puff out a, like kind of above and below it'll almost yeah. uh -huh. close. But yeah, you know, like you said, if you blow your nose, that's just definitely don't blow if you can avoid it. Sure. <laughs> that, that's a broken orbital. 100%. That's super swollen. But here we go into round three. And again, it's now Misha, I, the whole time, as always, she's been, she's the aggressor. She's coming forward. You know what I'm saying? And Lawrence is kind of patient, you know, to sit back and just kind of pick her shots. And, you know, I don't know. Like she, it's almost like Misha has fallen into the rhythm. She just, is, she doesn't know how to get out of it. Right. And yeah. she just kind of sit out there lost. Good calf kick by Misha right there. But yeah, that's, that's and this this game's evolving so much. So uh, that's one thing. When you do take a break, it's it's good to get your passion back. But if you take too long of a break in the sport, man, it just passes by because it, it's ever evolving. And if you're not evolving with it, then then it's going to be too hard to play catch up. You know, and the hesitation of the punches, and that's kind of like that'd be the ultimate thing. Even though oh, right wow. there, she went in on that, she went to shoot a double leg, and it was a little bit. But Lauren was able to sprawl her way out of it. Now she's getting heavy on that front quarter, Nelson, and she's gonna push on that head with that overhook and try to drive down and fire an elbow. But that's just it. It's like the hesitation, Cubs. She's having hesitation because maybe she's just off rhythm. You know what I mean? And stuff like that. Yeah. What have you been doing that time off? But everything seems to be just a step off, and it's perfect for Murphy because she needs she's utilizing it and capitalizing throwing on the counter in the takedowns countering with the punches well to your point cub i mean they, the, the game itself just evolves so so quickly and like i think for women it's a different sport entirely and it's the evolution doesn't quite look like the men's side of things because it started later than the men's side of things but that's why you're seeing girls now 
we're starting to be able to do things like trap set and switch stances fluidly. Like that's kind of a, that's, that's the next evolution for the, for the female side of strikers. Whereas you've seen guys doing that for a few years now, the women are starting to catch up to it. And that's probably not something that Misha ever had to do for the majority of her career. You know, you could just be tough, throw big shots, get in on the hips and then go to work. Right. But now we've got these really sophisticated approaches to entering the pocket and trap setting. And, and like you were talking about, you know, throw a strike, even though you don't mean to even hit the strike, throw a strike because you want to hit the next strike. Uh, yeah. That's, yeah, I that's mean, it's the, the same evolution. reason why you, you would throw a jab before you throw a leg kick. You're trying yeah. to say, hey, look up here and then land something. And, and that's what you got to do. If you're not setting traps, then then, you know, you're you're about to get put in a trap. So, <laughs> exactly. yeah, I mean, even as as the fight's going on, kind of unfolding and Misha's getting a little desperate, you're kind of seeing how basic her game is in, at this particular point. No, no disrespect to her because I think she's a great fighter. But, yeah, she's she's definitely cruising to a decision loss at this point. You know, and that's the biggest thing is the way she, and I think a lot of it had to go with the fact that she probably spent more time with the idea. I'm just going to get to 25. I'm going to be the bigger, stronger fighter. And now she just kind of run into a situation where she has literally run into this bigger, stronger 25er in Murphy. And she's had a great game plan, just kind of stepping back, letting you be a little overzealous, let you be eager and then fire that straight right. But she's doing a good job of stopping those takedowns. And I think that's the biggest thing is every time Misha's changing the level, she's getting in, but there's just not enough behind it because the step is too big. Like you've already made such a big step to get in. Now they're going to start te teeing off and it looks like Lauren's going to oblige and go back toe to toe with her a little bit. And then see, she gets over zealous steps in and Lauren's when it takes her down or trying to take her down. She's that got was the body great lock. timing. Now Lauren she's going to try to so step strong. in front with the overhook. And now they're going to keep battling, battling. And Misha's going to try to plumb the head. Back in that underhook, overhook, holding that plumb. And Lauren's right in there, plumbing the head back. And they're just kind of teeing up and going up against the fence. And I think, yeah, it's good job. Lauren's able to counter it. And now has Misha yeah. pushed up. Oh, it's kind of overpowered her in every position right there. And she's getting those little sneaky elbows in off the break too. Nothing huge, but enough to continue to irritate that eye and just let her know like, hey, you're going to have to pay every single time you get close to me. And it's almost like, again, the way that Lauren's moving back just a little bit, she's waiting and it almost it frustrates Older. Misha. I mean, and then she'll take a too big of a step and Lauren will mm -hmm. time it and shoot the takedown. Or again, she's back up enough so she's not right there during the explosion part of Misha's level change to shoot the takedown. And then they start trying to go here. It just seems like Lauren just had the more patient game plan today. Yeah, she was pretty flawless, in my opinion. She made a couple of mistakes, but she she's on point. She's looked, you know, and honestly, she's looked really good in her last couple of fights. She's she's 39 years old as Lauren Murphy. She's actually a few years older than Misha Tate, but she's much newer to the game overall. I think Misha's been fighting since like 2005 or something like that. And and Lauren came to MMA because she uh, she was super overweight. I don't know if you know the story, Jens, but she was super overweight and she signed her son up for a jujitsu class and he was super nervous about doing it had some anxiety so she decided to do the class with him what? Um, but really oh, had no. no intention yeah she was she was an addict she was an alcoholic <laughs> she had all of these issues living up in alaska and then just fell in love with what jujitsu did for her for her mind and you know here she is not oh, honestly awesome. not that long oh, later yeah that is crazy. so cool and now all of a sudden here she is and she's beating the former world champ you yeah. know what I mean? And you look at that left eye. I would be curious, blow on it one time. I got to know. Just, just blow, give you a little, don't, you know. Don't do it. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> but, no, but yeah, Lauren did. I mean, if you look at over there, and again, total strikes, though, that 111. But even significantly, it just seems Lauren just was the stronger fighter. And it goes back to, I, it really goes back to what Cub said when I think Misha really thought that, I've, I've been waiting to make this debut at 25. I've been waiting to, I'm going to be this powerhouse at 25. And she just found herself in a situation where, wow, this girl's a lot stronger. She's strong as strong. She, she's countering the takedowns and she's out striking and she has patience. And it just kind of, you know I mean? Like I said, when we were breaking these fights down, it was going to be a lot of like, it's almost like they're, 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 they're the same. Their styles are the same. And it'll be just a matter of mentally who's got the, the upper hand.
Yeah, she definitely didn't plan to go 0 for 7 and takedowns. I'm sure that never <laughs> once crossed her mind yeah. or her team's mind. And I think that was she didn't get to fight her fight. And, and that was because of Lauren. Well, and that's it. When you land a couple of takedowns, it sets up the hands. Yeah. So then you can that level change would mean more if you Oof. shot in a couple of times, right? But that eye. eye, that left eye. 30 27s and a 29-28. Big win for her. Big win. almost a clean sweep. Yeah. One judge gave her one round. We've got that one 3027 judge. It's a split decision, and that one judge is gonna go 3027. You two. There's gonna be that we got or they're giving out 10 eights like Skittles. We gotta be careful about that too. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's, we've been talking a lot about the judging. It's been it's been impressive. Okay, so can I ask? Live scoring, fans, gay or nay? I like it. I'm with it. See, I don't I don't love it, but <laughs> I don't I I get so much crap for this at the gym because I at this point in my life, I'm looking at it from a broadcasting perspective and from a fan perspective. If I was an athlete, I would want it. If I was a coach, I would want it. But I'm saying purely for entertainment reasons. I'm not a huge fan of it. I've called a few fights for Invicta and LFA in Kansas where they do open scoring. And I just, it just wasn't my favorite. I don't even have like, you know, lock tight reasons why I, yeah. it was purely for what I felt like changed the entertainment value of the last round and of the reading of the decision. But that's it. If I was fighting, okay. I'd want it to. Okay. But see, now you had to add that. And that actually is pretty cool. Cause the whole, what? No, you know, like that, yeah. that would all be taken away. I didn't really think about it like that, but I'm more about the accountability. I want accountability for these, oh, man, these judges. <laughs> <laughs> so, so top. literally this week, Jens, I got licensed as a judge. I completed the coursework. I did the whole what? like eight hour training thing. I've, it's actually the second or third training I've done, but like I took the test, passed it, yada, yada. Not because I actually want to judge, but because I really want to understand what they are taught and uh, how they're taught to interpret certain things and, and the weight of various things, because you can read, honestly, you can read that criteria and think that you understand how they are taught to see a fight. But until you do the course, it's a little different than you think it is. And huh. I'm not saying that there's not bad judges out there. There are hundred percent are, but it has really opened my eyes to like why Holm Vera was judged the way it was, for instance, why Michael Johnson versus Jamie Malarkey was judged the way it was. And the fact that's really hard for all of us, especially me, because I want everything to be black and white, is that yeah. there's always going to be some amount of subjectivity and nuance and art to judging. Because while you do have this criteria, it, it's also being interpreted by a human and there it's not black and white because there are literally infinite number of possibilities that happen in a fight. And they're all weighted differently, but it, it really, it was, it opened my eyes to a few things I had no clue about before. I will say uh, that like, go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm saying it makes no, no, sense. So, Cause he, you know, I'm gonna I, say, I was, yeah. And I was going to say what, like one example, for instance, I did not know that judges view guard as a 100% neutral position. So if you're in guard and just, I know this would never happen, but the guy on top does absolutely nothing. And the guy on bottom does absolutely nothing. The guy on top is not winning hundred percent. Like you do not get credit for simply being on top of someone. It's what you do with that position. So the second that guy on top lands a shot, now he's winning the shots from the top and the bottom are considered equal. However, gravity will tell you that you're going to be able to tend, you tend to going to be able to land the harder shots from the top. Right. But in theory, they're looked at the same, which, you know, growing up in this sport since 2007, you know, like, I can't tell you how many times I've been told, get on top, get on yeah. top, like you're winning now, you're, you're, or, or, you know, steal the round with a takedown. That's not really a thing. According Even to though the we're, we're left criteria. to believing it, because I think it yeah. boils down to, I've always tell people it's salesmanship. Everything yeah. you do out there is salesmanship because you got to try true. to, you got to just keep winning the opinion of these three people and they yes. never go back to, well, what happened at two minutes and 30 seconds of the round? It's kind of like the Hector Macho Camacho Macho time, the last 30 seconds, try to steal the round with some big 100%. flurry because they're like, Oh, did you see that? And they don't go back and remember what happened in, in minute one or minute two. 
you know, mm-hmm. and, but I do get that. And it's, and that's one thing with salesmanship. And that's what I'm always trying to tell fighters this day and age is you got it. The way you react to a punch, how you carry yourself, how yes. you move around is so big to stay inside your mind. Right. Cause that does matter because the second that you react to a, to a punch that in their mind says that that punch was a damaging shot. And that's what they're looking for all the time is damage and fight ending sequences. So on the ground, like, are you setting up submissions? Uh, are you landing big strikes? And if you react to a strike and it's like, I, I think guys with, and girls, girls always do it anyway, but the guys with the long hair have to be careful. Like Ooh. Tim Elliott used to do this all the time. <laughs> he would move, you know, he moves his head all the time. And it's like, you look like you're being hit constantly. And I know you're not because you're slipping these shots by half an inch, but your hair is flying all over the, the place. The water is everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Optics matter for sure. I think they need more judges. You know, like they talked about only having three. What about having three there and three at a neutral site, not at the arena that aren't being impacted by the crowd? Uh, Mm -hmm. And and then it'd be over time, you could compare their notes and be able to say like, well, that's weird. Consistently, the people not in the building are scoring it this way. And then let's talk about the 10-9 system was not meant for for MMA. We use that. And I think it's time to have our own scoring system uh, just because it, it's ridiculous. We, we, we borrowed some stuff from boxing, but we've passed that. You know, I, I think yeah. the sport deserves to have its own scoring system, its own. You know, we have our own rule set. And uh, yeah, it's time for some progress. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I completely yeah. agree with that. They tried to kind of uh, compensate for that by making the more liberal 10-8 round. Because I think all of us can agree that not all 10, nine rounds are created equal. Like there is such a range, Oh, at least before there was such a range of like what a 10, nine round really was. So that's why they were like, okay, we got to start doing more 10, eights. And, you know, I was taught to judge 10, seven rounds, which you don't see very often at all, but yeah. there's like a, there's like a specific criteria to, to when you see a 10, eight, when you see a 10, seven and it's interesting to see like what states have really run with that and what haven't. And that's to be honest well, with that, you, that part that's I the agree problem with. is like we have 50, we have 50 different commissions that are not, <laughs> they have no reason to want to play nicely together at all. Yeah. And they all have yeah. different rules in terms of like California has to go through the legislature to make any changes to these, to these rules or scoring. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a complicated it's system. I'll tell you that much. And Side some of them have really big egos and don't want to, you know, yeah. play nice. Yeah. We've I all been around it. Anything. Well, that's what I would say about live scoring. So you could just throw things at them. What you scored that? How? Because again, we are unlike everybody else where we get, we get half to show and half to win. So you can really cost these oh. fighters a lot. And then in the advancement and stuff, unless the UFC decides, you know, I would just use the UFC for example. Okay. That, that call was so bad. I'm going to pay you both, but that's, you know I mean? That's, but that's not how this works. So I'm, I'm down with changing it up. But it was just, for me, it was just the accountability. I want to yeah. see some kind of accountability where even after round one, you're like, you scored it. How many? You could just throw things at it or something. But I do like Cub. What I had said before, and I'm with you on that, is like me sitting here with three monitors and in my chair watching the fight. Have some of them, like take them out of the, because you know, we've been dealing with that now quite a bit with the quieter crowd, with the COVID crowd, mm-hmm. where you can hear the reactions of the announcers and the judges get to hear them instead of the crowd. You know what I mean? And things like that. And it was kind of how they would adjust. Take them, put them in a quiet room, give them some monitors and let them watch it this way, or at least have half of them, like you said, and just see how they score. I bet you it'll be a completely different score. And that was something else was, do they use monitors, Laura? Do they use monitors yeah. when they're there? So, do so some they're not do or re- some don't? They're not required to. What The, the problem with that is it is, it is that's, that's the responsibility of the promotion. So like the fights okay. we're watching right now, absolutely yes. Um, but not always. So like you can pretty much bet on it that if you're watching a UFC card, especially pay-per-view, they're going to have monitors and they used to be tiny. Uh, and so like all the stuff that you'd see on the internet of judges, like looking at their phones, they were looking at their monitors because sometimes like if you're, if you're a judge and there's a really intense sequence going on, you might have the back of the ref completely obstructing your view and you are not allowed. You can't guess at what's happening. You cannot score what you cannot see. So there are some instances where 
if you see one judge with a really weird score, it might be an, a, a problem where that judge literally could not see the most important shots of that particular round and they cannot score what they cannot see. I so, can't believe that. That's why they'd be on their phones. Cause you know how many times us <laughs> that don't get to see that you just saved so much. Okay. Or you might've just but, changed But everything. it could also be that it's just an idiot. <laughs> And, it and, could, and, and has no... but at least now I can go with the idea. It used yeah. to be called you're just an idiot, but now it's oh shoot, they're trying to get or the camera version. Be, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but but to what Jens was saying, there needs to be accountability. I think yes, one yes. we could be paying. I'm, I'm sure we could be paying the judges and refs more. Uh, but yes. like maybe bonuses uh, at the end of the year for for uh, no no red flags or, or, you know, yep. marks against their name. Uh, but some of these guys have been consistently bad judges and we need to yeah. have accountability. It's 100%. Say, tons of 100%. things that are going on in the world are about people aren't, there's no accountability. And I think that that is the first thing to make things. Okay. Like let's and have interesting, accountability. even if we didn't have open scoring, I mean, I think it'd be interesting at the end of the fight, to have the picture of each judge and show their scorecards for each round. Like, Oh, here, here is yeah, how this let fight see it, was. They're just scored. anonymously off to the side and yeah. they just, what the heck? And they don't get to see it. And then we move on to the next fight. And then, you yeah. know, and it's, and now it's something that yeah, I've always, the accountability side of it was the only thing that whether they do or don't, or like I said, come to, to having them sit back and watch the fights. But by the way, did you just see, they just announced Charles Oliveira and Islam Makachev. Oh, I was watching it, but not it. really paying attention. I know. I, 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 no, I was saving it. I was saving it because I believe chat. Did they just, was that just announced or are they just throwing that out there? I think the card. Okay. So they did announce it. Well, we'll talk Ooh. about that, but first we've got a video for you. We've got a Burgos Jordan video. We'll see. Well, are you sure you're going to have time? Cause he's on his way out right now. Jordan is making his way out. I don't know if that video will be there or not. Is he there, AK? Okay. okay, we're gonna see. Well, we talked right past it, but so we'll go back to that really quick. Which is the um, sorry, we we're gonna do it. We had a an open for uh Jordan chat. We had an open for Burgos and Jordan, but yeah, with that fight with um Makachev and Islam, we. I'm, I'm Islam Makachev and uh, yeah, it looks like Lieta. UFC yes. 280. Yeah, Ooh. that's sick. That's, that's supposed to be early Abu October. Dhabi? Abu Dhabi. No, that's later. That's 281, oh. and that's later. Oh, October. is that 281? Yeah. So I, from what I'm hearing, I think it's supposed to be Vegas, but I'm not sure. Wow. And I, and from mm. what I had been reading, because I'm trying to fight around that time, so that's why I know uh, they were trying <laughs> to figure out whether it's going to be the first, the eighth, or the following weekend. And I, but I think it's going to be the eighth. Interesting. October eighth. That's what I think. So if I get on that card, that'd be great. Oh, that would be it. awesome. Well, hopefully you get it. Hopefully you get it. So Jordan makes his way in. Now this fight right here, you two. Man, I like this kid, Charles <laughs> Jordan. Even though he's got a horde symbol on his left leg, chat. With, I'm gonna, I'll forgive him for that. But a what other, symbol? A horde symbol, World of Warcraft. He's on. He's oh. on the wrong side. There's okay, alliance sorry. and there's that horde. Went literally. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> right over my head. <laughs> there's, there's alliance and there's horde, and we interviewed Got him it. one time, and he was a big <laughs> horde streamer. I'm okay player. that I didn't know that. Yeah, no. Yeah. I'm okay with it. <laughs> Oh, but it's something I got me and Chad. We're always talking about. It. They're always griefing. So um, I love it. I love it. But uh, yeah. So, but just this fight alone. How I'm excited for this fight. Burgos making his way out. What's your take on this one, Cub? Well, I'll let you two just please let me know. I, I'm gonna say Burgos on this one. I think uh, you know I, I really like um, I, I like Jordan. Uh, I think his creativity, uh, uh, you know, I like to think that I've inspired him somewhat uh, myself and I, I love the fighter that he's become. Uh, I just think that Shane Burgos uh, is not going to be uh, overwhelmed or bullied in any sense. So I just see him being a little bit more structured, uh, heavy hitter in this one. 
Yeah, I'm with you, Cub. I although I last time I picked against Jordan, he made me look like an idiot to go out there and submit. What was it, Lando Venata? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if I you didn't were gonna tell, I would have bet all the money I had on Lando because I've known him for a long time, and that dude is a monster. And and I I'm gonna chalk that one up as as a little bit of a fluke, you know, uh, because I just know how good he is. So I I can't give him if he does it to Burgos. If he finished Burgos in a minute then I'm going to be like, man, Jordan is really way better than I thought. I think yeah. he's super <laughs> talented, but not on that level. I still think yep. that fight was a little bit of a fluke, but if he does it again, I'll be impressed. Yeah. Shane Burgos is just a dog, man. And he's, he's got a lot of, a lot of power in his hands. The only thing I I don't love is the acute is how much uh, damage he has taken. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I, don't right. mind. I thought you were going there. The little oh. slappy mullet. Hey, I'm trying got, to get a better hey, look here. Yeah, I was going to say. For a minute. I've, I've already, <laughs> I'm rolling the he's mullet the, with him. He's I got, got the it. lettuce. I like the lettuce. I got to do it. I'm rolling a mullet for until these braces come off, this mullet stays. So I didn't even I'm in, have I'm, braces. Oh, yeah. I'm oh, in transition. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm in transition phase, man. I, You're back in middle right. school. Uh, man, I had to do it. It was it was a promise. I'm not leaving this earth without having straight teeth once. It's just not going to happen. So I decided I'd stream. I've got these braces. So chat, I was like, I'm going to let the mullet grow and we'll just see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Cub is like, Jens, really? Uh, well, Cub has perfect I've, teeth, so. No, no, no. I'm, I'm right there with him. I'm. I kept telling myself when I'm done fighting, I'm going to get veneers. And then the last time I went, they're like, no, nah, you got to get braces. You got to straighten them out. I'm like, man, I don't oh, want to really? do all that. No, you yeah. look like you've got great teeth. I well, can't tell. Thank you. I, uh, I, was... I got sharp teeth because grappling in the beginning, I grappled without a mouthpiece for years. And that was oh. a mistake. You know, oh. uh, now I wear <laughs> it all the time. But early on, we only wore it when we sparred or fought. Oh, my Not gosh. When we grappled. But yeah, that was that was silly. <laughs> that sounds that awful. Awesome. I man, think it was the time you bite that I, your tongue. Well, that was what happened is I got caught in a guillotine by this older dude. He was like in his fifties. Oh. He was a ex military sniper. Uh, just tough old dude. He had me in a guillotine and he squeezed and My jaw was sideways. And when he squeezed it straightened out and I had a feeling way in the back and my teeth broke off oh. half of it. my back oh, tooth. I spit it out. Oh. And I was like, damn. And then I just kind of threw it and kept training. And then, yeah, that was just, that was when I knew like, oh man, I should be wearing a mouthpiece. Te- teeth injuries are, are a big note for it's me. I feel like yeah. That just you know, grosses me out. I can watch a lot of gross stuff, but teeth injuries. As, as we started out. this fight, can you believe the size of Burgos? That's what, Literally. hey, yeah. I can tell you at weigh-ins when I fought Burgos, <laughs> I was like, man, he's still pretty big. And then the next day I'm like, man. He's got this that guy's back. Upper body. He's got a he, wide back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I guess they said he has a couple of discs fused in his neck. That's why he doesn't oh, really move he's his head has that like much. A, yeah, huh. he's kind of got this thing going on. Uh, but yeah, it, just, it doesn't look like it hinders him at all. You know, and the way he's walking down Jordan right now, he's just looking almost bully him. Look at that, just yeah. those crisp shots. And I think, I, I mean, I can honestly sit there. And it's good you just said that, Cub, because Jordan's looking like all of a sudden he gets in the cage and look at the size of him. That's not how yeah. big you were, right? That's not how big you mm-hmm. were at weigh-ins. I don't, the face-off <laughs> was not that, you know, as Burgos goes in to try to get that body lock and going to push him up against the fence. But, yeah, that's, ah, that's impressive. This is super smart by Burgos because Jordan does a lot of great work with his kicks and just to get, you know, crowd that space, get right up on him, bully him a little bit. And now we're down on the mat here. Jordan yeah, obviously not necessarily known for his grappling, although he did get that submission win that I pointed yeah, out. Yeah, but he was rocked. <laughs> he was, he was dazed. That's why, you know, it's easy to get submissions when the guy doesn't even know where yeah. he's at. I, I, I really think that with creativity, you need space. And you need yeah. time, right? And and Burgos is not giving him that. He's just on him. And uh, he's dominating the, this fight at the moment. Did you see the push? Oh, so look at that face to get crank. He's got back. that body he's lock, too. He's crank. got it. He's got a body lock, a face crank. But, chat, the one thing he didn't do is Jordan was trying to get up. Burgos literally kicked off the cage and launched them both in there. He's going to just go right up to the chin, crank it to the side, and literally just lock this bad boy up right here. Jordan is in a bad spot, but he's able to keep his chin tight. Did you see that? I don't know if that kind of helped, but the way he launched and pushed them both off the fence and was able to, in the middle of that scramble, locked up that crank. Oh, definitely. When when you're on, When someone's on your back, you need – 
them to be perfect uh, right in the middle of your legs so you can carry mm-hmm. two people's weight. If they kick off the fence and your both of your weight goes off to the side, you're going down. And that was a great movie, did. And now oh. Jordan, look at that. Jordan Ooh. stands nice up. Jordan. Someone's mouth out. Mouth out. Out. That's a good way to get up. Wow. <laughs> he did it so easily, though. Jordan did... I'll be curious how he tries to come after this because Burgo seems to be kind of on fire right now, moving forward. And that's the one thing I was going to say is he just keeps coming forward almost like he's in a bullying style, right? Just walking yeah. him down, walking him down. Yeah, Jordan's not only gonna does get he those have big down. arms, he has long arms. Yeah. So you don't really realize, like, when I fought him, I, I was surprised with how long his jab was. Ooh. Jordan just heaves him to the fence, Ooh. hits him with the Ooh, slick okay. combination up against the fence. Go ahead, Cub. He's getting that respect back. He, he kind of shucked him off and threw a combo. And now, now I think he's matching energy. And he, he I think uh, Jordan woke, woke up. Yeah, yeah Jordan's like- got some dog in him for sure. Like, he's not afraid to get in there and get in the kitchen and cook if he needs to. I mean, he likes to be on the outside and be creative. But tell you what, you, you see these moments, you're like, all right, he's, he's, he's got some dog for sure. I'll be curious how when they break again, if Burgos will walk in like that. Because everything that, look at that, Jordan is still it. Like you said, he's sitting there throwing down, pushing. He's chasing after him. He's trying to make this thing a scrap. But here comes Burgos, you know, as they break. And it's Oof. he's moving around the side, firing that left hand. Burgos goes to push me. But shit, man, I'm telling you, Jordan is kind of throwing him around. I wasn't expecting this on their feet. I like that. He does the plumb, grabbing the head, trying to throw the knees. Jordan's got the busy hands. Big high kick, high kick by Jordan. Yeah, Jordan's Bur- looking for that head kick a lot. And I don't know if it's detrimental for Burgos to keep moving forward like this or if there's any kind of... Now he's got him pushed up. Jordan seems to be winning in these clinches. I like that with the knee. Now, again, here comes Burgos. They break their back up, moving forward, throwing that leg kick. Well, I'd now, say in the, like the last shimmy. minute and a half, uh, Burgos has wasted less energy. He recharged his battery real quick. And when you throw that many kicks, especially moving backwards like Jordan mm-hmm. was, uh, you're wasting a lot of energy. And so, you know, you got to be careful with that. I mean, these guys are only going to be getting tired and, you know, going at this pace. Then I love how they've been literally been just sitting there in that dirty boxing, one hand on the cow lick and just kind of throwing shots back and forth, trying to tie up the plumb a little bit. That's Jordan sees him move forward, try to lead in, tried to lead into a jump knee. You're right, though, Cub. I mean, you, it's creativity is cool and being throwing those dynamic shots, those flying knees and all of that and teeing off. But you're going to you're going to pay for that when you go to do it again the next round. Yeah. Now I think that's something we've seen with Yair. You know, he's in the main event. That's something mm-hmm. that he did with uh, when he fought for the title he, uh, or when he fought Holloway. He threw these hard kicks in the first, and I was like, man, he, he's got some power. And then it, it you know, slowed down quite a bit because we all know <laughs> uh, kicks and wrestling take it out of you the most. Oh. You know, I could box, I could grapple, but kicks and wrestling, man, those, <laughs> those take it out of you. Yeah, that's no joke to get those sit there, especially when you're throwing hard kick out. That's like punishment on the tie pads. Give me 10 of these hard ones. I'm like, <laughs> you know what I mean? You're like, no, that's why they make you do it at the end of practice and really burn it out. And that's, you know, but they both look good for wear when you're looking at they stand up. Burgos looks like he's ready, trying to figure it out, you know, and Jordan looks like he's man, what a first round. That was impressive. I need to figure out the um, I don't I still look at the stats, but it's Who you guys 24 got? Who you guys? 15. Who's going to win it at, at seeing what we saw so far? Mm, I still, I still, I'm still leaning Burgos. Yeah, me too. Jordan's going to go gonna Jordan. need more space. Even though he's got that damn horde tattoo, I'm still going to go with him. But I like <laughs> kick for kick. I like it. The kick for kick. There you go. But see, Burgos is again, he's the aggressor. I like that. The way he's setting it up, trying to throw that left hand. But he's definitely the aggressor. He wants to stay right in his face. Man, he's big. I can't believe how big he is. Jordan jumps in with the left hand, tries to do uppercut left again. Teep kick by Jordan. Those pay dividends later in the fight. Those little front kicks to the body, uh, they don't look like much, but later in the fight, when you're 
because really it's bruising your your stomach, you know. And when you're trying to take these big deep breaths when you're fighting a hard fight like this, yeah, it, it you realize you're taking a a, a more oh, shallow breath nice. for the for the period of ten minutes, and it's going to slow you down. Makes Virgo's sense. had a nice duck under there. He's got the body lock from the back now, tripping Jordan down. And this is because oh. now he's did this again. Did he score enough points in the first round to kind of take that round? Because there he is. He's up here, figure forward, got the back of Jordan again. Jordan's hand fighting, but again, he's looking for that crank. If he pushes off this fence again, I'm going to, this will be something. <laughs> you know, but he's up there one more time. And so again, in the eyes of the judges, it's got to be a bad, it's a bad spot for Jordan if he can get out of here. So in this position, when someone's on you with the body triangle, who do you think's legs take? the worst of it because i think Ooh. it's kind of both and it's like being on a guy's back when they're standing is hard to maintain but the guy holding both people in the air it's hard on their legs too who do you guys think that body think triangle is exhausting i find that's just me but that's probably because i don't do it enough yeah what do you think I mean, it, it, you can't take deep breaths when they, you have a body triangle that's on true. you you're just kind of panting at that point uh but but having to hold somebody up with the body triangle uh but i would imagine it's burning both their legs yeah he trying to get that rear naked he tried to spin him off to the side but burgos was able to stay on to it now he's trying to do a forward gramby roll can't do it we're back into the burgos is still keeping it i would think that tired i mean that foot would just get fatigued yeah. right i just say that foot would get tired but now he's trying to break him down and jordan is obviously trying to go up in a high Look, you're trying to get up high, and that's going to be one of the issues you're going to run into. But the fact he's able to still hold it through all of this, I'm impressed. Yeah, I am too. Well, I think he learned his lesson from the first time. Don't be so aggressive with the submission. Let's try to maintain and, and eat up the clock a little bit to make sure, mm -hmm. hey, I at least won this round. That That's something every fighter has to make a decision. It's like, do, do I be aggressive and look for a finish, or do I maintain position and try to eat up the clock and at least get this round? Because – guaranteeing one round out of three is, is a, is a, you know, it, it helps lot. you out when it comes to the scorecards. Now he's squeezing that and he's, yeah, I mean, position before the submission, hold it. You know, you're winning, you're winning points. Nope. You can always flirt with that rear naked choke and Jordan's in a bad spot. He's tried to pyramid up a couple times, get that, you know, get up in the air and see if I can't believe Burgos, he's doing a good job of posting with his arm and not actually getting fatigued, even though he's kind of the, the angle of, of his body. Look, he's going to go back there and try to he's get looking that, for that. Yeah. That knee bar or whatever the Zabibi, the Sulu, the Sulu of stretch or yeah. Sulu of stretch, but, whatever it is. Cause but it was Zabibi nice because he right. used that as a distraction. And as soon yeah. as he reached down for the leg, he went back well, up to the neck to try to slip it in. It was pretty slick. I liked it, but it also brought Jordan down, right? Where he was up changing yeah. the angle. And now he's not having to move forward so much and be able to post. And that's why, I mean, he's all over me. He's definitely eating up the oh. clock and winning this round. Oh, now he's just got the go face right across, right yep. on the face. Yeah, that this just hurts. This is tell people, too. just squeeze right on the teeth. Yep. yep, that is so tight. He's really going all in on this one. He's that is tight. Oh, then he let it, did it go underneath the chin? I can't quit. Nope. Wow, well, he defended Jordan. It. The beard. It's the beard. <laughs> Power to, I'm telling you what, the fact that he has fought out of that twice, it's got to be so uncomfortable when you're just getting cranked with your jaw getting smashed in like that. Yeah. But either way, like you said, Cub, holding the position and just keeping this just clock management, I mean, it, it's a no-brainer you win this round. Yeah, yeah, and then it, it gives you a little bit more ease going into the next round. Because mm -hmm. let's say he lost the first one, which we, you know, it's a pretty close round. Then he goes in going, I just got to win the next one. And I won. So either knock him mm -hmm. out or win, you know, win the round. And I won this fight. Did you guys see that submission in a, I won't mention the other organization's name, uh, where St Stevie Ray submitted uh, Anthony Pettis. Did you see that crazy one? It was yeah. like a modified twister. Yeah. From yeah. that same body triangle back position. That was wild. That was, that was cool. horrifying I, is what that was. I can't believe. Yeah. yeah. That was, I don't even know how they, I don't even. Yeah, I'd still. It probably to tore his, some cartilage in there, or popped out his floater rib. His but yeah, rib. when you you put enough pressure, and then the person tries to turn, and all that pressure mm -hmm. instead of is on the belly goes and he onto had the his, floater rib. And he had rib. his head. He kind of came across like you do with a normal twister. He came across his head, blocked his head, and then isolated that shoulder and did yeah. that. Whew. 
Yeah, that floater rib, when that thing decides to give a little pop, it's horrifying. I hate yeah. that thing. I had that out. I hate that. Oh, but it, whatever it was, it was final. They don't, but that's the one thing. Again, Jordan is literally, what do you do if you're Charles Jordan in this round? Because Burgos has been able to hop up underneath there and, and get the back, and he's controlled it, you know? So he's got to figure out his punches are good, but yeah, keep it out in the center more than anything, I guess. Stay away from that fence going into this third round. He's got to land more teep. I mean, more teep kicks and keep the distance here. I mean, he just can't let Burgos get so close. Yeah, to I where think he can he duck under and find the back. I think. Oh, I think that. you could say he's <laughs> he's down two rounds and he needs to get after it. You know, and it's it's. I love this about Burgos because he's the one marching forward and looking to try to throw that right hand. Look, slips out of the way of that jab. Look, that overhand right selling it, and maybe that left hook. And it's you know, there's a jab by Jordan, but there's that right hand by Burgos. He looks good in this fight. He's got such big traps and that natural posture that he can, he's almost like constantly in a shoulder roll. So yeah, it's, <laughs> he's got yeah, it's hard to, body it's hard to hit him clean. Boxer. Yeah. Yeah. He's down. I like it. He just drops down to that level and he's moving forward to see that uppercut lead uppercut. Jordan's going to stick with that jab. You know, I like that jab, but right now it's just, all these other attacks are coming in from Burgos. The legs, the kicking the inside of the leg chat, throwing a nice right hand for Jordan, the calf kick by Burgos. He don't like to keep his hands. Well, now he gets hands up no, a little bit. Chin not really. <laughs> yeah, he's, got you know, pretty, that, he's got him pretty low, even though he's in the pocket. He just yeah, likes to he's, that's what I mean. He ain't close, it. chin down, hands up. But, he, oh, he yeah, we don't. MMA fighters don't really need to keep their hands up. That's something I always tell, you know, fans. It's like, these are tiny gloves. They don't really block much. So, <laughs> you know, it, as long as if like for me, if, if I'm tired, you'll see my hands up. Cause, cause I know that I don't have, cause I don't have the head movement anymore. Yeah, I'm, not, movement. I, I'm not yeah. quick enough right now, but okay. if, if, if I feel good, I don't need my hands up. Ooh. Oh, I love it. Oh, oh, Jordan, he's rocked. His head through some uppercuts, got it pushed up against the fence. But this is where, again, he punched him at the, he punched him up against the fence. And now here goes Burgos looking to have him pushed up and looking to see if he can't try. He's got a single. This is what it was before, duck under to take the back, even though Jordan looks like he's trying to work a switch. Trying to hit the switch, yeah. Now he's out on the front headlock of Burgos, trying to throw some knees to the midsection, some throw some shots to the head. Burgos is on one knee, stands up. Back against the fence. Back down. He's playing the game. Don't want to get kneed. I'm a downed opponent. Yep, yep, yep. Knee me in the face, so I'll take a knee. I'm going to pull up. Look, now he postures up again, over under position. Jordan really got to try to push this. Body, 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 throwing some shots, throwing upstairs. Uh, I like the business. I like, oh, Ooh. good right hand by Jordan. He's got the hands. He's definitely pushing it. Body, Jordan's body. a dog, man. Oh, you see this? All the body shots he's throwing. Oh. Oh, oh that inside. uppercut got Just through. Pop, 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 uppercut, uppercut, hook, hook, body, body. He's throwing a good mixture of everything right here. I figured he would have more energy in the third because of his body type, right? Uh, and Burgos is such a big guy. He Ooh. comes on so strong in the first couple, but he does die out in the third a little bit. I love Burgos that has right to start there. cracking back here. Yeah, he needs to do something back before it ends up being a 10-8 round. He's got a good job hitting the pocket, plum the head again right here. Jump oh. knee, nice big jump knee by Jordan. Oh, uppercut. that uppercut is so oh. nice. Oh, he's all over him. Jack. Oh, oh. That's big nice jump one. cross, puts him up against the fence again. Jordan is going ham. Burgos is eating all of it. Yeah, it's all Jordan right now. Burgos needs to do something. Oh, these punches are impressive. Does he have anything left in the tank? Did he burn himself out spending that much time with the body lock staying on the back of Jordan? Kind of answers your question, Cub. Who burns out? You know what I mean? Maybe it's Burgos for home. Oh, oh the left hand. Oh, the left hand by Jordan walking him across the cage. Oh, my Jump God. Jump to a body lock. Oh, but then he gives up the back and Burgos gets to go right where he's been for the last two that. rounds. 45 seconds left. As long as 45 seconds of his life. Oh. But he can't hop up, though. He can't hop up on he's it. At, he's got a lace. There you go. There he is. He's going to try to bring him down. Jordan's like, I can't let this happen right now. He's going to try to come out the back door. Nope. Burgos has his back. Body lock. Does he have a oh. grip? I can't tell. 
Peel the lock. Yep. Peel the lock. Oh, he's trying. Yeah, Burgos, Burgos is just trying to stall out. He's trying oh, to stall 100%, out. 100%. 100%. In a good position. You know what I mean? Trying to keep on the face. He's going to stay on the back of Jordan. He's like, look, at he's throwing his hands <laughs> in the air. Oh, oh Burgos throws oh, the ball oh, on the oh. right. Kick oh. to the face, my... <laughs> <laughs> what a great fight. Woo! Man, what another round. Fight. Give us another round. Yeah. Oh, that was sick. Oh, that was impressive. I think, like you said, it'll boil down to first, first round, round when he had his back for a while because the second round we know, and the third, even though at the end there, it goes back to what you're saying, Laura, about even though you take them down, back in the day, that would be the end-all, beat-all. But now the mm -hmm. more of there was nothing done. So even though he got that duck under and got his back, he was just kind of laying there. I don't mm -hmm. think they can – you know what I mean? They, ah, they they won't give him that. Jordan has to no, have I that think Jordan, down, so it'll come down yeah. to the first, right? Definitely. I think so. What a fight. What a fight. Second round, easy for Burgos. Third round, easy for Jordan. Yeah. It's going to be who who took the first. Which kind of sucks, you know, but uh, yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> First round, a lot of times it's not as much goes on. It's hard to, it, it sucks to have to give the fight to whoever took the first round. I wish we could score fights as a whole, but yeah, me too. There's, there's flaws in that as well. But like at the end of the day, that would be the purest way to, you know, to look at it. If a fight's a fight, you start like you notching like points, that punch, notching, flipping cards, or you know, flipping the score over. He's got four point five points. It's it is tough. I don't know. And I think finding a true system, you know, it can't be like the the everyone's the gonna be pissed. scoring and no everybody's gonna be mad, right? So yeah, when we make changes <laughs> to the sport, it, people are gonna be pissed. It is what it is. You know, yeah. I keep saying that our our gloves need to be better, uh, and, and I'm sure once they eventually upgrade them, people are gonna be pissed. No, oh, for sure. They don't like change. They don't like change yeah. at we all. We miss the eye pokes. <laughs> <laughs> we need eye pokes again. Can we go bare knuckle? Let's can we go, go back no to the yeah. rules. You know, let's have grabbing the fence. And uh, I like the pulling hair. Let's get that back in there. <laughs> but I definitely, you know, knees to the head on the ground. Yeah. I would love that. Bring those back. All right, here we go. Oh, chat. Here we are. Twenty nine, twenty eight, twenty nine, twenty eight, twenty eight, twenty eight. Yeah, I think that was so, fair. Okay, so did somebody? Did somebody? Somebody called it a draw. Yeah, yeah, they had to. Someone they ten eighted. Maybe they ten eighted Jordan uh -huh. in the last. Yeah, and I could see that. I get it. I can see it because again, the first round, right? And then he had his back for a long time. But second round was no question. I like you, like you said, Cub. But that third round, oh, he was so close to finishing him. That is impressive. That is impressive. See, and that's what I was saying when when he was against the fence getting teed off on. It's like you you're running the risk of getting 10 aided, and that's a draw, you know. If yes, you're cruising. It, you know, if we were talking about live scoring and, and, you know, I think you're that's exactly what happened. And then it's like, Hey, I just need to survive. Like, no, well, if he gets a no. 10, eight, it's a draw. So yeah, you got to do something, you know? So yeah, it, it was an interesting fight. It's definitely, it, definitely going to get five of the night so far. Right. So yeah, far. Jordan, that was impressive. He had like how many punches it says total strikes, one, six, nine, significant strikes, one twenty one. But it was like in the seventies before that round or even less. I mean, he unleashed on those punches at the end, which was impressive, man. That was something, but yeah, for 13 minutes into the fight, be able to unleash like that. Yeah. Yes. Especially the way you, you carried him, like what we were talking about. When you carried him the, almost the entire second round, whose legs got tired? And it was obvious Burgos yeah. got tired trying to hold that triangle the whole time, even with like he was raising up. I mean, he had him on his back the whole round and then to come out and just start unleashing. Oh, that was impressive. I wonder if it's because the lactic acid in the leg gets trapped because of the, the, the leg oh, triangle, 100%. right? Because the like guy jump. that has their leg straight, it's burning, but you're, the lactic acid isn't getting trapped. I don't know. Uh, uh, somebody else would have to uh, chime in with that one, but 
That's I, what it I would imagine. It makes sense to me. Every he burned them out, and that's it. When you because we all know you had you've had to try to finish a triangle forever, and then you let go, and you're like, oh, my legs are dead. Oh, they're junk. They're junk. And it's just Who, it's your calves too, like your calves and your shins from like flexing the foot to be able to maintain that triangles. Ugh. Oh, I, that's I can't believe how long he kept it. I can't believe, and then especially when. Because Jordan would, he would he was, arch up, uh, he, was tripod, he would raise yeah. up, he would tripod, then he would drop down and drop. And the fact that he's able to hold on to that as long as he did, look at it, 11 first round finishes. This is the fight, you two. This is the one. Matt <laughs> Snell and Sumu Darji. The hands of Sumu Darji are. Re- You've been practicing that name, haven't you? Because I'm not even <laughs> attempting it. And you're out there. I'm like, okay, is he getting uh, this right? <laughs> no, it's because, like I said, on Fridays, we watch we, we watch a lot of the fights. We watch fights of fighters fighting on Saturday. And so and we usually do two or three. So I get to hear the name over and over and over. So that's something that we do on Fridays, kind of okay. breaking everything down. And then, like I said, on Monday, we'll come back and recap and a lot of the Twitter clips and stuff. And then we have interviews. So, you know, we do stuff like that, but yeah, it's, we were, when we were in Singapore, they, I don't know if you guys saw it, but they had a new show called road to UFC, which is basically like a Asian contender series, but it's in a tournament format. Yeah. And I was calling the fights with John Gooden and we had a guy, I wish I could show you his name on screen because it's even, it's not going to sound that bad when I say it, but reading it versus saying it, his name was my, my T2O Karamuali. Wow. And having to yell that when he won, I was like, Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> my, my T2 will head to careful. <laughs> I would have shortened that down to T2 so fast Bye-bye. it would have made him mad. T2! Yeah, T2! <laughs> I, I've had like some, uh, in, in, there's some boxers that train in my boxing gym and the Russian manager was asking me about like advice on pushing them and I'm like, give them a nickname right off the bat. Like, yep. <laughs> Give them a nickname because Americans are lazy. They don't want to learn that name. It's too difficult. (laughs) It's like, uh, uh, no, moving on, you know, like give them a nickname and people will embrace them. Like, because I mean, people could be, that's easy for us to to say, we just could be, that's it. Uh, The Korean zombie, you know, you, you start having these nicknames. It makes us, it makes it easy for us rather than us struggling and fumbling your name, looking like idiots. 100%. 100%. Nobody wants to try to do it. So he's giving some that's that, that's the only way I know about the the Tibetan eagle Sumu Darji. Because I've always I wait for one of you to announce. I'm like, if like because I'll do the most of the time, I'll do the the other watch songs just on fight nights. It's just me. And I was like, I'm waiting until I someone says the name first. That's <laughs> not me, because I know you all are doing your own. John Anik. John yeah, Anik so is, is the man. He is the man. <laughs> Like well, if you want well, to know, how to say, just wait. Whatever John says is correct. To be fair, when you do the UFC broadcasting, they have live, uh, like they have recordings of the person saying their yeah. own name many times, so you get to hear them say it, and, oh. and it really helps you out. <sighs> All right, well little, then, little so cheat I, sheet. Bet, I didn't know. Ah, oh, that's crazy. But the All debates right. we have, because like they're saying it in their own accent. And then we got to say it in our American accent and the debates that we have about the <laughs> proper way to Americanize are just hilarious, are just hilarious. Oh, I can only five, find, but five people will hear it five different ways. Kennedy, Kennedy is the Chukwu. Oh, that's the one has yeah, given I, us fits. <laughs> is it in the Chukwu, the Chukwu, and Zechukwu, and Zechukwu. I don't know. Anyway. Ah. Uh. Screwing up his but, name was the whole reason I got to meet Snoop Dogg. Hey, speaking I screwed, of, though, I screwed it up well, so not bad. Snoop Dogg, but speaking of, did you know they just did the Contender Series just played? How much fun is that? There has been a lot of fighters coming out. How much? How much wow. you love the Contender Series? You Man, liking it? It's my baby. I mean, yeah, I it's Dana's baby, but it's Tell my me baby. About this. Tell me about it. How much? How, it's it's incredible how much it's growing. That show to me is like, if you are a real MMA fan, you have got to be watching that show because it's only two hours long. It's on a Tuesday night. What else do you have going on on a Tuesday night? And there's no commercials. Like we bust through these fights. There's no, there's none of this stuff. And as much as I love this stuff, there's none of this like extra fluff that fills time. It is just fights, fights, fights. And I personally love hearing Dana's immediate and initial reaction to these young fighters as they make it to the UFC. And he does not mince words. Like if he didn't <laughs> like your performance, he will look at you through the camera and oh, be like, Dude, it be heartbreaking? you didn't try hard. You know, you didn't try hard or whatever it is. And then, <sighs> and then I, I love it. Cause it's like, 
I work pay-per-views, I work fight nights, but on the contender series, it is life-changing moments for these people. Like they have been working. Some of them have been like lingering on the regional scene for a decade, you know, like they're not just all fresh, brand new fighters. Some of them are, but like some of these guys have been grinding it out on the regional scene and this is their chance. And when they make that happen and they get that UFC contract, like to be there and see that, like, that is what I love, honestly, the most above anything else I do. I love it. I That's love cool. it. And you see a lot of them. We're seeing a lot of the contender series fighters. It's, it's just kind of become the hub, you know, and it's, I do love it. You know, the way that it, again, in the quietness of it all, it, it's really personal and you get, and it, I yeah. love the stories. Ah, yeah. I'm excited. I'm glad. Some and incredible that, stories. Yeah. The commentating is a lot of fun and the interviewing. Oh, you're lucky. That's it. I love it. Yeah, I, love I, it. I, I I love it so much. Like you guys got you have guys like Adrian Yanez, who I think people are starting to become aware of now. And it's fun for for me and the other people who participate in the show, because I'm like, I could have told you that two years ago. That kid is special. I mean, that right. kid is special. Yeah, Seeing and the Sean biggest O'Malley difference... go out there and like walk off KO someone. And that was wild. But the biggest difference between like this show and the Ultimate Fighter is that on the Ultimate Fighter, the shows, the, the fights are exhibitions, so they don't go on your record. Yeah. You know, so people are kind of like a little bit more relaxed, but on the mm-hmm. contender series, it goes on your record. So, I mean, that's a huge difference. They're going to yes. be fighting a little bit harder. You know, and, and then you've got, you got Dana right there in front of you. Exactly. I mean, that's the biggest thing is like, you literally have, so you're like, you're hitting the person, you're looking at him like, he doesn't seem interested. I'm going to have to see if I can't yeah. try to get that extra in there. I'm flipping off this cage and I'm bringing him with me, yeah, you know, or something. Well, that's like, you know, it's like, that's that one time that you have to bring it. And I really like when you get the ones that come back the second time. Yeah. Like yeah. when they don't do it the first time and they're like, Ooh, you know what I mean? And it, it, you don't let it break you and you come back for that second try. And it's, it's pretty impressive to see them. Do that's that. Uh, that, that Kyle Bahalio kid who fought uh, last weekend. Yeah. He fought twice in one season because his first performance, I mean, all of us were like, man, that was awesome. For whatever reason, Dana didn't love it. And Kyle was had the choice to go back to Brazil. And he's like, you know what? On a whim, I'm going to, because they didn't tell him, like, we want you to fight again. He's decided to stay in Vegas, pay for his own hotel, just hang out there just in case someone fell off. Sure enough, they did. He went up a weight class and then put on an incredible forum and, and got the contract. So the fact that he threw the dice, gambled on himself, stayed in Vegas, stayed ready. And now, you know, you look at what he's doing in the UFC. It's yeah. pretty cool. Oh, yeah, I, I think he's going to be a star for sure. He's good. But that's the kind of, but that's that again, when I tell people, you know, that's that, that extra, right? I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying right here. And I want to prove to you that I can just yep. give me an opportunity. Give me an opportunity. I'm ready. As soon as somebody moves out of the way. And that's something I've always talked about, especially in the, in the sport, in its younger days, always be ready. You see these fighters when you're climbing the ladder, Climb the ladder every day. You don't take these three, four, five months going on a hiatus. You want to be ready because somebody, especially as busy as the sport is now, somebody can be bumped out tomorrow and like, hey, we need you to step, you know, someone to step in. It's like, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I love those fighters, you know, and I it's just see Shemayev as much is, but I'm not leaving the island. I'm going to stay right here. I want to fight yep. next weekend. You know, it's like, that's the one thing that I do love, you know, is how busy the sport is now. You can fight literally every weekend. It's like, I I just had a quick knockout or a quick sub. Can I go again? Can I go again? You know, back in the day, it was six, it's, you know, maybe six yeah. shows a year, but sorry, you don't get the fight because we got to get all these other fighters that, you know, they need to have their one fight of the year and stuff. And when people I always remember, ask the best part, go ahead. I remember yeah. scheduling my entire like social calendar around, Oh, there's a pay-per-view this month. <laughs> like let's figure out where we're going to watch it. Who's going to pay for it. Oh. And like, it was a big deal because there were fights on. And now it's like, obviously there are fights on It's It's the Saturday, you know, yeah. of course there are Every Saturday. Yeah. yeah. When is there not a fight on, you know, and that would be something like when you start, ju- when you start coaching and stuff, you know, is it's like, I tell people they're like, Hey, when are you going to start coaching? When are you going to start coaching? I go, you know, I want to wait a few years. I love this platform streaming to be home with my kids. May want to get into high school because if you really had a busy gym cub and you start really succeeding at the coaching side, you're gone every week. Like you get to, you're there till Sunday, you fly home on Sunday, Monday. It's like, all right, I'm not coming out until probably Thursday or so, you know what I mean? But you could get, it could get overwhelming with how busy everything is now. A couple of fighters can keep you on the road all the time. So for retirement, that'll be awesome. Get to travel with their, you know what I mean? Travel on Sunday. 
at the time, yeah, it's different now. How, but I do like that our fighters can be like, I want to be busy. I want to fight right now. I'm ready to fight next week and turn right back around and do it again. I love that. Yeah, there's a lot of fighters that you know you see when you when guys are coming up. Like uh, nothing bothers me more than an amateur belt. Guys win an amateur belt. I've seen them like throw little family parties, and they're like, they're like, oh, what do you think? I'm like take that belt and go put it in the garage or in a closet and never look at it again. It means absolutely <laughs> nothing. Cause it means absolutely nothing. It, it means nothing. It was a little high five and that's it. Move on. It's like, it's okay to be proud of it, but if that fulfills your need, if that's doing it for you, then you're done. Like <laughs> the mountain is so much bigger than what you're staring at. You just climbed an anthill right now. So I get out of it. here with that. You know, like oh I try to, I try to downplay it because when I was coming up, when you know how it is, it's important on when you're coming up, but when I was coming up and I want to fight and everyone's telling me how great I am and King of the cage and whatever there, my coach is like, I better see you in the gym on Monday. Yes, sir. You know, like mm -hmm. that, that attitude helped me, you know, get up, get up to the top and these oh, guys that sure. are celebrating and taking off for long periods of time those guys aren't gonna last you know you know i won my i won my amateur fight i'll be back in a month and a half i'm gonna take some time off i'm gonna go i'm gonna get big and train and i'll be back i'll be back it's like but you're climbing that ladder i tell yeah, everybody yeah. it's you like gotta, what are you celebrating yeah like yeah. You, you, enjoy you it for the day a have fight. a good dinner <laughs> yeah. yeah have a dinner and, and then i want you back that's not what champions are doing. You know, like uh, we've got Brandon Moreno in our gym now. We literally had this exact discussion after practice today because James Krause was talking about how like, you know, Brandon Moreno's growth looks like this now, like just, you know, small because after a fight, he doesn't do that. You know, he yeah, just, yeah. he stays, he stays right where he was and he makes these small incremental improvements throughout camp, but there's never these big dips where you're on this yo-yo. Yeah, hundred percent. And you want to be in shape when you start camp. You know, yeah. none you know of what? this fat to be fat camp. Yeah. yeah fat and camp and that camp. time at the end, that's what it became to me was, but again, trying to figure it out. And I was just like, yeah, the slumping and the fat camp. But that's why I tell these kids, man, you gotta be climbing that ladder. And I always use, you know I mean? I always use that rich Franklin story. Same thing. How he just jumped in early and got to that fight, but here comes this fight with Sumu Darji and Matt Snell. We'll be back. This was the fight I was waiting <laughs> for right here. Matt Schnell Matt has Schnell gotten so much early. better oh, than when yeah. he first came on the scene and when, when you may have seen him on MTV back in the day. <laughs> was he on Bully Beatdown? No, he was on that uh, reality show. Him and uh, Tony Kelly were both on that show where they were like in the Midwest somewhere and they were wanting to be fighters. And it was like a oh, I don't even reality remember show. that. Oh, yeah, I know they, they had a girl like version five, of that, but there was it, a girl version around like five it? people. And, and they're the only two that actually like made it out. Huh. But, but uh, I, you know, Tony Kelly was kind of a, an interesting person. Not fun to be around, but uh, Matt Schnell is just like, I really loved uh, how much he's matured. Yeah. The way these guys are going kick for kick right now, Sumu Darji's out on the outer track, kind of moving around sideways. It's Max being the aggressor, but Sumu dropping that deep kick caught by Matt, Max and thrown, but Matt, sorry, it is Matt. I don't know why I said Max, but that's the one thing is, I mean, just kind of look at the way that they're fighting right now, fighting style wise, you know, is trying to figure out and get that opening. And I like that. See, Snell's going to try to figure out and get inside, but Sumo with all that movement right off the bat. Good thing, bad thing. Well, I mean, that's definitely a hallmark of his style, but sometimes his movement, like, will, will cause of his balance to be not quite where it needs to be. And he doesn't always sit down fully on his, on his punches. But I, I, kind of one of those deals where it's like good in some some instances and gets him in trouble in others and now he's underneath Matt Schnell, which he threw is not a hard left made. hand and Matt timed it got that takedown now he's sitting in the mount and that's the one this would be a tough situation for Darji see if he can get out of there but he's gonna have to give up his back go on all fours referee's position you've got Matt got double both legs in looking to try to take the back he's got the back see I like this when Sumu sits up like that and make sure he fights ahead he's gonna try to come out of that guard Look at try to spin inside on the figure four. He was already turned quite a bit. I those flyways with those triangle. small waists. Oh, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's true. Look how Schnell's going to try to force this triangle choke if we get that arm free. He's He's got his mouth covered. I like that. Yeah. Whenever you get the opportunity and you can cup somebody's mouth, that's fully legal. 
Just cover cupped that mouth, thing. Keep him off your head. Now he's looking to posture up. Now he's able to get it worked though. Cause it was able to get him. Like he had to make a choice Cub. He's I'm going to hold the back of his head or I got to get him off my mouth one way or the other. He was able to let him pop up. Ripping right shot, right body shots for Darji and Snell's got a close guard chat looking to kind of just sit back and you try to pull him down. Is he looking to maybe get the stand? Oh, now he's going to work his legs up. He wants that triangle. Yeah, he does. Sumo Darji comes out the back door. He's standing up, just kind of playing with the ankles. It's crazy how triangles, successful triangles, have become somewhat rare anymore. And everybody's defense has evolved so much over the years that, like, it's kind of a big deal when you get a triangle, you know? Oh, yeah. there he goes. Ah. He's been working. Well, now he's got to take it back the other Matt's way. Good at him, he's though. got it locked on the other side. He's a got lot it of locked on the other that. side. Now he's got that plata. Look to try to get some space out of this. Got the Oof. look at Darji. Just Ooh. picks him up. Okay. Oh, Man. it's not going gonna... down. He's still in it, though. He's still in it. Oh, he's oh. Like Bambi. Oh, we're rolling through all the way. Okay, roll through. Now it's Darji that's going to look for the guard. Max is going to try to. Throw the right hands and do the ground and pound. That was a crazy sequence. I don't know. Wouldn't that hurt when you pick somebody up like that and then drop them right back down on the same spot? I mean, it hurts. Especially if your shoulders already like. I mean, it depends how flexible they are. Obviously, these guys are pretty limber. I like how Sumu does. Look, he's putting his feet, trying to keep right up against the chest. Open guard, trying to hold on to the wrists. But if you're going to do that, you need your butt off the ground because uh, you that helps keep them at a little bit further away that you can't land uh land heavy strikes if your butt's not you know all the way up then yeah. then you can get grounded pounded like he is i like the punch Ooh. punches both of them seem pretty up they pretty adamant about wanting to stay in that open guard and just rip down the punches ground Ooh. pound you got Darji. Sitting back here, chat. If you're not seeing it, just ripping elbow, ripping elbows. Now, Max, Matt. I don't know why I keep calling him Max, man. He's gonna do it all day. <laughs> Call Matt. whatever you want. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, think, I, I, I swear, I keep hearing. It. I'm just gonna have to call him Schnell because I keep hearing it. It's like it, it sounds like. Anyway, he's wanting to push forward, right, and just keep kind of grinding that out. And he ended up on top. So, Simon Darcy had some nice elbows from the bottom there. Yeah, that man, that changed the game. I don't know. If what you guys think, but that used to be illegal in in our eyes until Anderson Silva did it. Uh, I want to say against Shonen, uh, against Chael, and then all of a sudden people were like, "Oh no, that's legal because it's not twelve to twelve to six. But I what remember, year would that have been? Man, because it did kind of it 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 got like uh it, it was more specified. Yeah. And it is now. And, and what's interesting too, is like, you can do this as long as there's like an arc, you can mm -hmm. go this direction. You just can't do it like this. Yeah. There has to be a, like a, like a, like a pull to it. it honestly, like there are so few elbows that are we're actually, we're talking, we go 530, yeah, 530, you, don't, you know what I mean? Yeah, 1145, yeah. 530 with little angle, but <laughs> you can somehow, you can't do 12, <laughs> six, but if you're on your back, and then you can still throw in that same motion. You can. You know what I mean? But it's, it's not like, 12 6. Yeah. But it, but, but it, it is in this, <laughs> I'm tooting the horn the whole time, but I know you're saying it's always something yeah. like, no, 5 30, 5 30. All right, we got you. <laughs> they tried to get it changed too. Like the, all the refs, I think most people in MMA want that rule to be gone. Yeah. They actually did well, a study and found people... that hammer, hammer fists are way more damaging uh, oh, really? than elbows are from that. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think the the real reason they came up with the rule in the beginning was when someone was shooting takedowns and guys were just spike elbowing down and they were trying mm -hmm. to protect right the spine. The back of the, yeah, so, right in the back then, of the head. And then if you're mounted on somebody, like uh, was it the uh, John Jones, Matt Hamill, like if you spike elbow down, mm -hmm. like you could just crush someone's face. So I think those two instances, it, it, it makes it it makes sense why that's a rule. Mm hmm. Yeah, it does. It's just weird when you say that 12 6. It's like, but you can do it on the back. It's like, okay, I get that, but you can't do it from this position, you know, yeah. which is, it, I mean, it makes sense and I get it. 
But it, yeah, it, it was always it's funny. 12, 6, 11, 45, 5, 30. 11, 45, 5, 30. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> that one's good. All right. Yeah, no, I, I put a little angle on it. All right. No, that's money. As much as I don't like them on the, from the guard, it does make people really quick have to change positions or do something. You can't just sit in the guard anymore. Oh, I like, yeah, off your back. If they're firing yeah. like that, you better posture up and get out of there. They can get torn up. Big lead hook right there. So we had a, see that counter left hand. I love these straight mm. hands. He's coming in with that, that two. Look at that. He hit oh. that left hand. He's got Snell kind of wobbled. Oof. He's got him stilted. Dargy's up on his wheels. Chat moving back and forth. Fired that left hand and that hook. How crispy is that hook of Sumo Dargy's afterwards? But now Snell's trying to push forward. Oh, he's hurt again. He's wobbled. Snell is wobbled. Dargy's just trying to find that one shot right now. You know? Snell can't help it. He lands that inside leg kick. He can't help it. He keeps coming forward. Dargy's trying to make sure he stands back a little bit, but that left hand is a long left hand. Thing is, oh, I like it. I like it, Dargy. I'm loving this fight. It's so technical. You know, and that's the one thing. Like, Matt's walking forward, but if you look at seeing that's that, you get that slap hand, slap hands, righty versus lefty, that open, mm -hmm. throwing that straight left, those inside leg kicks, you can hear that. And those guys who are, are who are really good at playing that that jab paw game and like occupying that jab hands. that lane. Oh, he landed another left hand. He's landing these straight lefts, and they're just so fast. Matt's trying to hold on to the foot. He's looking to try to take it up, but no. Dargy gets out of it and moves back around his faces. And then here it comes again. He's going to try to hide that left. Ooh, nice uppercuts oh. from Matt. Yeah, uppercut. like what you were saying, Laura. Like when you reach out with that lead hand and you're grabbing, you get their attention, and it's hard not mm -hmm. to pay attention. That rear hand just comes out of nowhere. Oh, oh. And then he grabbed the hand and fired the elbow over the top. Cup. Yes, that was just put him down. That was sick. Gobby grabbed it like that. Oh. Boom! He <laughs> just did it again. Now he's closed up the distance. I mean. They, he's looking like the Diaz brothers with uh, these combos right here. Yeah, again. he did it again. <laughs> but he won't go down. Snell's not going down. But oh, Dargy's like, what do I got to hit him with? Look, he's grabbing again. the wrist. He's still trying it. Looking for uppercuts out of plumb the head. Oof. Snell's just coming forward. What a chin. Snell him back. <laughs> he's back. He looks like he's back. He was hurt for a minute. Oh, he but just fired the right hand. He's good. Look at Dargy's still going for that. He's still trying to grab that wrist and fire the elbow over the top. Left hand. There's oh. the left hand. Where's that left hand? Wobbled him back, stilted. Trying he's to come. I like how he's coming around hole. the guard. He's coming right around the guard of Schnell when he hits those hooks. Man, this and is back and forth. Schnell throws an uppercut right hook or left hook. I'm sorry. What a great oh. fight. <laughs> oh, come on. Dargy looks like he's winded. Oh, oh, good oh he Matt, ate that. Matt bets him up. That rocked him. Oh, then Darrow happened again. Dargy throws a heavy left. Matt tanged it. Got in on the takedown. He's going to go right into the mount. Make Assume up for the Darcy mount. Darcy himself out, you think? Oh, he's making he was, up for oh, right stunned. now. Look at him. He's just start throwing shot after shot, trying to rip elbows. Dargy can't move. I think he's tired. He is tired. Oh, He's smashing elbows, him, man. The elbows. Would you take oh. the arm bar or keep hitting? Got to keep, keep hitting. hitting. You got, got a minute keep, 35 <laughs> left. You got to keep Yeah, hitting. I definitely would keep hitting. Oh, another one. Oh, he's ripping elbows, throwing shots. He's oh, covered it's about to stop. They're going to stop. They're gonna stop this. Intelligence is going away. They're going to stop this. Yep. Oh, 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 he's, he's cranking. He's cranking, chat. He's cranking. Butt. Oh, back to the elbows. Oh, we got elbows. We got, oh, we got ketchup all over the place. <laughs> That's what we call that red syrupy stuff. We got to call it ketchup. Mara, Mara. Gotta, oh, we got it everywhere. Oh, it's spewing. <laughs> oh, this fight just turned. I can't believe this. Darcy got tired. He's trying to fight the hand. He's still, he's still in the middle of a triangle, but the arm is not across. He's going to. Oh, oh gonna man. If he wants to finish it that he's way, he's on the head. He's this is going to be over. Oh, yep. he's out. Oh, he slapped wow. him. Beautiful. I can't wow. believe. Beautiful fight for Matt. He's now. still out. Oh, nope. He's done. Yeah, I think with, with how tired he was. Dude, he had him. He had him on stilts, just rocking with those elbows. Rocking with those <laughs> elbows. Matt Snell is so good at those triangles. I'm going to get an email here in a minute from our stats guy because they update us at the end of the fights, but I guarantee Matt Schnell just set some sort of triangle record. That was the most insane ending. That some was kind of triangle nuts. record. 
That was I nuts. So. Like I what can't kind? believe like it. Look, they're both Dargies. Chat Dargies just laying flat back on the canvas, chilling. Matt is he is tired. How he got through that? Those elbows. So he just would grab the wrist and just fire him. Dargy was just firing his and firing his, but not throwing the left. And then he just look at it. He was stilted, stilted. Chat. Oh, these elbows. Oh. Look at that. Oh, no. Did the stanky leg. Oh, he stank it all the way up against the fence, and it came back, and there was that right hand. So Dargy's like, what? And he's going to throw a heavy left, and boom, he timed it, shot underneath it, got on top, and just started hurting him. That was a comeback, Excalibur. That was something. I was impressive, you two. I can't believe. Oh, that was impressive. Look at that. Oh, he gets that triangle. It's just beautiful. Just squeeze. Uh, and then he just, you see his legs, everything just went, doof, just done. Man, I, that was so good you, fight. You think that one uh, takes fight of the night over the last one? Oh, I don't. Uh, oh. I don't write these 25 checks. underdog. I don't know, oh, man. That was impressive. That was impressive. I mean, that was consistent action. That's true. I mean, he was. Firing at you, kept grabbing that wrist, just firing that over, firing that over, and it was yeah. hitting him. It's like, and then he just kept going through. It's like, where's the left for something? It was, <laughs> yeah, but everything went stiff. That was nuts, man. Oh, what a comeback! Yeah, yeah that was that was amazing. The tides were changing quite a bit because he was hurt, and then the other guy was hurt. And they were going back and forth, and but it looks like uh, Schnell was just in better shape. You know, he was able to. He, he got hurt, but he, he kept coming back to reality. Now he quickly. kept recovering as fast yeah. as he did. And they weren't just like, he was getting wobbled. Like you said, the stanky leg, that one, he was stilted trying to, he hit the fence, turned around. And so I think that was the thing is Darji might've mis- made a mistake. Like I'm well, I know he made the mistake, which is, all right, I've got him hurt. Let me just go and keep trying to get that elbow. And all the wire Snell is recovering, even though it didn't look like it, but then all of a sudden he was able to time that aggressive left hand. Darji went to throw Change levels, boom, takedown. And it's just how fast. See, Sumu Darji had to have been just fatigued, right? Just really yeah. just done yeah. because he's like, all right, have the mount. I'm done with two and a half minutes left. That was a bad situation. Yeah, you can see was, it when he, he ate that there. big right hand. And then they when they went to the when they went to the ground, he just did had he just had nothing. He didn't have any juice. Oh, I love it. What he a hit fight. him with the Pez dispenser, you know, <laughs> when the head snapped back. Oh, I love it. I love it. Four minutes, 25. Man, that was impressive. Unreal. What a fight. That was my fight that I was, that was the fight I was looking forward to. That, oh, that was something. I like yeah, that. Yeah, that was, that was a huge win for him. <laughs> oh, that was a fight. That was a good fight. 54 seven strikes to 48, but two takedowns. So this is, so this is an interesting stat from the last fight. I'll just read it out because it's kind of complicated. Uh, Shane <laughs> Burgos's minus 71 significant strike differential versus Charles Jordan. It was 42 versus 113 is the third largest ever for the winner of a UFC decision. So like he won despite he, having minus 71. Yeah. Yeah. There was Cheeto who just set the record. Cheeto Vera against um, who did he? Oh, uh, who did oh against this fight chat where he kept coming back at the very end and just of every him. round. Yeah, who he was, was kind of losing, but then he kept dropping him at the end of the round. Who was it that he just fought? I want to say chat, it wasn't Rob Calvin, Font. It was Rob, Rob Font. Font. I want to say Calvin yeah. Cater, but it was Rob that Font. was yeah, yeah. That was the that set the record because he had gotten significantly outstruck. Yeah, and and won a unanimous decision. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But now when you go back to, but see, the thing is about that striking that, but it all happened. It goes back to, it all happened in the last round. So now if we were in a different kind of a rule set where you go for fight finishing, Jordan wins the fight, but because we are again round by, you know, we, we have, we do that in rounds Mm -hmm. instead of an overall, you know, you got, it comes down to that first round. Like you said, what we were talking about, not too much happened in the first round, but he did have his back with the figure four for, I think, 35, 40 seconds of that. And then he owned it the whole second round, even though Jordan. And I think that's what really gets people kind of miffed is they're like, 
Did you see that? He, oh, he had this many punches. Yeah, but he only did it in the third round, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. You know? If it was one big open score until the end, who does the most damage? And the judges, you know? the judges don't ever see those stats. And the, and again, they're 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 trained to look at damaging shots, whereas the statisticians are counting everything at distance. You know, so and here we but go. we did have somebody go 10-8. So they obviously gave Jordan the respect of that third round. But again, we already knew second was a lock for uh Burgos, and it would come down to that first, you know. And that's why I think, but it sucks because people always ask, dude, that was a robbery. That was a robbery. Burgos didn't win, but he did win because he won yeah. first, the second round easily. And the first round was if, you know, but we see that third and we're like, no way did he win that. Unfortunately, that's like I said, I, we could definitely do a big judging scrub on uh, the scoring <laughs> scrub of MMA at some point, just how yeah. we score everything, you know, would be different for sure. Matt Schnell earns his third triangle choke submission in the UFC, second most in UFC history, right behind Paul Craig. So second wow. place. Wow. Yeah. With three. Yeah. I'm t- they're um, so rare. Yeah. Anymore. Comes like I'm going out there and winning three right now. <laughs> Go get that thing. Yeah. Add Absolutely. that onto the list. You know what I mean? You, do you have two? Incredible career. So I have zero. Oh. I know. Go grab three. I'll <laughs> yeah. say, Go yeah. get three Just real quick. Get I, have a, I have all a scissor the time, leg so. choke. I have a scissor leg. Do you really? Submission. Yeah. Okay, that's badass. Because no one, <laughs> I feel like you and Kira Cor, Akira Kornasani are the only ones I can think of that yeah. have that finish. Yeah, I didn't do it in the UFC after I fought Jens. I ah. asked, I asked the uh, WC if I could take a fight outside, and I a lot of people don't know that. And I fought some dude in in um, uh, in in the Midwest in Niles, Ohio. And I hit this guy. I had him in a guillotine because I broke my hand. So I had a guillotine. I had a Dars, a rear naked choke, uh, anaconda, uh, <laughs> uh, like <laughs> times. And the guy just took it and didn't make a sound, didn't do anything. And then uh. at the very end of the fight, I caught him in a scissor leg choke and he just reaches up and just taps. <laughs> and I was like, I like you you're things. like, that? Oh, that's yeah. what got you? Yeah, I, I was so angry about it. I'm like, dude. No, that's actually really cool. Of yeah. all the things, and that's going to be the one. Now, there has never, there's never been one in the UFC because, and I remember researching that because one of the guys on Road to UFC has like three of them outside oh, wow. of the UFC, and I was like, okay, this kid's for sure going to try it in this fight, and I think he did try it once, but it didn't, it didn't work. Everyone that knows that grapples me knows I can hit it from from all different positions, and it's, really? it's one of the moves. And I always laugh when people rolled me for the first time because it's not a move that a lot of people do, and so no. it's like. I always kind of laugh. It's like, yeah, you probably haven't seen that one before. We got to get you go out there and get three. Just go get three triangles and you got it. Yeah. I mean, if you get four, your next four fights all by triangle, dang it, Cuff, you got it. Okay. You know, be like, New I, game plan. away with it. New right? game plan. <laughs> like, I'm going after this because it seems like nobody's going to get it. Speaking of game plan, so with this Lee Jing Leong, I can't say his name, but Solikov, Solikov, his man, that kid's got power. Power, mm. this fight's gonna be insane. That was one thing we were breaking down and watching this fight. Um, I don't remember who Muslim fought, but man, he's got power in those hands. You don't really see it, you can't really tell. But the way that and he stone cold him when he landed that shot in that last fight. It's impressive. Well, I I picked him in my DraftKings lineup. Oh, did you? I was expecting him to get a big finish, so uh, that'll help me out, help me try to win some money. Look at the size of who's walking next to him. Good Lord. Oh, wow. Look at the size of that guy. Dang. <laughs> One of five Russian UFC welterweights, but he's from Dagestan. So you're thinking, all right, wrestler. Got to have wrestling. Evidently, he has no wrestling. None at all. <laughs> he just got power in his hands, and he likes to knock people out. That's, that's, it. that's his thing. You know, it, yes. Isn't he that? That's it. What What is he? He's like the Kung Fu... Something is his, what's his name? Kung Fu King or Kung Fu, Kung Fu yeah. King or something like that. Something yeah, like I that. almost said panda. That's funny. I don't mean to do that, but you know, Kung Fu Panda, that the, almost the is. The panda is the one in the back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you see that, that you look at the size of him. That's a big dude. <laughs> look at him. Holy That's cow. That's a big dude. Monster. Especially saying this, he's got second longest active win streak, UFC welterweight division with five, third highest significant strike defense, UFC welterweight history with 68.3. And he's finished 14 of 18 wins with 12 knockouts. 
I think with, with uh, Lee Jing Liang, this is all the, they're both going to go out there and swing for the fences. Yeah. It's going to happen. I can't believe how big that kid is in the back. He looks like the younger brother, the monster. I don't know, Chad, if y'all can't see it, but he, wow, that he's big. <laughs> I can't get enough of it, but all oh, these fights, I'm telling you. Who is this guy beat? I look it up really quick. I need to get my phone out. Yeah. Francisco gotta... Trinaldo. Masaranduba. Oh, yeah. I remember when he beat Nordin Taleb. So, oh, by the way, everybody out there, if you're enjoying the content here on twitch.tv slash UFC, make sure you hit that follow button. Follow button. We're going up to 200,000. Well, um, we're on here every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern. And Saturday with the watch long, but sometimes it's early. Sometimes it's late. You never know, but we're always here. So yeah, always here. You know what I'm saying? But check out um, Saturday, breaking down fights, checking out uh, the best of UFC fight night and then fight pass, bringing you the best fight content on Twitch. Yes. Um, we're almost at 200,000 followers. Help us hit the goal. Also subscribing is never, never mandatory to watch the um, content here, but all subscriptions go to support the American Cancer Society. Frankie Five Fingers gifting those five subs. Much love and appreciation. All subs go to support the American Cancer Society. That's cool. So if you're having a good time and have the Twitch Prime subscription sitting around, consider subbing and putting it to a good cause. By the way, Li Jing Liang tied fourth most knockouts in UFC welterweight history. Seven first round finishes, nine wins by knockout, four by submission. So this should end quickly. Maybe. Huh? <laughs> I think it will. Yeah, these guys can crack. And both of them, both of them get right to work, too. There's not like, there's not a lot of, hey, let's feel each other out and dance around. Speaking of your little uh, plug right here, which was amazing, Jez. <laughs> uh, I, I, I saw the video of you breaking down my fight with Duo Choi, the, the one from that made the Hall of Fame. And uh, seeing your reaction to that fight, I, I, I made my day. I was like done training and I was like, what is this? And I saw it. I was like, oh, it was, it was some compliments. It's my from you favorite I, thing on the planet. That's Carl. so cool. It, it was pretty cool to see. I was like, I didn't expect it. And oh, I, yeah. I was just watching your reaction to the fight was pretty cool. I, I enjoyed it. Well, like, if I let me tell you right now, dude, I am, I'm a fan. I'm a big, big fan of everything that you have done. Your career has been incredible. And well, thank watching you. that fight, that. I don't know. And it's like, that's why I love sitting and rapping with you. It's like, yeah, man, this is, this is so cool. I, I mean, I appreciate every second, but you know, no, no BS Cub. Your career has been nothing short of amazing. That fight again, congratulations. But I can't, I just can't believe your grit, your grind, just the ability to, that, you know, I laughed when you tried to do the somersault. You yeah, did the yeah. somersault stuff, and I was like, and then you followed right into that combination, and you're just always going for the kill shots. I mean, you're hands down one of my favorite fighters on the planet. It's just a blast to watch, and that's well, the one you. thing that I get to do now is I'm in a situation where I get to watch fights and react and just kind of I get to be me, and yeah, that fight was incredible, my friend. It was well, incredible. that means a lot coming I from you. I still laugh, yeah. You're, so, you're, yeah. you're a legend. Remember that. Well, yeah. That's just a good way of saying old, but I appreciate it. <laughs> no, you're gonna you're gonna end up in that Hall of Fame too, Jens. I have no doubt. I have oh, no we'll doubt. See one day, one day. You we can't be that much talk? older than me. Oh, I'm, I am. I'm up there, pot. Now I'm up there, I'm 47. Okay. Just yeah. You know okay. What I, mean? I okay. just look. I look. You look young. Yeah. Right. You do. It's, I didn't realize you were smiles. 47. I thought yes. you'd be like 42. Uh, there you go. Yeah, smiles on my face. You know what I mean? Just enjoy myself. 100. <laughs> percent But no, that was really cool. Yeah. Because and it's also one of the fights. So when we're always on Mondays, we do like best knockouts based on the theme of what happened on Saturday. So yeah. 6 p.m. we're watching fights, and your fight is one of the ones that again, boom, we're constantly watching. So I'm I'm having a blast, and people are always clipping it and stuff. So yeah, well, my reactions cool. it never gets boring. All right, here we go. First <laughs> round, I got to be fight. All right, this fight. If this goes past the round, yeah, I think first round. I'm calling it too. Here we go. But they get, see, now I like that with the way that Muslim, I'm going to go with this first name. I don't even mess with that second one. And, uh, but the patience, I like how Jing Liang is moving around. And, but with the hand power, 
I just don't think everybody, you know, again, with that fate. Nice spinning, spin kick. Right off the bat, he spins to win. But I'm saying, like, do you see how, again, when they're kind of just sitting in that feeling out process, right? Like you were saying, looking to try to get those things to make them flinch. But, like, uh, throw a big overhand or something to give them to look at, right? That's what we were yeah. talking about earlier. I Let that first one go so now they think about it. Oh, trying to get that big right hand. He moves out of the way. Yeah, anybody going to try to say that last name? Jing Leong? Salikov? Jing Leong. Salikov. Salikov? Salikov. Yeah, Muslim is a Muslim. Muslim, And then, like I said, Salik. I call him Salik. He might get mad. Salikov, I guess. I mean, got a nickname, Cub. Got a nickname. Oh, he can spin these kicks off quick. He's Yeah, for their size, he spins quite fast. That's got to be terrifying. You he know, doesn't really telegraph it either. He's not like doing the blade, 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 then throw it. Like he's just throwing it. Looks good. Yeah. In his stance, and you see the way that that Lee is just again trying to move forward, trying to establish that jab. Hits him with the calf kick. Now he cut. Kind of, you see how he double bounced a little bit? Was that just getting him on his feet, or did that one actually hurt Muslim with the uh, that calf kick? Oh, he goes he's, in, and gets a oh. single, nice takedown. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say he's been targeting that calf a little bit. It's like the third or fourth, so I'm interested to see if that's something he does throughout the, the rest of the fight, but he's on his back now. Right as he throws the inside leg kick and, and Muslim catches it, picks him up, takes him down. But I like that. I like that. Oh, no, now he closed his guard. I thought when he opened the card up, now he goes, he's going to just control the situation and just kind of keep the head down. Maybe he's looking for a stand-up at this point. I love them. Pe- people are using the calf kick a lot early in fights because it, it does a number of things. If the guy's a wrestler, he's not going to be able to shoot off that lead leg mm-hmm. as well. If he's a striker, Funny. he's going to pull his lead leg in a l- little bit and change his stance. He's not going to have as much mm-hmm. power in his shots. So it's really effective in, in taking the strengths away from your opponent. Boxers need it for that hard jab. Like there, it, it, like you say, yeah. Cub, it just affects so many different things. And with that, the way that it is, I was going to ask that question, you know, like, do you train a, a staggered stance, switching the stance? Because sometimes when you get stuck in a bad spot, it's like now all of a sudden, if I'm a lefty, I got to fight righty. And it's just too awkward. You see the fighter, they're just so lost. They're like, oh, man, I don't know what to do at all. So I think, you know, having that conversation, do you train both stances? Or just something I've got a tax on this side. I've got a tax on this side. Or it's like, ah, I'm just not, I'm going to just check it and never go through it. You know? Yeah, you definitely got to uh, be able to switch stances now because it just makes you more dangerous all the way around. I mean, mm-hmm. if one leg gets hit, then you can switch stance and just start moving, the, do the things that you like on that stance until you can recover and go back to the side you like. But yeah, that's that's part of the evolution of the sport and and being dangerous all the time. Yeah, yeah. I the difference the difference is now it's like like of course of course we teach you know switching stances like that's you, when you come into the sport now you're you're learning MMA as a whole. Whereas like not that I had some long career, which I clearly didn't, but like back when I was training to actually fight, that was not really a, I was a right handed fighter and that yep. was it. You know, right? It <laughs> took away it took away me being a wrestler because I was left leg forward. And when, when they found me, they boxing. Like, wait, you're a southpaw. Like, yeah. Oh, there goes your left leg. Now all of a sudden, my wrestling stance is compromised. You know, it's mm-hmm. like, well, now I'm a boxer and learn how to shift it up. And you know, but yeah, we we're so. Don't you dare get out of that stance. You're a southpaw. But nowadays, it's kind of you've got a tax on this angle, tax on this angle. As we're watching these two try to figure out the same kind of game and the way that Muslim can spin these kicks off. But you know, the reason why I was asking because. It seemed like that was kind of getting away from it, but Lee was throwing that calf kick in the beginning. So what do you guys, how do you guys pick somebody's stance? If you're training somebody new, what's the most important thing? Because obviously a wrestler is going to say whatever side you could shoot from and any striker is going to say power hand in the back. What do you guys think is more important? What I tell the wrestlers to keep their wrestling stance. And because yeah. you could, and the reason why is you can throw big power shots. I don't want you to be a crisp boxer, anyways. Worst case scenario, I want you to slug because you want I want a body lock and I want a takedown. You know, what I mean that's that's ultimately the goal, right? I don't want you to get 
hooked on the idea of switching your stance and becoming a knockout artist. I felt guilty for that. But at the time, you know, that was something that people would boo when we shot takedowns. They would yeah. get pissed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Back in the old days. So they wanted everybody just to shoot the lights out. But that's what I tell the, the wrestlers now is keep your wrestling stance and let's just throw big, you know, throw lead hooks and just throw overhand blasts because you just want that momentum. You know, I made yeah. long story longer. Sorry, Lord. Go ahead. No, no. I was just going to say it's interesting because then when you got when you have that martial arts, which essentially wrestling is a martial art, when you have that martial arts base, you have something to, to, to build off. But when you've got guys like, you know, out of our gym, Jeff Molina, who came into MMA as MMA, he can shoot from both sides just as good. And he can he can like it's like he doesn't have a stance. You know what I mean? Like yeah. he doesn't have a preferred side and he floats back and forth constantly. Cause that's how he finds his angles, both to grapple and to strike. Well, I and wonder it's just if this, like that evolution, you know, I wonder awesome. if this sport will, will help change wrestling guys that, Hey, say, Hey, maybe after this, I want to get into MMA. So I'm yeah. going to learn to have a neutral stance so I can, mm -hmm. I can learn to shoot from both sides and I'm not dominant. Maybe this sport is going to influence that. Maybe it makes, it makes a lot of sense. Like you said, cause it, until you just said that Lord, I mean, it makes so much sense. Literally. Like we're MMA, we flow on both sides and that's it because it just reminds me, I think the only thing that saved me going into the fight world was I was a wrestler. So mm -hmm. I, I was used to that one-on-one -on -one as, as you know, I mean, same thing as Muslim catches that kick and takes him down and lets him get right back to his feet. But I was a wrestler, you know what I mean? And that's, and so it helped me with that one-on-one -on -one side of it. But as far as just being able to flow, yeah, that literally is the biggest thing. Yeah, both of you, that's great points. Gosh, he likes to spin that kick. <laughs> It's so close too. I can yeah, talk I, a lot. The, I can carry on four conversations. The reason I brought it up is I, because I'm, you know, I'm always a student of the game and I was working with Raymond Daniels and you guys know him. Oh, he's, yep. a, he's a karate guy. And I asked him one day, I was like, how do you choose? Cause the, he switches stance. I was like, mm -hmm. how do you decide which stance somebody should be? And he said, whatever is their dominant eye. I want that I, in front. And I was yeah. like, huh, oh, I never heard that before. So he wants your dominant eye in the front. So it gives you the best reaction time. I was like, oh. I've oh, never heard anyone say that. Oh, I like that. Oh, yeah. No, the boxer, they find out that you're going, you fighting right hand and you a lefty. They're going to go, they're going to go ham on you. Um, it, it's crazy. The old school coaches. But yeah. yeah. Well, Oscar I, De La Hoya is a, 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 he's a lefty and he fought orthodox. So he wanted, he had mm -hmm. his power hand in the front. Yep. That power he did hand okay. in the front. Yeah. No, he had he an didn't okay career, huh? That's what I'm saying. I love it. And that's again, Find your, again, that was the biggest thing, right? Just find your niche, find your groove. But it just depends, you know, when you're first getting started, those coaches. But I think you're you're right. Nowadays, the coaches are just open. Yeah, I know. Let's just kind of get you moving and flowing and see what you like. In this situation, I think, you I, might stand like, like this. I think Jeff, and I keep bringing coming up, like Jeff started training MMA when he was like 10, you know? Yeah. And now he's in the UFC. Like, that's that generation that's now yeah. coming into, into the UFC and – it's, it's crazy. Cause you do, you like, you go take MMA lessons now as yeah. a kid, which wasn't a thing for you yeah. guys, you know, not even close. Not I had never close. heard of the sport until I was 19 years old. I didn't know it existed until I was 19. So my kids, my kids watch it every weekend. So there's a big difference. Yep. A hundred percent. Nice takedown by, by Lee Jing Leong to get the control. And now it's all my son. He's going to jump into wrestling now. So we'll have that going and you know, I got how old, how is your son, Jens? 13, 13. Oh, I love it. Oh, yeah. It's we'll tell we'll talk about that story at that time. But <laughs> this has been a whole growing stage for me for the YouTube. This has been this has been tough. This is it's something. <laughs> All right. He's gonna be that dad. I can already tell. Uh, I know. I'm a, no, no, I'm a quiet dad. That's the okay, whole thing. Good. I'm like, I don't want to take away from this fight, but there's not a whole lot going on. So we're kind of just picking and shooting the tracks. But I'm actually really quiet. And I don't want to. One of the reasons why I never coached him is because I don't want to be that dad, the yelling, intense. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be that. I never ever wanted to be that. Like I said, I grew up abused. So I never wanted to be that to my, my kids. I want them just to have fun, do what they do. And so when he decided he wanted to be a wrestler, I kind of passed it. I'm like, all right, but he did it in junior high. And I started watching. And then now I'm learning how to just kind of, I'm like, all right, well, we got this. All right, let's do work on this. And so now we're, I'm inching my way into being a coach. Cause you know, you get a little intense and I don't want that as, I don't want that daddy being an asshole, you know? So yeah. I'm avoiding that. And I did everything I could to avoid it, but we're having fun now. We're getting to that age that That's it's awesome. pretty cool. Oh, it's, cool. it's something. 
Well, and you don't want him to feel that pressure too, that he's got to live up to, you know, you're you know, feeling yeah, your shoes even know what somehow. it is. I think, well, we just did international fight week and this is the first time, like I took that picture. He's not him. aware of how he's, he's not aware of what like a legend this, you are. I, was, I, no, I would never call myself that, but he, and he oh, has a on. belt and, and I have the belt and I just won the title and he's underneath and I took a picture of it. Oh. Yeah. I cried like a baby, oh. cried like a baby. but it all happened. Here. Oh. Oh. oh, big head. <laughs> G Leon, Maybe you got him hurt? Possible upset here. <laughs> All right. Oof. Leach is going to try to land that right hand. Sorry, we got into story time. My bad, chat. <laughs> All right, we got the right hand. Going to go to the side to see if Muslim. Oh! oh, throw the right hand. Muslim's going to try to shoot in. Oh, we're a wrestler now. <laughs> nice sprawl, nice sprawl. Good left hand. Oh, oh, oh that's over. right hand dropped it, him, swung it, him it, off the it. fence, dropped him. He's down. Yeah. He's in the field. Oh, waiting for One it elbow to stop. Away yeah. from the Dunzo. Wow. Good I'm pretty sure him. he was a pretty big underdog, right? He looks lean to the me, man. He, he looks just lean, like that leaner right than hand normal. Bounced him off the fence. Look at him. I like that, him. He's been I fighting like in the UFC for a minute now, and I long I, time. I, he was a little that, bit boring in the beginning, but he's gotten pretty explosive. Unreal. The leech. The leech. Oh, he's going to get teary eyed. Don't do it. <laughs> what a shot, though. What a shot. Oh. I, look at this. Ryan slipped off to the side of that jab and just, I mean, just textbook. Wow. Come, just textbook. Slipped off, loaded. Look, at, he slips off the side, man. Boom. Then he just throws that, that lead hook right there to give him something to look at. Fires that right hand. Boom. Tipped off to the right, loaded the right hand on the process. And man, that feeling, that feeling when you slip a punch and you come back and wreck them, that's like, <laughs> that's like, ooh, it feels good. <laughs> it feels good when you pull that off because it, oh, it's not the easy. Timing. Right there. Look at that. Just melted him. He's got a lot of power in the hand. I'm surprised he went toe-to-toe -to -toe because that was the one thing I noticed about the king of kung fu was the power in his hands in the fights previously to him. Maybe, that, again, why the underdog aspect of it. But, yeah, I just noticed that. Man, they said in chat, the underdogs have been killing it today. They've oh. been killing okay. it. Okay. Here we go. We got a stat, guys. Uh oh stats. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Li Jing Liang is now tied for the second most welterweight knockouts in UFC history behind Matt Brown. So he's tied with Tiago Alves and Vicente Luque at eight. Matt Brown had 12. So they got some catching up to do, but yeah, he is uh, say, Matt Brown's he's closing in. Dang. All right. Look at him. I don't even want to know what he just did right there, but I'm going to let that. What is he sniffing? Uh, what is that? So he's going around and he's grabbing corners and he's touching the canvas. And then he's something. Oh, and then he nice just tossed toss. his coach and gave him a right hand to the head. He's going to, Oh, he's Salt tossed everybody. <laughs> nice. Over-unders for all. Over-unders for all. It's like, I want some staff on my face, and now here are all my training partners. Here, <laughs> get some staff, too. Oh, man, Jesus, said, I want some staff on my face. <laughs> I'm reach out and grab me some of that staff of the caucus and just, it's in there. I got it. I love it. <laughs> my contact fell off this morning at practice, uh -uh. and I went to I went to go put it like pick it up off the mat and put it back in because I wanted to continue. And Jason High was like, no, stop. Don't you dare. Don't stop. you dare. I've done it before. But then he told me the story of like, he knew someone that uh, in wrestling that like passed away yeah, from go getting an infection. I was like, all right, well, never again. Really? Terrible. Yeah, no, yes. I, okay. Don't get an infection Shut in the eye because yeah, I guess it does mainstreams right to, right to, right to the far to travel. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. I get it. I get look at the, the look at the crowd the chat's like OMG ooh <laughs> look at, they're all holding hands I've never seen that before cool. him and his corner man are all holding hands for the yeah he's like we're all in it together I like I that like cool it. oh yeah. I like that. Uh, oh okay awesome. okay very cool very cool now we get into the co-main event of the evening and that. That is, I don't know, Amanda Lemos is, she's power. She's powerful. She is. She she hits hard for a 115-pound woman. Like, yeah. that is a physical, physical specimen of a straw weight. But Michelle Watterson, man, she's been, she's been putting in the work. I know you know Michelle really well, Cub. You can yeah. probably speak to her game even better 
she she's just uh like a sweetheart of a person like she's just she is always in the gym she's always smiling uh i've watched her her career for a long time and uh was able to train alongside her for a long time at Jackson's, but yeah, she's just an awesome person. So I'm always, I'm always cheering for her to win. So I'm, I'm, I'm cheering for her today. Yeah. This will be a tough fight. Cause that's one thing with Lemos is she's got really good boxing hands and it kind of plays mm-hmm. almost the opposite of the karate hottie, right. With, with, with the, the kicks the and kicks. once they get to the ground, of course, but this will be kicks with one. And she's not really the hands will be the, you know what I mean? Lemos with those hands, as opposed to, yeah, she's got man, she's got a lot of power in her hand. Lemos is pretty tall too for the weight division, if I remember right. Or am I making that up? Nope. Uh, I'm gonna check myself uh, real quick. Right here. Five four. <laughs> That's I mean, it's sort of tall for I mean she's taller than fifteen and, and yeah. She is I don't know, Michelle's oh five three. Yeah, I get, man, not I that know, much of a reason. difference. Not that much. Of I a thought difference. it would have been a lot bigger when you look at in the fights, I thought it was a lot bigger. To be and honest, it's showing, it's showing on here that uh, Michelle's got her name hyphenated now. I didn't know that. Oh, does she? Oh, Otterson yeah, you're right. Gomez, yeah. Which is pretty cool. Oh, that is she's cool. She's been married for a little bit. Because her husband was a um, a pro boxer. And I think uh-huh. I think he was like 10 and one or something. And he retired and, and kind of took the the work life so she could pursue her career, uh, which is pretty cool. They're, they're that a, is like, cool. You know, he holds pads for her and they got a, a team dynamic. It's pretty cool. So that is the Gomez side of it. I was curious where, how it just showed up all of a sudden. She may have yeah, just, the first just time decided to it. do it because they've been married for a long time. Yeah, okay. yeah. Oh, that's really cool. I was wondering, I seen the Gomez. It's like, well, why? Yeah, because we're, again, watching fights of fighters fighting on Friday. <laughs> I, I love like, that name. I love that name I, so it, much. It gets, it gets, <laughs> Every it gets, time it gets, you say it. I know that's every time I got to get ready watching fights of fighters fighting fighters. in Saturday's <laughs> fights is what it is. That's how I prove. I still have my wits about me is I got it. Do you name that? that? Was that, was that your yeah. brainchild? I it believe sounds so. like it. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, he said it's, <laughs> yeah no, it was. Like, let's um, just name it. This. We're just going to go with watching well, fights. What, what, fighters what fighting do we do? Well, when you're describing fights. what you do, right? Let's go. Well, on Fridays, we watch fights of fighters fighting. And then AK Snoo added in in Saturday's fights. So I threw in the yeah. So we watch fights of fighters fighting in Saturday's <laughs> fights. And Monday we recap, you know, like I said, we recap Wednesday. We call it WEC Wednesday. And then people can use their channel points to kind of pick the fights that they want to do. So we've been watching chat. What is the fight? What do we call Wednesday now? It's um oh for crying out loud. Who was it with um Don Fry and is it Yamamoto? Is that the name? Oh, you just, know, where uh, they just grab each other by the back of the, the head. The pride start, fight, yeah. Yeah, the pride <laughs> fight. Everybody, every Wednesday, that's the fight that we watch. So now we're just like, all right, that's it. That's whatever that fight is. That's the one that we're going to watch. It's it's guaranteed <laughs> every time. Someone's always that's throwing hilarious. their points out for that. Takiyama. There it is. Oh, so Takiyama, that's right. Don Fry and Takiyama, and they just... Right, and they grab, and they just start throwing. Boom. <laughs> Do you try oh, to? Do you try to like, like commentate that? that? <laughs> no, I give up. I just watch it. <laughs> well, that's the one thing we're doing for the most part on those days. I just kind of sit back and watch the fights, and I'll yeah. laugh, and I'm like, "Ooh, hold on!" And again, that's kind of where we got clipped with with Cub, and we're watching that fight. I'm like, "I got to go back." I'm like, "Ah, you guys got to see this," and I just start watching how. The, the spin starts to take off and then he jumps in and I just laugh. I'm just like, I can't believe how he's landed. You know what I mean? So that's what I get to do. Just kind of sit back and replay. And so I drive people nuts with the pause. The pause is what drives everybody. Some people just play the F and fight. I'm like, Hey, Hey, you can go to fight pass and get this thing for nine 99 a month. Yeah, you can watch here it upside me. down backwards. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can upside down backwards, surround sound, however you want to do it. But we're in here. Boop. We're pausing. Cause I'm talking to everybody. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> but it's really cool. Oh man, this has been fun. I can't, man. Oh, I love this. I know, we, only got, we only got two fights left and it's not even I like, I haven't, I haven't even eaten yet today. Yeah, no, I'm like same thing. I had my coffee what? and I haven't moved since. I haven't gotten. Oh, up. I guess you guys are West Coast, so I'm a little later than you. Oh no, I'm yeah. well, I'm Iowa, so I'm. But it was still late. Oh. Enough. I still slept in. I was doing a lot of sleeping. <laughs> oh, so, you're not far. What? What are you in? What part of Iowa are you in? I'm in the Quad Cities. In... Never left. Gotcha. Never left. The Never quad left. Cities. I for some reason I thought you 
left Iowa and went West. I, I don't know where I was with that. No, but there for a moment I was going to, I was going to go back to Idaho for a little bit and just, mm -mm. Oh, I just that's West Iowa. Yeah. Uh, that's West. Yeah. I never well, yeah, went back live to in, Seattle. So live in the Midwest. Everything's living, West, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I rolled Westward cup. I went Westward and I was like, Nope. And I circled on back. I, I just, I'm never leaving. I love it here. Jen, so, this is a total, total off topic question, but do you go to the state fair? Cause I can, the highlight no. of my summer is going to the Iowa state fair. I freaking 100%. love that thing. 100%. They burn, they, they deep fry everything. Everything. It's amazing. Snickers, it, and everything. I live in Kansas city, but it blows the Missouri state fair and the Kansas state fair out. of <laughs> Yeah. I love, I was, it, it's a mandatory go-to for just the horses, the, um, the Clydesdales, the Shires, and everything like that. And then everything. The, the pigs, the big old pigs and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> God, they be breaking those things out. I call them, go up and check out Bacon, see how he's doing. But yeah. And they deep yep. fry everything. So yeah, I love it. Everything. Yeah, I love it. I love it. All right. Now I'm hungry. Right, Cub? I'm telling <laughs> Just you. hit me now. Now I'm hungry. You got two. You got two. Yeah. They deep fry butter. You know uh, what yes. I'm saying? I had what? some last year. I had a slab of pork belly on a stick that was covered in sugar. Yep. And then whatever grilled, whatever they did to it was like bacon candy. Oh my Magic. God. It was okay. good. So do, now they have that. You always ever have those maple bars with bacon bits all over them. Yep. That's my yeah. donut. Yeah. I mm. love those. Mm. Yeah. I that's my on go -to. Is it? Yeah. No, maple bar called... and with bacon on it. Psh, even better. No, yeah. Look at them. <laughs> uh, man. I'm Hurts about to, donut. About to it's order our some food donut. right now. Look at it. Look at it. <laughs> Get delivery. I was like, what is wrong with you? It's Hertz Donut. So every now and then, but for the most part, I'm just, I don't do it, but it's all Thai food as much as possible. But yeah, the state fair is fun. A lot of fun. So Lemos has made her way out. Oh, all right. All right. With one put, man, she does have power in her hands. Ridiculous. Big, big power. I'm looking at chat. The, what? What? Pork belly covered in sugar? Yeah, that's mandatory. Right? So good. Yeah, I got to try it. I haven't tried that one. Oh, my gosh. <sighs> Come, brown, the dining it's just dish like of choice. The brown sugar. Mine? Are you all, uh, yeah. Are you, are you healthy all the time? Uh, No, no. But, I mean, right now I am. Of course. But. But. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I got, I, I like. Uh, Mexican food is my go-to. Um, But I could live on cookies. I think after a fight, I could live on cookies for like a week. Really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I got a terrible sweet tooth. The pho, the 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 pho is my number one. I could do pho? that on a day. So yeah. good. Oh, yeah. All day. We do it's a three or four day ordeal when we when we get it started here at the house. We go off. What the, is that? The good thing about pho oh, is there like it is the part that's the <laughs> oh man. <laughs> that's the sugar covered bacon right there. It's yeah, literal bacon. My... I love it. Oh yeah, my son and I just absolutely going ham oh, on I like some it. bacon. I like it. That's very cool. <laughs> the pho you can get like almost so anywhere I've gone, it's consistently good. Mm -hmm. That's what's good about about pho. Um, like Mexican food, if you live in California or Texas or somewhere southern, and then you travel, it's not you're not going to get the same quality. You know what I mean? hundred percent. But Vietnamese food is pretty, mm -hmm. pretty consistently Consistent. good everywhere yeah. you go. Yeah. The Thai I always wanted to open up like a pho shop called What the Pho. Uh, I just feel like someone needs that. They have. Do you have one? They have they one. Have one. They, they have do. One what in the Vegas. Yeah. They oh got, really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they got all kinds of crazy ones like that. They they're hip to it. <laughs> no. No. What the Pho? Oh, <laughs> there we go. There we go. Josh, she's making her way in. We're about to have this. About to have this fight. Yeah, bad fun is very hard to. Yeah, but that's why. See, I get it at home, so I'm lucky. It's just we get we just yeah fun days. You are, make it. Yeah. You make it at home. Yeah, my wife. Yeah, she she can teach. Man. She can show me a little bit, but Ooh. she gets ham, man. She man, it's it. not an easy thing to make from mm -hmm. from what I've seen. No, fun it's days are incredible. The broth. It just mm -hmm. alone, it takes mm -hmm. so much to make it. And then at the end, they just kind of put the noodles and the, and the, and the You're meat. You're making me hungry. Off to the That's side. Cilantro. Yeah, you go off to the side. <laughs> and you do the noodles. I know this. All right. That's why I don't like these early fights. I'm starving. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I love it. I love it. But yeah, no, it's it's a lot of fun. And then the same thing with the with the lop and the sticky rice and everything like that. It's just mm. fun to think, man. I like it. I like it. That's one thing, though, when it comes to the short, the street tacos, I do because I we will smoke a pork butt and stuff. So we'll have pulled pork and make the tacos with that with smoked pork and stuff. Mm. <clears throat> Gotta love it. Gotta love it. All right, we'll quit talking. Man, right. I love rapping with you too. Dang it. All right, we have a fight to break down too. So okay, so Lemos does have a little bit of a reach. She's she's yeah. only an inch taller, but she's got three inches of reach, which isn't a ton, but it's something. It is when you're using hands. And it just depends again how we move the with the legs and the kicks. And, and she fights, she has a nice long jab too. Like yep. she really uses that reach. She's a, she is patient. Yeah, well, Go. three inches is more is like a whole fist, you know. So mm-hmm. if you're both throwing at the same time, that's that's a lot of uh it's a lot of reach. And if you're utilizing a stepping back and just keep them at the end of it, really snapping, that's still three inches. She'd have to, again with the leg kicks though, with the leg reach, yeah, she'd be able to reach it, but right. And then we'll see, like, right when we expect to see a stand-up, stand-up banging, it'll be a wrestling match or something, too, you know? So, who knows? Well, we'll the dangerous thing about Michelle, she's going to throw a lot of crazy kicks. She and does, if she right? falls into a weird position, right? Like, say they clash into a weird position because of, a like, an axe kick or something, she's really quick to throw on a submission. So, that's where mm-hmm. she's going to be the most dangerous. And then I remember right watching there. her back in Invicta when she was a when she was an atom weight back then. And she was like my my hero because she was the the champion of Invicta. And like she's got we don't talk about her ground game enough. I think yeah. she's she's got a really good submission game. I, yeah, her and Rose were my mm-hmm. two favorites to watch in Invicta back then. I'd be I'd yep. be like, man, these girls make it to the UFC. They're going to be doing big things. Yep. And I think, yeah, like you said, though, we definitely forget about her, about her ground game as much as because of the high, you know, the kicks and the striking prowess of both of them. But the power in the hands of Amanda Lemos will be, I'll be curious. I'm really curious about this. I always say the first 30 seconds, the first 30 seconds, you know, yeah, but again, you got to dictate, at, right? Michelle's up on her wheels doing what she's up on her, you know, moving around, moving around. And Amanda's Lemos, so interesting because she- Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Jen. No, please. I was go ahead. She doesn't. She doesn't have a lot of extraneous movement. Like she's really, really conservative with how she moves. She stays super planted. Throws a lot of those hip feints. She likes that front kick and those and those teeps. But she's not like one to bounce all over the place. Whereas Michelle is is moving a lot. And yeah, well, Glimos, other than the fact she just switched stance, which threw me off, but if you watch her, she kind of sits back and she loads on that. Yep. See, watch how she loads on that jab hand on that side. Mm-hmm. And she's kind of leans over. And so all that weight is on there. But now I noticed that she's switching stances and it must she be did. based she hasn't on done the that as much. Yeah, I've she hasn't done that as much any- before. And it's that maybe because, again, the way that Michelle's going to go out there and attack that lead leg. And yeah, you some see people how, are more ahead. more uh, likely to be bouncing around because they tend to be rhythm fighters. You mm-hmm. know, they they need they need to find a rhythm so they can perform. And and some people like to just stand there and plant their feet and just react. Uh, I think the way to to beat that is a lot of fakes. Get them to bite early. Get them mm-hmm. off their game. And I notice that every now and then Lemos will sell that right, you know, sell that right leg. She'll kind of turn that hip a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then there's that jab. See, but then look at then look how fast Michelle came it's right fast. back with the jab of her own. Jeez. Very yeah. cool. Very quick. Both of them. Oh, big right leg power kick by Lemos. Look at it. I love this right here when this whole feeling out process, the range <laughs> game, watching these two just try to look for that opening. This is really cool. The, again, Lemos has switched the stance so many times. I'm curious what she's looking for when she switches the either side. You know what I mean? Mm. But I like See, that. And but, I learned that from a, being at a boxing gym, and you probably learned this too, Jens, but in the first the first round is about dictating and saying, uh, set, you know, initiating the traps you're going to set, but it's like, who's going to lead the dance? Yes, sir. And a lot of times it's like, Whoever can enforce their game plan first is going to win. So the first round is very important. And that's what I like, that whole feeling out process. I would tell everybody the first minute, the first 30 seconds, if you go Oof. out there, how are you going to dictate? She slipped in with that right hand. Come back, that hook, that's it. Like, you got to go out there and dictate right off the bat the movement, how we're going to circle. And mm-hmm. like you said, throw a couple of big shots so they start flinching. But you got to set all these things up so they can fall for it. See and as that a right fighter, hand. 
that's when my when my nerves calm down you know it's like you're comfortable in the fight after the first minute yep and then you get that oh oh okay she just popped that combination. See how hard she loaded that hook on the comeback right there. Wow, Lemos, I'm telling you, she's not slowing down with these punches. Good thing um, Michelle was able to get out of the way, but she brought that hook from the hip pocket. But I think she's kind of found what she's looking oh. for. What did she just... Michelle brings up the high kick. That was impressive. I was way up there. She kicked like way over the head. Her hip dexterity is ridiculous. Did you see I mean, how and high she's over so she fast with right it there? too. And I like they that. They both look kick. very fast. Yes. Like faster than normal. So they're both fired up for this fight. You could tell. Calf kick by Lemos right there. And the, mm -hmm. yeah, I like that. Michelle does a great job instead of the jab. She's got that little side kick that kicks away. And it's almost more effective than the jab. And it's the one thing that kind of slowed Lemos down right there. Definitely defense oriented right now. Michelle's blocking everything, trying to throw that one, two. But even though, yeah, I was going to say, because DC just said, there she goes in on a double right there. Lemos nice. got carried away. Nice. Thought we were going to throw punches. Michelle gets the takedown, gets in the guard. I yeah, like I don't it. think Michelle being defensive on the stand up is going to win her the fight because she's mm -hmm. going to break down because Lemos is strong. So all those kicks are just going to start slowing her down. So she needs to be getting to work. So that takedown was beautiful. She needs to do some damage before they get back to their feet, though. You know, and that's the one thing Lemos is getting both feet inside, trying to do that, body, lock the body, and maybe try to pick her up, get a sweep, or get a guard looking to sweep, but Michelle's not going to let it happen. I guess on the good side, the fact that they're doing this much grabbing, she's going to get a lockdown on that leg. It keeps her all. Oh, now she's trying to throw some shots and score some points. Is she going to come out the back? She can almost come out the back of Michelle. And then Michelle just tried to step over. Those deep, oh. deep half guard sweeps are so tricky. Oh, nice job by Lemos to reverse. Nice sweep with two seconds left. Does it kind of negate? Oh, I wouldn't want to judge that. <laughs> I would not want to judge all that. That's impressive. Oh, she, is she limping a little bit? Did she hurt her leg? I don't know. I I, I don't want to say it to me. For half a second there, it kind of looked like she was, she took a couple sensitive steps. Not too bad, not bad, not bad. No, but that's that one thing. Again, the, the process. So I'm glad, like, like we said, Cub, right when she got into that idea, we we're going to do a stand-up fight. Boom, she hits that takedown. And now it just completely changed everything up. But, you know, with the ability to get that sweep at the end, uh, it's crazy. See, we're listening to what they're saying, but. So what do you think, Laura? She's going to come out and just shoot a takedown again right to bat? We're going to go right back to that stand-up feeling out process. I think we'll see a little bit more, more striking again, but I do think we'll see her go for that takedown a little bit sooner in this round than she did in the last one because she's got to have a little bit more time to do something with it, mount an offense. But Michelle, I mean, Michelle's wrestling. I mean, we talked about her submission game, but her wrestling has grown so, so much. And that's, I mean, I think a lot of times when you come in with that traditional martial arts background and then you add the jujitsu, it's that missing piece that once that missing piece locks into place, the wrestling, it's like Katie bar the door. Now we're, now we're a complete MMA fighter. Yep. You see that right there. You got a big right leg by Lemos and then Michelle comes Oof. in with the count. Do you see that counter, that counter? Do you see how fast her hands are? Yes. Oh, Ugh. there's that. See how fast she comes back with that hook. She's got right hand, left hook, kick to the liver. And that's, I think, the one thing is as long as Michelle doesn't stand out there and allow just the one shot at a time by Lemos, right? Kind yeah, because every flowing. shot is going to be a heavy shot. Yeah. Like Lemos yeah, it's does not chip F away around. at her. And that's the one part. Like she's trying to show up from a distance. I think, I wonder what Lemos kind of figured out. Look at that. Rip man. Chad, if you're not seeing it, but the way she loads up these shots, it's quite impressive how, how hard she's throwing these punches. Oh, she's swinging. Michelle hits that side kick and luckily got out of the way because when she brings mm -hmm. that right hand, it is impressive. You know, see that side kick, side oh, she's kick. She's so fast with that side kick. Right? It's like a jab. Michelle Oy! is. And right then, Lemos caught it, kind of feigned back and fired the right hand. There's another right hand. I wonder if Michelle has literally felt those and it's like, yeah, Cub, I don't, I don't like this. You know what I mean? Yeah, 
yeah, when she goes southpaw, she keeps oh. leaning right into uh, her the power side, and I, I'm not liking that. I think that oh boy, oh, she got oh, boy. He he jumped up in the guard. She jumped. Oh, up that's in deep. Right now, that Mabel, is deep. Got it in deep. Right now, I think she's trying it's to fight. Be hard the leg. to get out of. She's not going to be able to get That's the leg. Under. She's in trouble. Lemos is freezing. Did she? What? What happened? Oh, she tapped. Oh, and she acknowledged it. The ref missed it. Oh. Wow. Oh, the ref missed it. Wondering what was up, and she's like, "No." She's like, "Yeah, I did it." Ah. Oh. I think it caught her off guard. Like I said, that was deep. You know how you get to that? There's that one brief moment of panic, like right before you've been sitting it for a long time or long-ish, right? And there's just that one moment. It's like, ah, dang it. I got, nope, I can't. Yeah. There's just that one second, and it almost takes over. And that, look, she held on, held on, held on. It's good. And I think when she was moving, pushing down on the leg. And Kevin was on the right the side. Kevin was on the side where you'd think she would use that. Hand yeah, to tap, tap, tap to use the handle on the bottom. Oh. Yeah. And then we oh. learned, like, right, yeah, right when she was taking her over to mount up, and then she had tapped. Oh, the ref. You know, it's crazy. Now, here's a question, Cub. When someone's tapping you, do you let go? No. Or do you wait for the ref? I wait for the ref. You know? Yeah. You got to because you have no choice. I know that they may miss it, you know, and I'll look at the ref and be like, mm -hmm. you know, no, well, that now or again, when someone yells and they kind of sell it, ah, and they'll let go. Oh, no, man, it's like, ah, oh, that was a joke. That was, that was, yeah, because there's a, a lot of cheaters in this Set sport that'll be like, <laughs> I, I didn't tap. Oh, they, we have, see it all they the have time. buyer's remorse, is what I always call it. They have buyer's, buyer's remorse. remorse. I like that. It's like, no, I didn't tap. No, but you did that moment yeah. you did, and it sucks, but you did. You yeah. know what I mean? And that's the one thing I always tell you. You have that buyer's remorse. But at least and she didn't right there, which is really impressive. But I can't believe with the shots. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, Lemos now has the second most finishes in UFC strawweight history. She's tied with uh, Mackenzie Dern. Wow. Yeah. Dang. Just Rose Namajunas and Jessica Andrade have five, and Amanda and Mackenzie have four. Just dropping the knot, you know, just, just, yeah. just. I up like it. <laughs> How many <laughs> fights does she even have in the UFC? Oh, that I can't tell you off the top of my head. I was, I that's know. what was Not surprising. Not that many though. That Amanda Lamos yeah. has been finishing girls. Like I, yeah. she can't have more than like six. That's what I'm saying. When it comes to her punches and stuff like that, she definitely has Tuesday. Oh yeah. No, she has, she's got power shots. I like her. I don't know. And the crazy next? thing about that guillotine right there is that we're about to see one exactly like it. They're going to keep showing uh, with my fight with Ortega when I got caught in the almost the exact same situation. <laughs> but that's the one thing. Now, now there's the question I want to ask you. He's so fast at snatching that thing on. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And it, it seems like, I don't know, with Jair... He's so, and it, again, with Volkanovsky, that was so quick, just out yeah. of nowhere, just poop, and it was on. And you're like, yeah. oh my, you know what I mean? And I don't know what Volkanovsky I think had to see, but. I think ahead. that's the deciding factor in that fight. I, yeah, years explosive, and he, you don't know when he's going to land something, and he's tricky, but nobody's putting Brian Ortega down. You know, nobody's, yeah. nobody's TKOing him. He's just tough. And so if the fight goes the distance, I, I think yeah, year's gonna slow down a little bit. And I think Brian has a greater chance to grab a submission. Uh it, and when it comes into the wrestling department, I, I'd have to say yeah, year. And I've trained with both guys. Yeah. Uh, and I'd have to say yeah, year's got the better wrestling, but I just think that Brian Ortega has more ways to win. So when you he's ask got that danger of, factor, like exactly. he's, he's just he's dangerous. Yeah, you know, no matter where the fight goes and can finish anywhere. And I think anytime you face someone that has like danger here, danger there, it's just such a tough opponent to, to game plan for. Cause there's no, like, there's no path. Yeah. To, you know, there's no easy path anyway. Well, okay. So chat, we're, we're going to do, we got a three minute video coming up. Um, I assume right now and we'll see you right after. All right. Oh, oh, he's on the neck. I heard him gargling. The grip is breaking. Whoa! Triangle! Oh, he got him! He said he's trying to win a title with his signature move! 
I thought it was done, you know, that's what we trained for. Oh, he got out! What a fight! It was a hell of a fight, lost by decision, but still. Came out and I put the champ, who's number three pound for pound in the world, I put fear in him. I put pressure on him, I put him in danger, the most danger he's ever been in his entire life. Had I had a couple different adjustments, I would have won that fight. I strongly believe that. So it's up to me now to keep making these adjustments, keep bettering myself, keep doing this. Because I have what it takes to be the top dog in this mountain right now. I know I do. Very rarely do you lose a title fight. People walk out feeling better about you. That's Brian Ortega. I was built for it. Fighting, training. And even though, you know, we come up short, we're not defined by how we lose, but how we get up and we overcome that shit, you know? And that's a Mexican heart for you. I think all the Mexican people has that fire inside them, you know, we are warriors and we have that big heart and we don't like giving up. You can't question the toughness of Yair Rodriguez. You know, we already have Brandon Moreno, the first born Mexican champion, and I think I could be next. You know, in order for me to go and get the belt, I need to go to Ryan Ortega. This kid takes creativity and explosive, unpredictable techniques to a totally new level. What wow. an elbow from Yair Rodriguez! Kids are starting to make it, and tonight he has an opportunity to have that performance that will define him going forward. I expect this to be the biggest fight of my career. If I can get the win, the title show will be right there. He's number three in the world. He's dangerous, he's crafty, and he's gonna bring a hell of a fight. I'm ready for it. This fight means that I get to take this man out. And I don't wanna go to the city. I need to finish, I have to finish. I need to make that statement. I am sure that he's bringing nothing but fire, and he can be sure that I'm doing the same. Oh, round kick, he got him, it's it! Both of these men embody the Mexican fighting spirit. Absolutely fearless. It's gonna be magic when they step into the octagon. We both got the same type of blood running through them, you know? So we're gonna see which one's stronger. There's the Brian T. Ortega! I'm ready to go into our places, deep waters, He's gonna have to kill me to get the win. You know, I'm not gonna surrender. Jesus, take the wheel. I hope that's really uh, what the mic yeah, has been. He had it on. It was, <laughs> it was funny. It was, <laughs> it was something. It was something. We are, we are back. We have one more fight, Chad. We have one more fight. Now, all aside, who do you have winning? I'm gonna let you, you can Cub, go, you go first. first. <laughs> Laura, Cub, Cub, Cub. Yeah, I'm gonna. Cause I want to like keep I it said, from Cub because he's got like knowledge, knowledge about it. You know what I mean? I know. Yeah, I know. i I trained a year for for quite a while at Jackson's. He's you know stayed at my house uh, for for a little bit of time, and yeah, I've known him for a while. And then Ortega, we've been training together for the last few years, um, and I sparred him a little bit this round. I, I, I tried to stay neutral. I just gave him rounds. Um, but yeah, uh, I think it's going to, it's going to be a great fight, but I just think that Brian has more ways to finish the fight. And uh, I think if I think Yair will probably w dominate the fight a little bit more early on. And then I think Ortega will be looking for the finish uh, later in the fight. And I, I see it finishing I could see him finishing him or winning the decision just based on that. Yeah, I'm 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 leaning slightly Ortega as well. Just man, he's he has impressed me so much after the the TKZ fight and then the Volkanovsky fight. Like the Brian Ortega that that lost to Max Holloway is like a completely different fighter now. He, the the, the skill set that he has added in terms of like putting his hands and his kickboxing really put together to complement how dangerous his submission game is. Um, and the fact that like, he doesn't even have to, he doesn't have to wrestle to initiate his submission game is part of what makes him so dangerous. Like he can find those submissions or create those opportunities straight from a striking exchange. So I'm slightly leaning Ortega, um, but man, Yair, I'm a huge, huge, huge Yair Rodriguez fan. He can wrestle. He's got some ground game, but the striking of Yair Rodriguez, like I just want to sit here and eat popcorn and not even talk as we do it, honestly. You know, and it's the one thing with him is, again, like when the stand-up, it's 
Uh, uh, yeah, it, I'm excited to see it. But then right when I think I'm going to see a stand-up match, is Ortega going to go right to the ground? Is he going to stand with him in the beginning? You know what I mean? And situations like that, the leg kicks, calf kicks, is he going to attack low, attack high? You know what I mean? Start picking apart the other person's armor, you know? And But I still can't. I can never get away with the way that he rolls and he can he can get that neck from standing, clinching the way that Ortega does. Mm -hmm. And man, that thing is, and now you know because, and he's got that that one thing looming. He was so close to becoming the world champion. He was, I don't know how, I still don't know. You know, I mean, you ask um, Volkanovski and he just said, he's like, oh yeah, no, I, I was getting out of it. You know, the determination of Volkanovski. But the first time when he sat down and we did a watch on, I had to wait. I go, all right. I said, look, Volkanovski, I was like, hey, I go, how tight was that? I go, no, yeah. no joke. I go, yeah. how tight was that? He's like, oh. Oh, you know, and then I now on the other side, you have Ortega here. It's like, you know, that that's just he was so close, so close, you know. So I, I don't know. He seems to be a little more patient and calm. And we'll see if that pace. I think the biggest thing with the IR is because of the way that he throws things, he could land something and you'll be in trouble quick. You know what I mean? Like, yep. boom, you get hit something kind of blank, turn off the lights. So it'll be fine. I think Sorry. He's going to need to be patient, though. If he if he hurts Brian, he needs to. He needs to not chase it and look for the finish. He needs to just keep, you know, like take his time and just keep wearing them down and breaking them mm -hmm. down, you know, I because I think the biggest thing that we could say about the, both of these guys is the heart and fighting spirit in both these guys. They both have Absolutely. that Mexican fighting spirit, you know, that that just, you know, just like you would say, the Hawaiians have that that fighting spirit. Mexicans also, everyone knows. They, these two guys are the perfect guys to, to, to say these are, you know, that Mexican Latin American fighter. Mm -hmm. Toe to toe the way they'll change it up. I look at it. He's fired up. Look at that. He is fired yeah. up. Passionate. Did you see feeling it? Did you see that thing the UFC did where they had them like say different phrases in various accents or like just their own accent? But like, yeah, it was pretty funny. <laughs> it was pretty good. Yeah, yours accent. He was like, onions <laughs> i don't remember what it was about onions but it was just they were both like working it pretty hard oh man i love it he's making his way high-fiving the coaches oh here we go here we go ah. i love it yeah that loss of yeah man wrestling, he doesn't look wrestling. like a guy who would hit that hard but man you know what I mean? Like he doesn't have like a, a, a thick, powerful build to him, but he can crack. Now here's the other is he is he taller? I think what at weigh ins they look the same. About the same, but I would words. say he may be a year might be a little like a half inch or something, but they're, actually they're pretty close. I think we're going to see in a second. I want to say that Brian is actually three inches shorter, but they look like they're the That's same height. If that was... I'm looking at the step. Brian Ortega is not 5'8". That's why it threw me I off. Know. Right there, Cup, but you, says but the stat eight, says like... that they're three inches different, right? Yeah, that's not Yeah, true. isn't that weird? That's why I was wondering, because I'm like, is he really 5'8"? I, I, that's why I had to ask. Like, I don't think I thought Ortega was a taller funny. fighter there. Yeah. You know? I mean, I'm I'm 5'8 ish. And uh, he's Ortega's a lot taller than me. I get it. I get it. Give Josh Emmett the winner of this. They said, "Oh, Josh, uh, I'm listening. I'm looking at chat. Josh Emmett. That's when he's knocking on the door." Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a powerful man. Yeah, I mean that would be another one. Yeah. Ah, oh, his weight classes. All you fighters, you're crazy. Crazy. <laughs> But hey, gents, I'm not taking away from other watch longs, but this one is the best so far. I know. <laughs> so I kept saying it all week. I was excited. I was pumped. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Chat. Hope everybody's having fun. I appreciate all of you as we're walking out and getting ready to see this. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. A lot. Yeah, you're seeing all the comments, right? We we getting heckled yet? What's going no, on? There's no <laughs> comment section. There's no. There, what glass? What glasses does Cub have? They want the same ones. Oh yeah. Oh, you're in luck because I got these at Walmart for 50 bucks. There he goes. He's got $50 Walmart glasses. Giggity, giggity, and dive in. We love Laura. We love Laura. We love oh, Laura. It's, Thank it's you. Running. You're well. Thank you, chat. Thank you.
Hey, hot. She makes DC pout. <laughs> <laughs> I try. It's on DC. Yeah. When I can. Yeah. Oh, 100%. 100%. <laughs> Cub and Laura are great. I know they are, right? Cub's legend. Told you. We've called fights together. I don't know if you know that, Jen's been Cub and I called some LFA fights together. It was fantastic. A couple times. Oh, you LFA? Yeah. Did you? All right. Yeah, it was awesome. I like that. LFA, man, I like it. Yeah, LFA is sick. That's a great organization. A lot of yeah. fun. Because, like, the other thing is when we're doing, I always talk about Fridays, but I'm on the Fridays and we're on Fight Pass and we get the live events. So there's all LFA is like, they're busy, really yeah. busy. You know what I mean? They're always, they always, almost every Saturday, you know, or every Friday, there's shows to watch. There's two or three shows going all the time. I'm a big, I'm a big fan of the Fight Pass. Spend a lot of time on there. It's become grabbed, like so much bigger in the last couple of years. It went from just being this like fight archive to now it's everything. Well, that's what I mean. Everything. You got all the live shows. I just went and watched that grappling. I was there live watching the grappling. Oh, yeah. Yeah. With, with the teams, the team grappling. That was pretty uh -huh. impressive. That was fun. That, was a lot that of fun. fight pass showcase. I mean, that was so, cool. There's so much things that it can do. I think they're going to keep expanding it. From what I hear, they're trying to add a lot of stuff. So mm -hmm. it's only going to keep getting better. I'm hearing about podcasts and you know what I mean, but yeah, we've got the Twitch TV slash UFC. So that's the whole thing with this, this little niche market. I'm really liking it. Love it. And then it's we had that. Cause we had that Nick nerds. Merckx. Yeah. Well, we had Nick Merckx and Tim the Tapman and when they had to do the fighting, that was so cool. They were playing apex at one point and then they did, um, they had to fight for, um, on UFC four. Oh yeah. That was a lot of fun at the international fight week. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. That was cool. When's that, the new, I, I was commentating. When's the new game come out? Because I just heard that they're working on it. I don't know. Because I keep giving them, oh, next year, UFC Mod C 6 says next year. Because I keep saying, it's like World of Warcraft meets UFC. You get to travel around. You got to have daily quests to get your gear and go out there and level up and travel to Thailand. Cool. You travel to Japan. And, and then you build up your teams. And then you yeah. compete. You could be like dual matches, your team. Your, so that'd be your clans or your guilds or whatever. Oh, yeah. They better do it. Drop it. You know what I'm saying? I can't the only game I know anything idea. about is Fortnite because my son plays Fortnite nonstop. Nonstop. <laughs> it's another good game. It's a, it's a beautiful game. That's why I said I'm learning this Apex right now is, is the one. But yeah, Fortnite, because that's all in my son, the cross platforms. Mm-hmm. We literally had to buy a second switch. And right now my son and my husband are downstairs. And that's why I was like, I hope you guys can't hear him because they're fighting over like, get out of the truck, get out of the truck. <laughs> <laughs> I need a re res me, res me, res me, res me now. <laughs> yeah. Where's You're your blue drink? Give me your blue you drink. Took my ammo. Give me some shield. I need some shield. <laughs> I'm not there yet. I, I retired from most games. And once my kids get a little older, I'm going to get sucked back in. You're going right back in. Come yeah, because I, I got, you know, I'm like that. I'm competitive and got the addictive personality. So I get sucked in the game. So that's why I had to just nope. stop. But I know once my kids are old enough, I'm going right back in. So I've never seen my husband play a video. We've been married. I don't really know how long, but long. We've been together like 14, 15 years. I've never seen him play a single, not a game on his phone, nothing. <laughs> but then when Burke started getting really into Fortnite, and he's like all right i guess and yeah. now he's like he's like a 52 year old 12 year old yeah i love it i love it that's all i do is, is video games and games and me and my son yeah <laughs> i that's love cool. it yeah okay. now i'm trying to get him to play apex but i'm not the cool ones he's got the vr headset and he's got all his friends and all of a sudden i'm like what I'm like really daddy's not cool no more i'm like do you know who your dad is I'm like that's messed up <laughs> Oh, I just can't shoot like he can. Like, whatever. I get it. So I got to go recruit my Apex team right now. He has you on the B squad? Yep. I got pushed. There's almost 2 million points on this right now. We got a lot of people betting on these two. Look at you. 2 million channel points. All right, chat. You crazy. I love it. I love it. <laughs> oh. What's that? 48% Ortega, 52% Rodriguez. So Rodriguez is the favorite right now. Wow. Okay. All right. I like it. We shall see. We shall see. 
sir. All right. Okay, you guys talk. I'll just watch. Now look at this. Now, <laughs> Yair does look a lot taller. Yeah. Well, not a lot. Yeah. Well, that's kind of the camera angle, though. This. Yeah. Okay. Dang. All right. Number three. Number two. And to be fair, his hair is not braided. Mm. It's poofed. Very true. Very true. <laughs> Very true. Oh, all right, you two. Here it goes. First thirty seconds. <sighs> the movement. Look at they jab, jab. Oh, big one, two by air to move. I like that. Go ahead. Ortega's getting in his face. Oh, but that lead hand of with the. Uh, Oh, Ortega definitely walked right in and trying to throw that jab at that one, two. Oof. Now, you, what you were talking about earlier, you see how he's kicking that inside of that, that inside lead leg as he's trying to close the distance. Yeah, he's going to want to slow him down from, because like I said, when people want, when people are creative, they need space. So if you're yep. crowding them, they don't like that. You know, they yep. want the space. So chipping away that leg and, and getting them to, to respect the space is going to gonna make your game develop. Yeah, Brian's going to box him. Yeah, oh, gosh, he is whipping that hook back. Come out with that left hook that Yair did right Ooh. there. Oh, one, two, stepped in, right hand back. They're going to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Yep. Oh. So he does, dang, he's already wearing the damage on that right eye. Yeah, air got the cut. I like how he plumbed it. I wonder if he got away with that knee to the head. But there goes in on a double, then a body lock. I like it. Nice body lock by Ortega. All right, now you got, again, head in the pocket, GG. How's that year's defensive wrestling, Cub? Really good. He He's... Him being tall, he's able to utilize some really tricky moves, and and he wrestles like, like, not a lot of people. Uh, you mm. know, he's he's slick. Um, and Brian's been working his wrestling a lot, and I know he's you know looking at this position to be a great one. He took me down like this quite a quite a few times uh, when I was sparring with him. But yeah, you're being a little longer and having strong hips. It's not going to be as mm -hmm. easy. Yeah, I like how he's utilizing. See right there, he's like trying. Is he trying to throw heels into yeah. the leg now? Ortega's going to try to pull that leg. See, they're stuck. They're locked in that. He's got that body lock. I like how he keeps his head in the pocket. And then now you got yeah, you're trying to slap him in the ears. He's got that over. He's got that overhook right there. And then again, the leg trips. This is something I'm always telling guys when I'm cornering them or coaching them. And when you're in these positions, you need to do damage. You know, if you're not, you don't need to get the takedown right away. It'll come, but you need to do damage. You need to be hitting strikes, heels, elbows, anything. Just, just stomp on the toes, whatever you yeah, gotta yeah, do. Yeah. Just do, do some damage, then go for the takedown. Well, Yair was listening because he was throwing. You see how he's throwing the heel back to the side of the knee, and that was impressive. Like he was spurring. You know, what I mean, mm -hmm. digging that heel in there. Now we got, or take, see every time that's crazy. Now he's trying to block it. This position, this is there insane. You. Circle. Oh, they started to circle out towards the center and then right back up against the fence. Ortega pushed him down again. The way Yair is throwing heels. I'm amazed that, that Brian's not blocking off like that because obviously when Yair's doing that, he's on one leg, right? All of his weight is on that one leg. So like to, to get behind it and then rip him down. But I think the wizard that Yair has is... Yeah, it's strong. Is I'm preventing sure it some, is. Yes. Yeah. Then he kind of just fell out of the way, fell off the way, slipped out. And that the combination, oh, big one, two by Yair. That right was extended. Ortega just took it. Oh, that was impressive. And now he's able to just, again, just walking him down. Ortega just coming forward, coming forward. Oof. Oh, head oh. kick, deep kick to the face by Yair with the jab. Ortega goes in. Yeah, I don't think Ortega wants to stand at all with him, to be quite honest. So it's going to be the, mm -hmm. the this takedown defense of Yair. Or the offense of Ortega. And there he's we go. Run forward. Good that's, that's how I got taken down a lot. <laughs> that overhead, yep. he does the overhook, tries to throw him by. Yeah, he kind of whips right it. Almost like a judo takedown. Oi! What? Wait, what what happened? happened? What happened? Is shoulders oh, out? shoulder popped out. Is his shoulder out? Shoulders done. Oh, man. Oh, shit. From that, that's he tried no to throw fun. it by. Tried to throw it by. And... Oh. Wow, that's unfortunate. I mean, because mm. 
because Brian's tough, so it must have just been excruciating. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Let's see the replay. Yeah, I know, right? I can't think when it happened. Oh, that's crazy. Oh. So does Yair get the title fight? <sighs> oh, was it with this arm bar? That did, did he already have it hurt? Because look the way he kind of has he's fighting out of this arm bar. He gets the arm out. Oh yeah. It's like it's like when he pulled out. Oh, yeah. when he pulled out of the arm bar. He just oh look how he's got it locked down. He went to go uh -oh. to Oh. Oh, you can oh, see it. Oh, you can uh. see it. You can see it, chat. I wonder if he's had, has he had issues with that before? Do you know, Cub? Because I know a lot of guys will have, like, uh, like I can't remember what's his, Brandon Roy Vall, like his yeah. used to go in and out all the time in practice. I know he had some shoulder issues uh, a few fights back that he was, I think Ugh. for the Korean zombie fight, he was he was struggling in that one. But uh, yeah, I don't I think this camp one. that I know of, that's just unfortunate. It is. Because that I fight was... Yep. Fight was starting to be a, a good one. I always mm -hmm. like it, but I think it rolls down to that same situation, which is like now it does it once, and then you know, make sure you let it heal so it doesn't, yeah. you know what I mean? Then yeah. the second one, and next you know, you got a third one. It's like, oh, this is horrifying, you know what I mean? But uh, that's tough. That is tough. Good fight, though. I like the game plans. The strike, I think, the, the takedown defense of Yair to switch to that arm bar. Yeah, this is gonna be fun. I know he's feeling it. I know he's feeling it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I'd like to see a year five for the title. I think him and Volkanowski would be fun. Well, it's that's fresh, what we got. So what face. do they have? Yeah. So what do they have? This is who they, who does he have next? Who's Volkanovsky? Well, nobody, but the other person he, is um, what's his name? Emmett. Josh Emmett. Josh Emmett. Calling it out. Okay. So I mean, Volkanovski has been talking about going up to light. He wants to go up, so he, let those two yeah. fight, Yair and Emmett fight, and the winner gets the title and that, give that Volkanovski the opportunity to I have like his that. one moment at 55 mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. Fight the winner of Oliveira Islam. Okay, so Volk has already been on Twitter an hour ago. Oh. He's got the winner of Oliveira and Makachev, which did yeah. sign. So that'd oh, really? be crazy. Yeah. Man, okay. and then I had that Saruki, so that'll be a little bit of a delay, but they'll have this fight. That'll work. Oh, I don't know. Ah, oh, that sucks for Brian. Yeah. Now, the question is, so here's the deal, though, really fast. So what do y'all think? Fight of the night? Performance of the night? Oof. It's uh, Matt Schnell? performance uh, and maybe fight of the night well yeah. with the burgos and jordan i i right? think that fight was good but because there was a little bit of resting the other one was non-stop action but the burgos fight uh and jordan went all three match now and sumu darji i think uh, match now gets performance for sure yeah they probably won't double bonus him so he'll get performance and then they'll give fight of the night to to burgos, burgos. and Jordan. It's I fair. It. All right. I miss I, I miss the pre fill us in on the prelims. Well, like I said, uh was Brandon there anything crazy Colt, there? The cult was fun. Um Stolfis did a good job. I had um Jacoby. I just gotta try to think who was the fight that really stuck out other than Algeo and Burns. Now, did you see the fight with Algeo and Burns? I did not. Did you come? I saw I saw when he had the triangle and I was like, man, he needs to finish this now or it's not going to happen. And then he completely gassed out. They said it was some kind of a weird finish though. No, well, he couldn't get up. So uh -oh. he sat there and they're like round, you know, like you got to get up, like get up. And he just kind of took his time, took his time. And then they, when they, then the round ended and then they put him in the corner and they're like, you're okay. You're okay. And he just, Burns seemed like he was so tired, like just so tired he couldn't move. And then the next round, he just fell over and did the same thing. He just wouldn't get up. Was just sitting there, taking forever. Like, you know, like, and so here would be my question. If you go to stand-up, Cub, right, and mm -hmm. you know the fighter's tired, and you're like, all right, I'm ready. How long 
before it's like, all right, man, this fight's over. Both of you, because that was the issue. Like, well, yeah, I mean, if the referee says stand up and you don't stand up, then then the fight's he's like, over. He's like, yeah, yeah. Like, stand up. Was, stand, it, like, how many times? Yeah, because you remember you know? when um, Joel Romero wouldn't get up the stool against uh, yep. Tim Kennedy, and and that was such. You know, a, a lot they of kept crap. giving him time, and he was trying yeah. to say it was something else. But it's like and then he came, fight. then he TKO'd him and won, and it was like dude, he cheated. That made me so mad. Ever since then, I stopped liking Yoel Romero as a fighter. Well, but that was with this fight here. Burns was really tired. It's like, why? Wait, you're just giving. It's like what? It's like this is over because that's. Did the, the ref? Did the ref warn him? Did the ref give him like a timidity foul or anything? I because I have the commentating turned down. I just watched yeah. it damn near in silence. So I was just, but I don't know. I don't think so because I think the round ended. I think the round ended, and then again he was over there, and you could kind of hear the corner was, you know, they're just pushing and pushing and pushing. But he just seemed defeated, like he had put mm -hmm. everything into that triangle cup, and when he couldn't get it, Al Gio rolled up, rolled out of it, and beat, you know, and was ready to fight. Was set up like waiting for him to get up, and my man just took for a, a very, very, very long time, and then it just something that he just couldn't recover. You know, hmm. I mean, in, in the next round, it didn't work. And then, of course, um, I'll tell you what, uh, Simone looked really good with Jack Shore and it looked really good, really good. Um, tough. I mean, what did he do? He submitted him in the second round, 328 in the second round. But he, the way that he changed it up, he added in takedowns. He had power shots. He just made it a grinding fight, you know, and, uh, you know, just grinded. Take down, take down. one sided? I, it seemed one sided to me. I mean, okay. I mean, sure had a crisp jab. Nothing was really getting off, but he had again 27 total strikes, 19 significant strikes. For, and Simone already had two takedowns, had 25. He was landing power shots. So that was a good card either way. You know what I mean? And then, of course, Puna. I was going to say Puna. Puna looked good. Puna hit so hard. It's just ridiculous. And he just, he clocked him with that left hand right over the top of that jab and just, boom, just. Oh, that was that was impressive. So, yeah, I don't know. Fight of the night, performance of the night. It, I'm not. A, I don't know. You know, with that, but there was a lot of good standout, like single fighter moments. Was good, but now here's a question for you. So now predictions of next week: Blades versus Aspinall. Anything come to mind? Oh man, I'm gonna. I have think to Tom say... Aspinall is the future. Sorry, I didn't mean to yeah. cut you off, Tom. No, no, no. I mean, he's he's good everywhere. Uh, he's been pretty impressive. Well, how how well he moves for his size. Uh, I would just think that Blades is gonna be able to lay and pray, but we'll see. I don't know. Aspinall has such a slick ground game. I mean, like we we look at him as a as a big puncher, and he is a big puncher. But man. His, his ground game is really, really, really good. So I, I worry that even if Blades can get him down and he's working off his back, I mean, he's one of the few heavyweights these days that has like a really, really dangerous guard. He's a standard all around know. performance. I mean, because then we got, because then you look at the rest of the card, it's what we got. We got Jack Romanson, Chris Curtis, Patty the Batty, and Jordan Levitt. <laughs> oh, and then Nikita Krylov, Alexander Gustafson, Molly McCann, and Hannah Goldie and Paul Craig and Ozemir. That's gonna be a good card. That's yeah. a really good card. So this would be an early, an early fight, I guess. But yeah, Another I like one. Yeah, I think it will, I think it's gonna be early, right, chat? It is gonna be. It is gonna be early. We'll I don't mind the early fights. I, I kind of like them because I wake up, have a coffee, start watching fights, and this then isn't too the bad. fights are over, and I'm like, oh yeah, I still got the rest of my day. <laughs> I, this isn't too bad. I mean, I'm going to jump on later. I'm going to, I'll start my stream later and watch us. Uh, I got to do, I got to watch sumo because I can't miss it, but you know what I mean? It, it's one of those things, but a question really quick though. Socials. Cub. Oh, then Laura. Cub Swanson everywhere. Uh, give me a follow. I try to post as much as possible, but I get overwhelmed with my kids. So I don't post all the time, but especially if I fight, if I have a fight coming up, I'll be posting more. Mine is uh, at Laura underscore Sanko on Instagram. That's probably where I'm like the most active, but I hop on Twitter and, and watch who says what about me. <laughs> and then uh, I have, I have a YouTube channel that I started this year called one-on-one -on -one, um, where I post uh, breakdowns of fights, interviews. I break down some crazy submissions. Uh, it's a little bit of everything. So you can check me out all those places. All right. So is that one of the things like if we're doing a stream, do you mind if we pop over real quick and just kind of check out the, Check yeah. Everything out if you if you're all right absolutely, with that. absolutely, absolutely, uh, do it for sure. Okay, I'm in. I'm... 
<laughs> Heck yeah. And I'll be right here, chat. You know that I'm gonna be right here. It's it's Chrissy V slash UFC. That's it. At James Pover on Instagram, but y'all know that. So much love and appreciation. Hey, no, seriously, you two though. Honestly, dude, that was badass. Thank you both. I appreciate so you for your time. Thanks, thanks for having us. Appreciate I would love it. To, hey, I was surprised. I was like, yes. Because I always think everybody's like, no, I don't want to go talk with Jens on a dang <laughs> on the computer the heck with that. You know what I mean? So every time when people say yes, I'm like, yes, all right. <laughs> it is, you no, know, and like I said, it's always a blast. You're always welcome. Would love to have you anytime. Whenever you want to drop in on a on a Monday or a Wednesday. You know what I mean? Or shoot, a Friday, whenever, man, drop in. I'll definitely let you know, Cub, when it comes to the uh, Doho Choi, when we're watching that fight for the hundredth time or something like that. But <laughs> both of you, you're always welcome to jump in anytime, for sure. Uh, thank you, Jens. It. Appreciate it. No, thank y'all. All right, I guess with that chat, love and appreciation. I'll go live later with the sumo. Man, it's been a lot of fun. I wish y'all the best. Y'all be real. Y'all be good. Y'all be real good. <laughs> <laughs> to the official UFC stream here on Twitch. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, kicked her in the head and dropped her. Dropped you gotta her shoot, brother. Right you gotta shoot. You gotta shoot. What are you doing? Welcome back once again to the UFC Esports League. Tonight, eight of the best in the world will enter the UFC Octagon to compete. This is going to be a very hard uphill battle for Game Room. Ooh. Oh, what a straight head kick. This is very bad for Game Room, but he lands a right hand. Oh. And he's coming forward. Rear up again, double up again. Right hook lead up again. again. Now has him against the cage. Bing. No! <laughs> As always, on the way in show, I'm joined by Borisenko, the former champ over there polishing his belt. Oh, Our spelling bee champ. His, eyes, oh, are, his yes. eyes are starting to water. What is this? Oh, my God. Look at him getting so much power in this game. Extra rounds live from the Fight Pass Studios. It is me, TJ DeSantis, along with Pearl Gonzalez. The show is Extra Rounds and is from UFC Fight Pass. Appreciate you joining us live here on the Twitch channel. Shelling up, weathering the storm, then pop, pop. One, yeah, two, three. Going, yeah, you right back there, that shell. Nice. Wow. That shell is working, baby. Boom, boom, boom. Was that five, was that five oh. minutes already? Fans, by following UFC on Twitch, interact with your favorite fighters yes. as they break down Second past round, boys, fights, preview Fight. upcoming matchups, host live watch alongs during UFC pay-per-views, and of course, games. Fingers. Fred, you're a big Twitch guy, right? Huge on Twitch. So oh. What is it again? <laughs> Video games and much more. I know Jens Bulver is real big on there. We'd love to have you in our community of hardcore UFC fans. Follow the UFC on Twitch. I'll see you in chat.